If you like the story you can support the author on Patreon link is in the description. Chapter 101, Eye of Medusa Look at the basilisk in the eyes. The silver rewards for this lottery are as follows, Leg Locking Curse, Level 5, 4, Splitting Curse, Level 3, 5, Pimple Curse, Level 3, 3, Dangling Jinx, Level 2, 9, Level 5, 2, Repelling Curse, Level 2, 2, Tongue Sealing Curse, Level 6, 4, Gut Eating Curse, Level 5, 6, Notes of a Transformation Master, Transformation Spell, Level 5, Conjunctivitis Curse, Level 3, Asterisk 3. The gold rewards for this lucky draw are as follows, Memory Charm, Level 4, 7, Legilimency, Level 5, 3, Patroness Curse, Level 3, 3, Sword 1, Talent Point 2 1, Protego Maxima, Level 2, 1. The Platinum Rewards for this lottery are as follows, Eye of Medusa, Weakened Version, Ancient Elf Magic Life Steel, Level 1. System, Assign a Point of Talent to Transfiguration and Divination, and Synthesize and Learn the Rest of the Spells. Accompanied by his orders a bright light flashed before Lucas' eyes. Immediately afterwards, his character attributes automatically appeared. Name, Lucas Grindelwald. Age, 12 years old. Identity, Leader of Saints Investment Group, Son of Gellert Grindelwald, Second Year Student at Hogwarts. Bloodline, Void Elf, Second Awakening. Talents, Void Fisher, Void Aura, Eye of Foresight, Medusa's Eye, Weakened Version, Combination Skills. Mana Strength, 40, Elite Aura. Charms, 9, Full Level. Transfiguration, 9, Full Level. Dark Arts, 11, Awakened. Alchemy, 3. Ancient Runes, 2. Divination, 6. Potions, 5. Elven Magic, Soul Devouring, Level 1, Looting, Level 1, Life Steal, Level 1. Animagus, Black Panther. Different Space, Hufflepuff Secret Garden, Recognized Owner. Skills, Ancient Alchemy, Beginner, Acclumency, Level 9, Fire Shield, Level 9, Imperious Curse, Level 9, Killing Curse, Level 9, Cruciatus Curse, Level 9, Sectum Sempra, Level 7, Legilimency, Level 7, Memory Charm, Level 6, Transformation Spell, Level 6, Patroness Charm, Level 5, Protego Maxima, Level 2. Magic Items, Felix Felicis 1, Verita Serum 2, Goblin Sword. Achievement Points, 4822. Glancing from top to bottom, most of the advanced spells have reached level 5 or above. Transfiguration and Charms talents have also reached the full level at this moment. If he wants to break through, he needs to get a talent breakthrough card. Then he needs to use a lot of achievement points to draw a lottery, especially to participate in the holidays special lottery. So next Lucas needs to collect a lot of achievement points. As for the achievement points that are easy to obtain at present, one is the achievement of exploring the Forbidden Forest, and the other should be the achievement of Ravenclaw Secret Room. Looks like it's time to get busy. After a summer vacation, Lucas' magic strength also reached 40. According to his estimation, if his magic strength reaches 60, he should be able to enter the Quasi Legendary level. Finally, Lucas turned to the main event of the day, the two Platinum Prizes. Eye of Medusa, weakened version The Petrifying Eye of the Gorgon Medusa is legendary, because it is a weakened version, it can only petrify the target, but cannot kill it. Seeing the skill introduction, Lucas stroked his chin. Is the system planning to let him have a stare contest with the basilisk? The blue eyes in the mirror gradually turned red, and the pupils also turned into the vertical pupils of snakes. As he tried the eye of Medusa, only then did he learn about the hidden abilities that were not explained in the introduction. Possessing the eyes of Medusa makes Lucas immune to any petrification powers below those eyes. Even the eyes of the basilisk, he is now completely immune to them, because the rank of the basilisk is much lower than that of the Gorgon Medusa. Learning about this hidden ability, Lucas smiled self-deprecatingly. Unexpectedly, he guessed it right, the system really planned to make him and the basilisk do a stare contest. But that's fine too, he was still struggling with how to avoid the basilisk's eyes, but now he can safely and boldly approach the opponent and subdue it. Only during this period. If people saw these eyes, they would mistake him for the heir of Slytherin. Stopping the eye of Medusa, Lucas looked at his other new skill. Life Steal, level 1 The host focuses on the enemy, 
and the power of the void will devour the enemy. This magic can return a certain amount of vitality to the host. Hiss, it's actually a magic that absorbs life force. For now, there is no magic that can absorb the life force of other creatures for its own use. Except for Riddle's diary, of course. That might just be the accidental result of the black magic in the diary. If there is really a magic that directly absorbs life force, Voldemort wouldn't split his soul into pieces in search of immortality. So what can the life force absorbed by this magic do? It can be used to stay young forever, increase physical strength, heal injuries instantly, prolong your life. If the vitality is enough, Lucas can truly live forever. This is an absolutely broken ability. Lucas took a deep breath and suppressed the impulse in his heart. He took out the final reward, the Goblin Sword. As we all know, the forging skills of goblins are very developed, especially in terms of weapons they have unparalleled talent. Even the famous Greyfinder Sword was forged by the goblins. The one in Lucas' hand, though not as excellent as the Greyfinder Sword, it can still withstand the infusion of magic power from quasi-legendary experts. The Goblin Sword infused with magic power is extremely sharp, and it can also double the magic power wrapped around the sword and launch it out. It is indeed a good melee weapon. Finishing checking the harvest of this lottery, Lucas went to the desk and picked up the quill. After a while, a letter was written. Hestia. With a soft call, Hestia flew to his side. Give this letter to Aunt Vinda, then stay at home and bring back the reply tomorrow morning. Holding the envelope in her mouth, Hestia spread her wings and flew out from the passage in the room. This time, he should really thank Gilderoy Lockhart. Bringing such dangerous creatures to a school full of underage wizards, what a good excuse to attack. Dumbledore, as the headmaster, and the relevant supervisors of the Ministry of Magic cannot escape responsibility. Although it can't cause them much trouble for the time being, little things still add up. Isn't there a basilisk right after this? So it's best to make arrangements for the follow-up. Lucas cast a disillusionment spell on himself and walked out of the common room. Late at night, a series of footsteps sounded in the silent corridor, but there was no one in sight, which confused Filch and made him look everywhere around himself. Just at that moment the Weasley twins, who were traveling at night, were deliberately frightened by someone to expose their figures. Immediately, the chase between the squib caretaker and the pair of imps was once again staged in the castle. Lucas, who succeeded in his prank, went to the seventh floor. Room of requirement, Lucas can't remember how many times he's been here. Drawing his wand, he walked slowly through the area that had been inspected before the summer vacation. When he finally reached the unchecked area, he pointed the wand at the mountain of discarded objects in front of him. In the last school year, how stupid was he to choose searching little by little? Since the diadem is protected by black magic, that can be easily resolved with only two spells. One is the Shattering Curse, which destroys these discarded items into waste and garbage. Then use Scour Jiffy and dispose of the rubbish. The reason why it is necessary to use the Shattering Curse first is because he's taking into account the issue of consumption. Lucas has a Dark Arts talent bonus, and the consumption of the Shattering Curse is very small, but its power is huge. It is easy to blow up the mountains of discarded objects in front of him into small pieces. Scour Jiffy is household magic. It takes a lot of time to clean up the mountain of discarded objects, but if he's dealing with debris, the consumption will be much smaller. Then, the next thing you can see Lucas is walking, waving his wand as the discarded objects on both sides of the road explode one after another, with the results disappearing right after. Lucas only needs to glance a little while walking to see if there is a silver diadem, it's way more efficient and fun than searching normally. When Dawn approached, Lucas had actually cleared a space the size of a football field directly. Going down like this, Ravenclaw's diadem can be found within two days at most. Lucas, get up. Just before dawn, Draco knocked on the door and Lucas, who had hardly slept all night, got up from the bed in a daze. Saw Draco in a Quidditch uniform, only then did he remember that he had to train this morning. He dragged his tired body to the lockers, took out a small vial of potion and drank it. A pepper-up potion, normally used for colds, but it can also be used like an energy drink to wake people up. In order to cope with many things this school year Lucas prepared a lot of it. His sleepy mind instantly cleared up. Lucas waved his hand, and the wizard's robe on the hanger flew towards him. While getting dressed he also checked the reply letter he got from Hestia. Vinda said in the letter that everything was ready, he just had to wait and see a good show tomorrow. Destroying the letter, Lucas was looking forward to what Vinda had in store for Dumbledore. 
Lucas, hurry up, I'm leaving first. Draco couldn't wait anymore so he opened the door and ran out. Lucas still couldn't figure out why Quidditch was so popular, although he himself is also a member of the team. When he reached the Quidditch pitch, what appeared before his eyes was the scene of Greyfinder and Slytherin facing each other. Looking at the angry expressions of the captains of the two teams. Apparently something went wrong again. Chapter 102, Cho Chong, Promises and Accidents You should be familiar with Quidditch pitches. Many parts of the stadium are constructed of wood which also creates a lot of hidden corners. Plus it's in a remote location, so if it is not the day of the game, almost no one wants to come. Hidden, sparsely populated and the range is large enough, all these points meet the needs of young couples. Over time, the Quidditch pitch has become a place for dating. So when Greyfinder clashed with Slytherin, it alarmed these little lovers hiding in the corner. After a while, in the stands of the Quidditch Stadium, there was a group of spectators. When Lucas arrived, members of the two teams had drawn their wands under the leadership of their respective captains. The surrounding students did not try to stop them, but booed and cheered. Lucas pointed his wand at his throat and said loudly, Stop! The huge sound waves pushed the grass on the ground, it also made the two teams cover their ears and look outside the gate. Seeing Lucas coming, the Slytherin students' expression changed. The momentum on their body suddenly weakened a lot. Greyfinder was the opposite though, the memory of Lucas stealing the house cup still vivid. Although some little lions thought what he said at the time made sense, but most lions are stupid and thought that Lucas was trying to sabotage Greyfinder's house cup win. Plus with his Slytherin house status, some of Greyfinder's students hated him from the bottom of their hearts. What happened? Coming between the two teams Lucas first looked at Marcus Flint. Just a reminder by the way, the gorilla's younger sister is the chief of the fourth grade, Marcy Flint. Chief, you should know that today we are going to train a new seeker. I know about it, and what I'm asking is why the conflict happened. When Marcus heard this, his face became very embarrassed. Needless to say, he was the reckless guy who took the initiative to provoke the incident. Lucas didn't notice, but when Marcus called out the word chief, most of the Greyfinder team looked shocked. Harry was very curious when he saw this and tugged at Fred's uniform, Fred, what's the matter? Didn't you hear? They're called Lucas Chief. Harry said puzzledly, isn't this normal? You said last year that Lucas is the chief of his year in Slytherin, right? George turned around now. Seeing that Ron also sneaked into the team, he was taken aback for a while, and then continued to explain. It's different. Last year we were talking about the chief of the year, but now we're talking about the chief of the house. Isn't that still the chief? Seeing that Harry hadn't reacted yet, the twins looked at each other, sandwiching Harry between the left and the right. Oh Harry, let the Weasley twins clear that up for you. The chief of the year, as the name suggests, refers to the chief of his respective year who is responsible for managing the affairs of his direct classmates. But they won't be called chief when they're outside. Think about it, your good friend Lucas, was he ever called chief last year? Harry thought about it carefully and found in public, the Slytherin students really didn't seem to call Lucas the title of chief except for the first day greeting in the Great Hall during breakfast. Harry nodded in understanding then looked at the twins, waiting for them to continue explaining. The chief of the house, as can be seen from the title, is the chief of the whole Slytherin house, and the most powerful person in Slytherin besides the head of house. Yes, all Slytherins, including the resident ghosts, must obey the orders of the chief of the house unconditionally. Even when the head of house makes a wrong decision, the chief can raise objections. After all, the head is chosen by the headmaster, and the chief of the house is chosen by all Slytherin students. After the twins finished speaking, they looked at Harry quietly. Really? Harry's reaction was the same as when they first learned about the system. Full of envy. Fred patted Harry on the shoulder and asked, Aren't you envious? Seeing Harry nod, George said with a smile, Don't be envious, it's not easy to be the chief of the house, and while you gain a lot of power, you also need to bear a lot of responsibilities. As chief of Slytherin House he must lead them to glory. The twins stopped here. Judging by their expressions, it was obvious that they still had something to say. Seeing this, Ron hurriedly said, I'm your younger brother, and Harry is also my good friend, so there's nothing you can't say. The twins nodded and said in a lower voice. The previous Slytherin chief was said to be you know who. Be it good or bad, in that era, children from wizard families were proud to be in Slytherin. The two immediately returned to the front of the team after speaking. 
Looking at Harry who was frowning tightly, Ron whispered in his ear, I didn't expect that the previous chief would be you know who, then I don't know what that guy Lucas will become in the future. It doesn't seem fair to compare them, but Harry still listened. He looked up at Lucas, a look of alienation in his eyes. Certainly, Harry wasn't someone who could change his mind with a few words, which means that there might be other reasons for this change. Then it's settled, Captain Wood. Lucas made peace with Oliver Wood. One half of the stadium for each team, and they will be training separately without interfering with each other. Waiting for the Greyfinder team to ride off on their brooms, Lucas glanced at Marcus and the others. The next time you use your brain, so many people are watching, if you use your wands, it will only be us who are in the wrong. Don't look at Marcus who is already in sixth grade. But he dared not even speak back, and it wasn't until the end that he cursed under his breath, that stupid Oliver would. Lucas frowned slightly and waved them to practice, but Draco stayed behind. The first Quidditch game of the year is between us and Greyfinder, and your father will be there to watch. Draco, don't embarrass your Malfoy family, and don't embarrass our house. I want the team to get off to a good start, and I want us to win the first game. After Lucas finished speaking, he stretched out his hand, Oxio Nimbus 2000. After a while, his Nimbus 2000, modified, flew from the castle. Use my broom for the game, which is a modified version, much faster than the 2001 in your hand. Throwing the broom to Draco, Lucas turned and walked into the stands. He is now a coach. But in fact, he doesn't need to direct at all. He just took a place to see if he could still get the achievement points after winning. At the same time, two girls also arrived outside the gate of the Quidditch pitch. It's just that the atmosphere between the two is very delicate. Hermione, I'm sorry, and thank you. You don't need to apologize to me. In fact, I have long thought that such a day will come. He is too excellent, isn't he, Dot? Hermione pretended to be casual and said. As they walked into the stadium, the two immediately saw the blonde boy sitting in the stands. There was more obsession in Cho's eyes, yes, he is too excellent. I'm just afraid he might leave me behind if I don't compromise. So, I already knew that he would not belong to me alone, but Cho. Hermione turned to look at Cho Chong with a very serious expression. Since you have chosen him, you must never do anything wrong to him. I mean anything, otherwise I will never let you go. Cho Chong had never seen such a serious look on Hermione's face. At this moment, she suddenly felt a little guilty. She didn't think her feelings for Lucas were as deep as Hermione's. And Hermione still has not formalized her relationship with Lucas. She shook her head quickly in her heart. No, I am no worse than her. When are you going to tell that guy? Hermione's voice came from beside her again and the two looked at the blonde boy not far away. Cho asked softly, how come you're not together yet? Let me think. Hermione thought for a while and added, during the fog that permeated the entire Paris. Cho nodded, she also heard about the fog that day. That day I was going to kiss him but he stopped me and said it was too soon, and I had thought he created the fog just for that Hermione pouted when she talked about this. Turns out it was Lucas who made that fog. It's ridiculous that the aurors of the French Ministry of Magic became nervous because of a heavy fog. The person I like must beat me in Quidditch, so I plan to compete with him again. Hermione didn't understand what she meant. Didn't Lucas already win once? Cho smiled and walked towards Lucas in the stands. Lucas. Seeing Cho walking towards him, Lucas responded with a smile, Cho, what are you doing here? Not only me, but also Hermione. It's just that she walks slowly and is still behind. Oh Lucas nodded and continued to look towards the sky. I heard you're not going to play Quidditch this year. And Lucas nodded again. Cho raised a hand and brushed a strand of black hair behind her ear. What about the game against our Ravenclaw team? You're not playing. Probably not. No, you have to play. Lucas turned his attention away from the sky and looking at the girl next to him, he found that her eyes showed unprecedented seriousness. Cho took a deep breath, looked at the blonde boy and said. How about we have another competition? Seriously, no one should hold back in the competition. Lucas frowned and his eyes turned to Hermione at the entrance. Seeing her nodding slightly, he instantly understood what the two women meant. Okay, I will definitely play in person for the game against Ravenclaw after Halloween. Getting his answer, Cho had a beautiful smile on her face. Just when the two faced each other and the atmosphere was good, 
scared shouts sounded from the stands. Lucas turned to look and saw that Harry had fallen off the broom. And he was falling to the ground at an extremely fast speed. Chapter 103, Eliminate Hidden Dangers Why did Harry fall off the broom? In fact, it has something to do with Lucas. Although Draco had ridden Lucas' broomstick before. T slash N, that sounded kinda S-U-S-N-G-L. But only at low altitude and slow flight, so when he learned that the broom in his hand could fly way faster, naturally he wanted to give it a try. Needless to say, the speed was so fast that Draco's palms were sweating. Then, his bad habit of showing off had to reveal itself. Harry, do you want to compete to see who gets the snitch first? Harry naturally had no objection so he stood opposite Draco on his broomstick. As soon as Draco let go, the golden snitch disappeared from view. The Quidditch team trains daily, and the other six positions have training tasks, only the seeker didn't. So Harry has been watching his teammates practice from high above, and Draco's proposal was exactly what he wanted. And, Harry also wanted to win against Draco in his heart, to prove to his teammates that he is an excellent seeker who can help them to defeat Slytherin. Harry looked down to the stands below and thought it's a shame that Lucas didn't play this year. Harry, if you get distracted, I'm going to get the snitch. Draco's voice came from beside him, making him come back to his senses and find that his opponent had already flown behind him. Turning the broom, Harry chased after him in a flash. The players of the two teams stopped their training and their eyes were fixed on the two people who were chasing each other. Harry. Overtake him, you can do it. Ron waved a flag for his friend in the stands. The team members of Gryffindor also cheered for Harry. The two who were chasing gradually became serious when they heard the cheers from their companions. Looking at Harry who kept accelerating beside him, Draco lowered his body and increased the speed of the broom to the maximum. In just the blink of an eye, he surpassed his opponent. Harry was taken aback for a moment, and looked at the broom that Draco was using. What he saw was not a Nimbus 2001, but a Nimbus 2000 just like him, which immediately made him think about whose broom it was. Last year, it was the owner of that broom that stomped him and Gryffindor down, while also making the first Quidditch game in his life end in a fiasco. Thinking of this, Harry accelerated his flight speed again, but he didn't notice that Draco had already got the snitch. Draco was about to show off, when he turned around and saw Harry coming towards him. Harry, it's all over. As he talked he realized that Harry's eyes were fixed on the gold snitch, and trying to prevent them from crashing into each other he threw the snitch out again. But even so, Harry's broom still scratched against his broom. Draco was just floating without moving, so his broom stabilized quickly. But Harry, who was moving at high speed, was not so lucky and was thrown straight away by his own broom. Ron, who had been paying attention to the two, immediately drew his wand. Malfoy, you mean bastard. A spell flew out from the broken wand. Miraculously, there were no surprises this time and didn't explode on his face like usual. Unfortunately for Draco, he was successfully hit by the spell and fell off the broom just like Harry. Just when everyone in the stadium was anxious, a cold voice came from the stands. Arresto momentum. Lucas held out both hands and cast magic on Harry and Draco at the same time. Fortunately, he shot in time, because if he delayed for just a few seconds, both of them would have been smashed to paste. Once the two seekers landed smoothly, members of the two teams immediately rushed to their side. What happened? Lucas parted the crowd, looked at the two and asked. They didn't have a chance to answer when Ron yelled from the sidelines, I saw it, Malfoy hit Harry, that's why Harry fell off the broom. You're talking nonsense. Draco looked angrily at the guy who was talking nonsense. Shut up. Lucas' cold voice sounded. He first looked at Ron, Mr. Weasley, I will truthfully inform Professor McGonagall of your behavior just now. Casting spells maliciously on your classmates, causing them to fall from a high altitude and almost dying, no matter who among them both is at fault for what happened, you will be severely punished. He then looked at Harry and Draco again, motioning for them to explain what had just happened. Draco hurriedly explained the cause and effect, while Harry also nodded along, admitting that he was eager to win and bumped into Draco's broom by accident. Once everyone heard it was just an accident, the tense atmosphere between the two teams improved. Just when everyone thought the matter was over, they saw Lucas suddenly summon Harry's broom with the summoning charm. He brushed the broom carefully with his hand and said, This broom is cursed with magic that can affect emotions. Everyone was shocked. Harry even looked at his friend immediately since the broom was only held by him before, but Ron shook his head hurriedly, 
it's not me, it's really not me, I don't know anything. Lucas also shook his head and denied, it can't be Mr. Weasley, the magic on it is a bit different, more like the magic of a house elf. House elf. Everyone was puzzled by this, but Harry seemed to think of something and his expression became a little angry. Harry's expression didn't escape Lucas' eyes, this also allowed him to confirm that Dobby had indeed come to Hogwarts. Actually for Dobby, Lucas didn't have any negative feelings. There is nothing wrong with wanting freedom and it's okay to mess around. But being a house elf from a pure blood family, everything he does may cause trouble to the family he serves. And most pure blood families hide some shady secrets, which their house elves are very familiar with. It's just that they can't speak out because of the contract, but what if someone takes advantage of it? As a partner of the Malfoy family, Lucas had to remind him of this. Returning the broom to Harry, everyone dispersed to continue training. Draco followed behind Lucas, feeling uneasy. He thought that he was going to reprimand him for showing off again. Unexpectedly, Lucas asked himself to call his family's house elf when he opened his mouth. Here? But this is not the manner. Although Draco felt it was weird, he still called out Dobby's name as Lucas ordered. Snap! With a soft sound, Dobby tremblingly appeared in front of Draco. It responded to the summon order so quickly, plus what Lucas said when he checked the broom just now. Draco is not a fool. He asked Dobby angrily, why did you do that? Dobby just wanted to help Harry Potter, and Harry Potter is a good guy. Of course I understand that he's a good guy. What I'm asking is why you cast a spell on Harry. You must have done it at the beginning of school, right? Answer me truthfully, Dobby. To the command of the master, the house elf must answer, so Dobby nodded and said, yes, Dobby just doesn't want Harry Potter to come to school, and Dobby doesn't want to hurt Harry Potter. Dobby, who gave you permission to use magic? How can you use magic without your owner's permission? Draco growled and questioned the elf in front of him. It's okay, Draco, let Dobby go back to Malfoy Manor now, it's not good for him to stay outside for too long. Hearing Lucas' reminder, Draco calmed down a bit. He looked coldly at the elf in front of him and said, Dobby, return to Malfoy Manor immediately, and you are not allowed to leave the manor for half a step in the future unless ordered, this is the order of your master. Dobby obeys. Dobby looked a little sad and disappeared from the two of them after snapping his fingers. Lucas looked at Draco who was still angry, smiled and patted him on the shoulder. Okay, let's continue to train, it's just a small matter. He returned to the stands after speaking. At this moment Hermione and Cho Chong sat together and muttered about girl things in a low voice. As they saw him come back, Hermione hastily dragged Lucas to sit between the two of them. Lucas, the Grey Lady invited us to Sir Nicholas' death day party next month. Neither Cho nor I want to go see it alone, so can you accompany us? Nearly headless Nick. Seeing two people nodding, Lucas frowned, Ladies, do you know what the death day party is? It's a banquet for dead people. Of course we know, but where else can you go to a ghost party besides Hogwarts? Lucas thought about it, and it seemed that he really couldn't refuse. Well, I hope you will not regret it then. After all, he already knew what the death day party would look like. When is it exactly? On Halloween night. Oh Merlin, why do we have to skip the Halloween dinner and celebrate the death anniversary of a ghost that has been dead for 500 years instead? Hearing Lucas complain, the two girls covered their mouths and laughed. None of the three noticed that outside the gate of the Quidditch pitch, a silhouette with long red hair disappeared in a flash. In the evening they had a great dinner together and Lucas then sent the two girls back to the Ravenclaw Tower. Lucas didn't sleep well last night and felt really bad so he just wants to hurry back to the dormitory to rest. In the evening, he had to go to the room of requirement to continue searching for the diadem of Ravenclaw. But this night Lucas fell asleep early. Hermione was sitting by the window looking at the night sky outside with some melancholy, while Cho tossed and turned in her bed and couldn't fall asleep. She couldn't take the image of that blonde boy off her mind. Meanwhile, there is another girl who is also worrying about Lucas. Ginny Weasley. She looked at her sleeping roommate, and took out a black diary from her desk. Tom, I saw him again today, what should I do? I can't help but want to see him. The ink quickly disappeared from the journal, but Ginny was not surprised. Obviously, this is not the first time she has used the diary. Soon, some beautiful cursive characters appeared in the blank space of the diary. Chapter 104, The Howlers, Death Day Party Begins. Ginny, 
would you like to tell me your story? Like how you met him. Beautiful cursive characters appeared in front of Ginny. Ginny felt a little shy just being asked about it. Okay, but you can't tell anyone. Well, it's not like I can really tell anyone in my current state, can I? Ginny glanced at the diary and smiled self-deprecatingly. Then she wrote down the process of meeting Lucas in her diary. Ginny wasn't sure when she first came to like Lucas. The object of her admiration and longing should have been the famous Harry Potter. In fact, when Harry came to her home, Ginny did feel shy. But when did that feeling go away? Probably after the opening ceremony that caused a sensation in the entire British wizarding world. The first thing that attracted Ginny was Lucas's outstanding appearance. Then what made her fall deeper was probably his elegant behavior when he presented her with the prize. Accompanied by chance encounters again and again, Ginny found that all the admiration she once had for Harry Potter had been transferred to Lucas. The blonde boy was obviously only one year older than her. But he was able to make achievements that even her parents were incapable of doing. With such a comparison, Harry Potter seems to not be very good in other aspects except for his famous name. Tom Riddle patiently let the girl tell her story. Immediately, a person who is both good at character and learning comes to mind. The image of a boy who is very popular with teachers and classmates. In fact, everyone will meet such a person when they are students. Back then, Tom Riddle was also someone else's dream. So Tom, who is very good at deceiving people, sensed the inferiority complex in the girl's words. Then he responded through the diary, after listening to your description, the boy is indeed very good, and then? Have you tried to pursue him? Seeing the word pursue, Ginny's face suddenly turned red. She wrote in a panic, how is it possible? She spent a whole week anxious and restless until she finally boarded the train to Hogwarts. Once she was at Hogwarts she came to realize just how truly dazzling and outstanding the name Lucas Grindelwald is. As she asked her big brothers and senior schoolmates about him, but the more she knew about Lucas, the more Ginny felt inferior. Her family was not well off, and her academic performance is not particularly outstanding. The only thing that can be said to be good is her appearance. But beside Lucas, there are two girls who are not inferior to herself which made Ginny very distressed, especially seeing Lucas' intimate behavior with those two girls today. She knew those two girls, Hermione Granger and Cho Chong, two top students from Ravenclaw. After writing down all of her troubles during this time in the diary, Ginny felt much better. Just when she was about to say goodnight to Tom, a sentence suddenly appeared in the diary. Do you want to be better than those two girls? Do you really want to get that boy's attention? Maybe I can help you. Tom in the diary believed that Ginny must not be able to resist such a temptation. Love blinds and can make people crazy and irrational, just like his mother back then. In order to make a muggle fall in love with herself, she used a love potion, after some time when she was pregnant she started to think that muggle was truly in love with her and stopped giving him the potion, only to be heartbroken when he left her as soon as the effects disappeared. That's why he scoffed at Dumbledore's obsession with love. But he has to admit that there are times when the power of love does work, like now. When Ginny Weasley wrote the plea for help, Tom Riddle felt a tiny breath of life enter the diary. He finally had the hope of resurrection. Under the night, inside her room, the naive girl looked at the words in the diary and was overjoyed. Also on the seventh floor, there were violent explosions from time to time. The sun is rising. Hogwarts is back to life. Lucas followed the Slytherin snakes to the dining hall in a good mood since today is the time for what Vinda promised to be a good show. He wanted to see what a good show it would be. Chief, have you heard? What? Lucas picked up a piece of bread and spread some jam on it while he kept his eyes on Blaze Zabani who was speaking. I heard that Gilderoy Lockhart seems to be held accountable by the Ministry of Magic. He needs to explain the origin of the Red Caps. Speaking of Lockhart, Lucas had to admire the exuberant vitality of the man. It's only been a couple days and he already returned to Hogwarts from St. Mungo's. When Madame Pomfrey and the infirmary learned of this, she was very surprised. A normal person would have to stay in the hospital for over a week with all of his injuries. It's not surprising, what he did put the lives of his students in danger, several among them being from important families. If the Ministry of Magic doesn't handle it well, its reputation will be affected again. Lucas still hadn't spoken, when Draco answered for him. This surprised several others and Pansy Parkinson looked him up and down. Are you really the Draco Malfoy we know? Of course. Draco rolled her eyes gracefully, he just didn't like thinking about these things before. 
Plus being so well protected by his father, he doesn't need to worry about family affairs. But after over a year of being in contact with Lucas, he found that he could no longer be so childish. Whether it's for his best friend, or for the Malfoy family, he is not allowed to be the same as before. Seeing that a few people still intend to continue teasing Draco, Lucas put down the bread and said, OK, hurry up and eat, there will be a good show soon. They looked at each other with curiosity, but still listened to him and sped up their eating. Just when they were about to finish eating, countless owls flew in from above the Great Hall. A very small portion of them flew to the students, while the remaining hundreds of owls all flew towards Dumbledore who was sitting on the teacher's table. Lucas catched the daily profit thrown by Hestia. The headline on the front page was Lockhart's class incident. The reporter is sharp, pointing at Hogwarts headmaster Dumbledore for mismanagement. Several passages refer to his advanced age of over a hundred years and questioned whether he was still sound of mind or had already become senile. Pointing out that the greatest wizard of this century is no longer suitable for the post of headmaster. Then proceeded to publicly criticize the inaction of some ministry officials. It's hard to imagine that in the official newspaper of the Ministry of Magic, there will be remarks criticizing the Ministry of Magic. This newspaper has made a good start, but the main event will not come until the basilisk wakes up. Lucas looked towards the end of the article and Rita Skeeter's name popped off the page. It was a wise choice when he decided to recruit her as his subordinate. Lucas, look at the teacher's seat. Draco patted Lucas' arm with a little excitement. At this moment, those owls had come to Dumbledore. They're like bombers that drop their bombs with precision, dropping the red envelopes in their claws and beaks. Dumbledore had felt a very bad premonition when he saw so many owls flying in his direction, and when he saw what they were carrying it was confirmed. He was soon inundated with hundreds of howlers. At this moment, all eyes were on Dumbledore and Professor Snape even smiled a little. Perhaps he had been looking forward to this moment for a long time. Before Dumbledore could make a move, those letters unsealed themselves, and turned into mouths one by one. Albus Dumbledore. I very much doubt whether your brain is filled with sweets. Why do such dangerous creatures appear in school? Dumbledore, I am so disappointed in you, and if my child is hurt by this, I will definitely recommend that the Ministry of Magic fire you as headmaster. Headmaster Dumbledore, we all know that defense against the dark arts professors at Hogwarts are hard to find, but please also think about the children. You are so stupid and stubborn. Dumbledore, you just wait for me to propose your punishment at the school board. Hundreds of mouths speak at the same time, and speak very loudly. Not to mention Dumbledore up close, even the students in the farther part of the Great Hall couldn't bear it. Lucas was the first to get up and leave with a spring in his steps. The arrangement of Vinda's play was really wonderful, the old bee had probably not received a howler for decades. The venerable headmaster Dumbledore has been sent hundreds of howlers. That will most probably be tomorrow's Daily Prophet headlines. When the Slytherins saw their chief leave, they immediately got up and followed him out of the Great Hall. Not long after everyone left, the figure of Professor Snape appeared at the front of the corridor. Professor. You go to class first, I have something to say to Mr. Grindelwald. When everyone left, Professor Snape said in his characteristic tone, You did this, didn't you? What? Seeing Lucas trying to play dumb, Snape gave him a cold look. Don't make trouble, one time is fine, but if there are too many times, even Dumbledore will get impatient. As punishment for playing tricks on the headmaster, go to my office after dinner and take away the things you need. Watching Professor Snape walking away quickly, Lucas suddenly felt that the doorman's awkward personality was quite interesting. What he said about punishment, isn't it that the high-level potion that has been brewed is ready? Now that there is Wolfsbane potion, the plan to subdue the werewolves in the Forbidden Forest is also on the agenda. Time flies. In the blink of an eye it's Halloween. Lucas was crazy busy during this time. Since he became the chief of Slytherin, Professor Snape has entrusted him with all matters of the house. FK. Lucas doesn't even have time to go to the room of requirement. Fortunately, those days are coming to an end. Due to his busy schedule recently, Lucas didn't accumulate many achievement points so he can only give up the Halloween lottery. It's better to wait until Christmas time to draw more at once. What is also gratifying is that in the hourglass of Slytherin in the corridor, the emeralds surpassed those of other houses by a lot. It seems that his housemates have followed his orders seriously and were working hard to get points for the house. Of course, the support of other houses is also indispensable. Mr. Ron Weasley, for example, had 50 points deducted for attacking his classmates on the Quidditch pitch. 
At the end of the day's classes, Lucas changed into a set of wizard robes suitable for attending a banquet. When he reached their meeting place at the dungeons, Hermione and Cho had been waiting for a long time. The three just chatted for a while as they walked to the party. Harry and his friend Ron also ran over, but seeing the three of them, Harry's face darkened. It seems that he didn't want to meet Lucas at the moment. Chapter 105, Harry is Crazy? Mrs. Norris is dead. With the humid air of late October, the dungeon is even colder than ever. The road leading to Sir Nicholas's death day party looked incredibly eerie under the decoration of black candles. Lucas and the others looked at each other in such an environment. Harry, long time no see. Lucas took the initiative to greet first, but what he got in exchange was just a nod from Harry. Since the Quidditch match at the beginning of the month which Gryffindor lost to Slytherin again, Harry seems to be deliberately avoiding Lucas. And he almost hasn't been hanging out with Draco lately. Looking at Harry and Ron walking ahead, Hermione chuckled a little. I guess Harry is mad at you. Anyone with a discerning eye can tell that your broomstick is different, but you lent it to Malfoy. Cho nodded and said, that's right, I'm going to add one rule now, you are not allowed to use that broom in our competition that's in a few days. Lucas looked annoyed at the dungeon roof. I'm really giving Draco a hard time. With his appearance, he successfully made the two girls laugh. Nick's death day party was held in an abandoned classroom in the dungeon. When the three of them arrived together there were already many ghosts mingling together. Not just the resident ghosts of Hogwarts Castle, but also a lot of ghosts who came from different places. I really couldn't tell that Sir Nicholas was so popular. Lucas' words were affirmed by the two women. It's just that the faces of the two of them are not very good looking at this time. The death day party seemed to be a little different from what they had imagined. The two women saw the fat friar squatting beside a long table, he was inhaling fiercely at a fish full of a rancid smell. In the end, Hermione couldn't help but ask, can you really taste like this? Oh, just a little. After the fat friar finished speaking, he realized that Lucas Grindelwald was beside him. Onik actually invited Lucas Grindelwald too. His loud voice successfully attracted everyone's attention. Sir Nicholas, who was floating over towards Harry and Ron, turned to look towards them immediately after hearing the sound, and upon seeing Lucas, he flew over immediately. It is an honor to have you here, Mr. Grindelwald. Happy 500th death anniversary, Sir Nicholas. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Hearing that Lucas was actually sending blessings to himself, he was so moved that he almost shed tears. The only reason why it is almost, is because as a ghost he has no tears. At this time, other ghosts also approached Lucas and the girls, talking enthusiastically. The only ghosts that don't want to talk to Grindelwald, which is the capital for bragging later, or more like they don't dare to approach at all, were actually Peeves and Moaning Myrtle. These two cowards had already hidden in a corner where Lucas couldn't see. Harry and Ron watched as there were suddenly fewer ghosts around them and felt a little uncomfortable. Especially Harry. Those ghosts praised him so much just now for defeating Voldemort. But in the blink of an eye, they all went to Lucas. This sudden change made it hard for Harry to accept. Merlin's stinky socks, the damned Grindelwald is so popular with ghosts, what's so good about him? Hearing Ron complaining, Harry nodded subconsciously. When he noticed what he did, he immediately looked to the side and was relieved to see that Ron was still staring at Lucas. During the rest of the party, most of the ghosts sang and danced around Lucas' group. Although the songs of the ghosts are hard to hear and heinous, but out of etiquette, the three endured it. Until Sir Patrick broke into the classroom with his headless horseman hunting party and the three of them took advantage of the chaos and left. Harry and Ron also escaped with them. They walked slowly in separate groups to the Great Hall upstairs. Hopefully the Halloween feast isn't over yet. Cho muttered something in a low voice and Hermione on the side nodded quickly. They didn't eat anything at the death day party as there wasn't any food for living people, and now their bellies are growling with hunger. Don't worry. I know where the kitchen is, so we won't have to starve. The two girls breathed a sigh of relief. They were just about to say something when they noticed that Harry, who was walking in front, was suddenly leaning against the wall. What's wrong with Harry? Hermione frowned, and gave Harry an odd look. No wonder she is like this. If normal people see someone leaning on the wall with his eyes closed and saying something that someone was talking on the wall. I'm afraid they will all regard that person as crazy. Not only Hermione and Cho thought so, even Ron thought that something was seriously wrong with his friend. Harry, what are you talking about, no one is talking, did you hear wrong? 
After Ron finished speaking, he looked at the three of them behind, then he looked around again. It seems that he just wanted to confirm that there is no one else there except the five of them. No, someone was really talking. It was just inside the wall, it was talking in a weird voice. Seeing that his friend doesn't believe in himself, Harry suddenly became anxious. It's going to kill someone. He started running along the wall wanting to follow the voice in order to stop it. Of course Lucas knew what Harry was hearing so he was a little excited at the moment. The basilisk was finally released and life in the castle will become more exciting. Let's go, let's follow, and have a look. One in each hand, Lucas pulled the two girls and chased in Harry's direction. When they found Harry. What appeared in front of her was Mrs. Norris with her tail hanging from a torch. There was also writing on the wall in what seemed to be blood. The Chamber of Secrets has been opened once more, enemies of the air, beware. Lucas whispered the bloody words on the wall. Immediately afterwards he walked up to Mrs. Norris and after repeated confirmation his expression suddenly became serious. Hermione, Cho, you must promise me that you will return to the Ravenclaw Tower immediately after dinner every day, and you will not come out until the next day in the morning. Lucas, what's wrong? The two had never seen such a serious expression on Lucas. Under his gaze, the two could only nod their heads in agreement. Only then did Lucas say, Mrs. Norris is dead. What? They covered their mouths in surprise then turned to look at Mrs. Norris who was hanging under the torch. At this moment, a large number of footsteps came from the corridor. It was the students who were going back to their dormitories after the Halloween feast. When several people surrounded Lucas in a corner. Someone, like Lucas, read the blood on the wall and the corridor became silent. Air? Chamber of Secrets. In the quiet environment, someone suddenly whispered something. Everyone looked in the direction of the voice and saw Colin Creevy holding up the camera in his hand. It seemed that he was going to take a picture of the writing on the wall. What's the matter in front? Make way, let me pass. Filch's voice came from behind the crowd. He parted the crowd and came in front of Lucas and the others. He was just going to ask what happened when he saw Mrs. Norris hanging on the torch. Mrs. Norris. Filch was stunned. He has lived with his cat for many years and there seems to be some kind of special connection between the two. Mrs. Norris always followed Filch's instructions to find all the little wizards who wandered in the castle at night. But now, his Mrs. Norris was dead, this caused tears to burst out of his eyes instantly. Who was it? You. Filch looked at Lucas, who was closest to Mrs. Norris. First of all I am very sorry for the death of M.R.S. Norris, and then I want to state that I did not kill M.R.S. Norris. Impossible, it must be you. At this moment, Filch has lost his rationality and only believed what he saw. So he rushed forward, intending to grab Lucas by the collar, but before Filch could approach, a wand appeared in his sight. At the same time the students of Slytherin House also drew their wands and pointed at Filch. Stop it, Argus. Stop it. Dumbledore's voice rang out as he arrived with a group of professors. When he saw the blood on the wall, he immediately recalled what happened fifty years ago in his mind. Oh poor Mrs. Norris, if I had been here at that time, I would have been able to prevent this tragedy, please accept my condolences Mr. Filch. Lockhart didn't miss a chance to brag even as the poor Filch was heartbroken. Lucas hadn't expected him to be back from the Ministry of Magic so soon. Lockhart found himself ignored when he finished speaking and after a few awkward laughs, he stepped back. Dumbledore approached Mrs. Norris first. After observing the situation, he looked at Filch who was crying. Don't be sad, Argus, you and Mr. Grindelwald, Miss Granger and Miss Chong. Also Mr. Potter and Weasley, follow me. Dumbledore was about to take several people to his office, but Lockhart jumped out again. Headmaster, my office is closer, so it's better if we go to my place. Dumbledore took one look at him, and finally nodded in agreement. Dumbledore walked in the lead of the group while Filch carried his Mrs. Norris and followed at the end. He walked into the defense against the Dark Arts office in a mighty manner. Looking at Mrs. Norris who was completely petrified on the table. Dumbledore said regretfully, Sorry Filch, Mrs. Norris is unfortunately dead. Filch cried even more sadly after hearing this and no one knew how to console him. When the office fell silent, the stupid Lockhart jumped out again. I once encountered such an attack in a small village. In the end, I gave some amulets to the villagers so that they survived. He boasted shamelessly, completely disregarding the current atmosphere. Behavior like this aroused the disgust of everyone present. Professor Flitwick rolled his eyes, 
and his fingers were about to move, as if he wanted to hold his wand tightly. Dumbledore paid no attention and turned to look at Lucas and the others and asked. What were you doing there? Lucas immediately explained about going to the Death Day party today. What he got in exchange was ruthless ridicule from his own head of house. Mr. Grindelwald really has a lot of friends, and he is so familiar with the ghost of Greyfinder. It seems that I need to think carefully about whether I should transfer you to Greyfinder House. Maybe gold and red are more suitable colors for you. Lucas looked away. Didn't he just urge him to speed up the progress of the potion a few times, this old bat really knows how to hold a grudge. Dumbledore nodded, then looked at Harry and Ron who hurriedly said, we also went to the Death Day party. Snort. As soon as Harry finished speaking, Professor Snape snorted coldly. Because they all have sufficient alibi, Dumbledore just gave them a mild reprimand and let them go. But just when Lucas was about to walk out the door, Dumbledore's voice sounded again behind him. Lucas, do you have time? I think we need to talk. Lucas stopped and motioned for Hermione and Cho to go back first, then he turned and looked at the old bee. Of course Headmaster, it is my honor to chat with you. Under the curious gaze of the professors they both walked to the headmaster's office on the seventh floor together. Chapter 106, Ravenclaw's Diadem Iced Lemonade With Dumbledore saying the password, the stone gargoyle moved aside. After a few months, coming again to the headmaster's office, Lucas found that he had never observed it carefully. The first time here he was just there to complete the exploration achievement and then was attracted by the subsequent series of achievements. The second time he was negotiating terms with Dumbledore again, just sitting on the sofa the whole time. Thinking about it now, Greyfinder's common room and headmaster's office seemed to be on the seventh floor. Could the secret room left by Greyfinder be related to the headmaster's office? Dumbledore eyed the boy in front curiously, not understanding what's so good about his office. Lucas, what are you looking for? Maybe I can help you. I'm sorry, Professor. I just realized that I haven't looked at your office carefully the other times I came here. Then when we're done talking, I'll show you around personally. The two came to sit on the sofa. Unchanging furnishings along with familiar sweets and drinks. Seeing Lucas staring at the drink in his hand, Dumbledore said, Recently, I've been drinking a lot of iced lemonade, so I changed the password of the office. Putting the lemonade on the round table, Dumbledore went straight to the point, Lucas. I want to make sure that the previous conversation is still valid. Of course, I am a successful businessman. One of the important conditions for a successful businessman is to keep promises. Lucas put down the black tea in his hand and said, But. But what? But you need to tell me first, what does the so-called Chamber of Secrets and Air mean? Dumbledore had no intention of hiding that so he told the story of the Slytherin Chamber of Secrets and the Air simply and clearly. After the old man finished speaking, Lucas asked again, then what is in the secret room? Or what killed Mrs. Norris? Dumbledore was silent for a long time before shaking his head. I'm not sure. In fact, this is not the first time something like this has happened in the school. Lucas raised his eyebrows, showing a willingness to hear more. Dumbledore sighed, 50 years ago, when I was just another professor in the head of Greyfinder House, the Chamber of Secrets was opened. Then what? And then a student died. Dumbledore's eyes dimmed as he recalled the past, maybe it was because he felt sorry for the dead student. Or maybe it reminded him of Voldemort who was still in school at the time. Talking about the past, Dumbledore was always full of regrets, not just about Tom Riddle, but also about Gellert Grindelwald, his brother Aberforth, and his sister Ariana. There was a brief silence in the room and Lucas didn't bother Dumbledore, who was caught up in sentimental memories. He waited until the headmaster's mood improved, only then did he ask. The student you mentioned is the ghost myrtle that haunts the abandoned girl's bathroom right. How did you know? Looking into Dumbledore's curious eyes, Lucas thought the old man was looking down on his intelligence. Headmaster, in the entire Hogwarts castle, only Myrtle wears the student robes representing her house. Looking at his unfriendly eyes, Dumbledore coughed dryly and went on about 50 years ago. Fortunately, the chamber was only opened once 50 years ago. Later, a classmate reported that someone was raising a dangerous creature, a necromantula, in the school. That's right, it's none other than Hagrid, and all the crimes were later placed on his head. Lucas knows all about this past, he might be even more familiar than Dumbledore. He just wanted to make sure that Dumbledore knew where the Chamber of Secrets was. Does the old man know that there is a basilisk in the Chamber of Secrets? 
Dumbledore had been at Hogwarts too long. With his shrewdness, it wouldn't be surprising to find a Slytherin chamber that had been opened once. Your tone of voice tells me that the student seems innocent. Of course, Acromantulas don't leave their victims petrified like that. Dumbledore looked a little cryptic when he said this. It's like telling Lucas that he knows what the hell is going on. Lucas is more than happy to satisfy a centenarian's wicked taste. And what killed Myrtle and Mrs. Norris? When he saw Dumbledore taking his iced lemonade to sip slowly, Lucas almost overturned the round table in front of him. Seeing that Lucas' eyes gradually became cold, Dumbledore put down his cup and said with a smile, When people are old, they tend to get thirsty when they talk too much. In fact, I already have a rough guess about the creature in the Chamber of Secrets. In legend, anyone who sees Medusa's eyes will be turned to stone, much like Myrtle and Mrs. Norris. Professor, please don't joke around. Lucas interrupted him coldly. You want to tell me that there is a Gorgon in the Chamber of Secrets? If so, I'm sorry but our cooperation is over. Seeing Lucas getting up to leave Dumbledore hastily stopped him, young man, let me finish talking before you leave. Although the creature in the Chamber of Secrets is not a Gorgon, it has the same ability as it, a basilisk, you should have heard of it. Lucas nodded and sat back on the couch. Of course I know, if you take a chicken's egg and put it under the belly of a toad to hatch, you can get a basilisk. Dumbledore nodded affirmatively, that's right, judging from various phenomena, the monster in the Chamber of Secrets must be a basilisk. I don't know whether it has existed for a thousand years or entered the castle from the outside by accident, but it just lives in the Chamber of Secrets. However, after fifty years, this basilisk obviously did not die. Of course, for a basilisk with a long life, it is indeed not easy to die naturally. He stared at Lucas when he finished speaking. Lucas laughed at himself, thank you professor for your appreciation, but I don't think I can beat a basilisk. No, no, the conditions are still the same as before, you only need to protect Harry. Dumbledore said, shaking his head. Perhaps you don't know yet, but Harry spent a happy summer vacation at the Weasley's house, and during that time his good friend's arrogance seems to have rubbed off on him. I don't want to die with a savior who likes nighttime adventures. Seeing the disappointed look in Dumbledore's eyes, Lucas raised his eyebrows and continued, but it's not impossible to negotiate. Dumbledore got it again. Lucas, this is different from what we've been talking about. When Dumbledore said this, his expression was very helpless. Lucas smiled and said, but headmaster, you didn't say I would have to face a basilisk when we made the deal, did you? That's a basilisk, a 5x level dangerous creature, equal to a giant dragon and might be even more dangerous. Well, tell me about your conditions. Lucas was a little surprised that he agreed so easily. Is it possible that he feels that Lucas' service is too good, so he doesn't bargain? Lucas thinks it's possible. After all, last year he protected the savior very well and he even gave up the honor of defeating the dark wizard Quirrell to Harry, successfully solidifying his image as the savior. It's hard not to be satisfied with such a good service, right? Lucas looked up at the ceiling of the headmaster's office when suddenly, his eyes lit up. I want the sword of Greyfinder. What? Dumbledore froze for several seconds. Have you really figured it out? Greyfinder's sword can only be found by those with true Greyfinder qualities. Lucas nodded. Of course I understand, I just need you to declare that the sword of Greyfinder belongs to me from now on as the headmaster. Dumbledore was delighted at the moment. Strictly speaking, the Greyfinder sword is not a Hogwarts item, it's a relic of Godric Greyfinder, one of the founders. Which means that it is private property. So even if he promises in the name of Hogwarts headmaster, it's nothing. Besides, Lucas may not be able to find that naughty sword. Okay, in the name of the headmaster. I now declare that the sword of Greyfinder now belongs to Mr. Lucas Grindelwald. Thank you Headmaster. Of course Lucas understood the difficulty of obtaining the Greyfinder sword. Throughout the original book, only Harry and Neville actually found the Greyfinder sword. But don't forget that before long, Harry would draw the Greyfinder sword in the Chamber of Secrets. And Lucas has ancient alchemy, so it is not difficult to keep that naughty sword once he gets his hands on it. With their deal complete Dumbledore looked very happy and even sent Lucas to the spiral staircase himself. Lucas, don't worry, Fox will show up to help you at critical times. The Phoenix and the Basilisk are inherently hostile. As he left the headmaster's office, Lucas was still thinking about Dumbledore's last words. From this point of view, the old man really has a thorough understanding of the Chamber of Secrets. 
otherwise, the phoenix in the original book would not suddenly appear in the chamber carrying the sorting hat. Only it is not known yet how much Dumbledore knows about the Horcruxes. But even if he doesn't know much about them for now. By the time Harry showed Parseltongue, Dumbledore would have figured it out. Lucas walked all the way forward, and unknowingly came to the room of requirement. It's still early, it's better to go in and continue looking for the diadem. Not long after, a series of explosions sounded again in the room of room of requirement. It's a pity that people outside can't hear it at all. Lucas seems to be having good luck today. After clearing a few mountains of garbage, he saw an ugly bust statue of a wizard. It is said that this is the first headmaster of Hogwarts, but none of this matters. The important thing is that the diadem of Ravenclaw is near this statue. Along with the shattering curse and scour Jiffy used one after another. The first headmaster of Hogwarts was bombed to pieces and then disappeared forever. At the same time a crystal clear crown appeared in midair. Putting a dragonhide glove on his hand Lucas reached out to it. The moment the diadem was in hand, the system's notification sounded in his ears. Congratulations to the host for completing a new achievement, the Diadem of Ravenclaw, reward, 500 achievement points. Chapter 107, The Second Horcrux Destroyed Carefully examining Ravenclaw's diadem to make sure there is no strong black magic on the surface. Lucas picked it up with both hands. The diadem looked like a lady's crown and its overall shape is like an eagle, corresponding to the emblem of Ravenclaw. In the middle of the crown is a black gem the size of a pigeon egg, while the wings on both sides are filled with diamonds of different sizes. At the bottom of the crown is also engraved a short passage. Wit beyond measure is man's greatest treasure. I finally found it. Lucas breathed a sigh of relief, and after a long time, he finally got the second relic of the founders. He carefully stored it and quickly walked towards the exit door. Back in the Slytherin common room Lucas found that everyone was waiting for his return. Chief. Several year chiefs stood up to greet him and the worry in their eyes also disappeared. Lucas looked around the crowd and said, I made everyone worry, but everything is fine so you don't need to worry about me. However, such a big incident has happened. I now request that no one should leave the dormitory at night. No matter who this heir is, this matter is not beneficial to us Slytherins. So don't go around causing unnecessary trouble. Of course, while we won't cause trouble, it doesn't mean we are afraid of trouble. Anyone who dares to slander the glory of Slytherin will have to pay the corresponding price, understand. Everyone stood up facing Lucas and replied in unison, Yes, Chief. It's getting late, let's all go back and rest. When everyone returned to their dormitory, Lucas looked over to the remaining Draco Malfoy who was sitting on the sofa in a daze and didn't notice his approach at all. Worried about Harry. Hearing the voice, Draco immediately came back to his senses. How is it possible? He has his good friend Ron by his side and doesn't need me at all. After Draco finished speaking, he laughed at himself deprecatingly. The two were silent for a few seconds before Draco continued, I was thinking about the air. Why do you care? Aren't you curious? Curious? Lucas looked at him strangely. He did not understand what could be interesting about the air. Draco first glanced at his best friend strangely, then suddenly said, You really don't need to be curious because even the air will become eclipsed in front of you. Lucas thought that Draco was acting weird tonight. No, it should be said that since the estrangement from Harry, Draco has become a little sad. Okay buddy. Lucas turned to Draco and said, maybe I shouldn't have given you that broom. No, for the glory of Slytherin and Malfoy, I must win, and you did nothing wrong. Draco didn't wait for Lucas to finish before retorting. Looking at the worry in the eyes of his best friend, he smiled and patted Lucas' shoulder, don't worry, I'm fine, it's getting late, it's time to go back to sleep. After Draco finished speaking, he turned and walked to his room. From the outside, he seems to be really fine. Lucas thought for a while, and then understood Draco's mood at this time. After all, Draco is still a child, no matter how mature he is, he can't be as experienced as Lucas. So when he loses a good friend so suddenly, he will inevitably feel a little disappointed. But these things are temporary and he will probably be fine after a while. Lucas got up and stretched then went back to his room. Although it is very late, he still has a lot to do. Lucas went to his trunk first, took out a bottle of pepper up potion and drank it, because the next operation cannot be sloppy. Taking out Ravenclaw's diadem, Lucas' hands were once again burning with crimson fiend fire. 
The diadem is the fifth horcrux crafted by Voldemort and the black magic protection on it is stronger than that of the gold cup. Because the gold cup was obtained by Voldemort when he worked at Borgen and Burks right after graduation, he wasn't that powerful back then. And the diadem was after Voldemort slipped out of the place. He found it and turned it into an horcrux while away traveling. During his travels, Voldemort saw and came into contact with a lot of weird black magic, which also made him extremely powerful. The horcruxes produced in this period are naturally more reliable than those in the previous period. With abundant magic power, Lucas controlled fiend fire for a whole night before eradicating all the black magic on it. Last year's alchemy formation came in handy again at this moment. The crown immediately fell apart and Lucas used his ancient elven magic to catch the soul fragment that was about to escape. The fragment gradually turned into a purple rhombic crystal. Just when the crystal took shape, Voldemort, who was far away in Albania, trembled all over. He felt that his soul was weak again. Wormtail, my faithful servant, why don't you come here? Along with Voldemort's whisper, in the Tower of Greyfinder, a sleeping rat was awakened. Before it could react to what was going on, it saw a big ginger cat staring at itself. Crookshanks, this guy left the Ravenclaw common room at some point and ran to Greyfinder's dormitory. At the same time, Tom Riddle in the diary, who was much stronger after this time absorbing some life force, also felt it. He immediately guessed that something happened to another Horcrux. He frowned, and decided to speed up his resurrection plan. Swallowing the crystal, the mana consumed overnight was replenished, this time Lucas clearly felt that his soul strength had increased. Turning to look at the pieces of the diadem, Lucas reassembled it, and then built a new alchemy array. He will restore the broken part of the crown through alchemy. Let the diadem of Ravenclaw shine again. Accompanied by the input of magic power, the new alchemy array emits bluish light. When the sun rose, Lucas slowly placed it on his head and a cool feeling spread through his brain. The effect of the pepper-up potion had already long passed, and Lucas, who was already a little drowsy, sobered up a lot. He tried flipping through a book, discovering that Ravenclaw's diadem can't increase wisdom and make people smarter. Well, it's not exactly wrong. Because it can get rid of anxious emotions and make people calm. It can also improve the activity of the brain, make people more focused when studying, and absorb knowledge more easily. That's why it creates the illusion of making people smarter. Having verified the diadem's ability, Lucas put it away and checked on the achievement's introduction. The part about destroying Voldemort's horcrux has become, two-sevenths. After counting the diary and the upcoming summer vacation where he would get the locket. By the middle of next year, Lucas will be able to destroy at least four horcruxes. The remaining three are more difficult to deal with, and even need to be solved in the later stage. Like the snake Nagini, since it was a living creature, except for Voldemort, no one else would have a chance to find it. The room was tidied up and the alchemy circle was covered with a carpet again. Lucas drank another bottle of Pepper Up Potion before walking out of the dormitory. This morning they have their transfiguration class which is one of his favorites. After breakfast Lucas, Hermione and Cho were walking on the way to their classes. The three of them are going to different classrooms, but there is still a way to go together before they separate. It's really terrible. When I went to the library yesterday, the book Hogwarts, a history that was originally placed in the corner was gone. All of its copies. Hermione grumbled, probably not expecting that a book that no one wanted to read would suddenly become a hit. Cho said with a smile, perhaps everyone is wondering what the Chamber of Secrets is, but I think there should be someone in Ravenclaw who owns a copy of the book, why don't you go back and ask? No, I can see living history this afternoon. As soon as Hermione finished speaking, she felt something was wrong, and hurriedly added, maybe it's the history of death. She was referring, of course, to Cuthbert Bins of History of Magic. What history is unknown to this ancient ghost? Hearing the two talking, Lucas frowned, are many people investigating the Chamber of Secrets? Of course, everyone is interested, at least in our house. Then you have to remind them not to leave the Tower of Ravenclaw at night. As soon as Lucas finished speaking, they arrived at the fork in the road. Seeing Lucas just turn and leave, Hermione was a little annoyed. She was sure Lucas knew what had killed M.R.S. Norris. In their transfiguration class, Professor McGonagall removed a spider from a glass container. Today you need to turn spiders into buttons, whoever finishes first will be awarded 10 points. After saying that, she tapped three times in the air with her wand and the spider in her hand turned into a delicate button with patterns under everyone's gaze. 
After showing the example Professor McGonagall didn't let the little wizards do it right away. She came to the first row, looked at Ron Weasley in front of her and said, Mr. Weasley, it's your turn now. Watching the button turn back into a spider, Ron leaned back in terror. His worst fear is spiders because of a particularly cruel prank the Weasley twins played on him years ago. Professor, I may not be good at it. Professor McGonagall would not let him go even if he begged for mercy. She raised her wand and guided Ron through the transfiguration spell. If you thought Professor McGonagall was making things difficult for Ron, you'd be mistaken. Lucas saw it through Professor McGonagall's eyes, she was trying to help Ron to overcome his fear. With the encouragement of Professor McGonagall and his friends, Ron finally cast a spell on the spider. It's just that because of the broken wand, the resulting button has eight legs and can run around. Mr. Weasley, I think you should change your wand. Professor McGonagall sent a spider flying in front of each student. Seeing Lucas turn the spider into a button while it was still midair, she nodded happily, Yes, Mr. Grindelwald, ten points for Slytherin, dot. The easy transfiguration class is over. After a break and a meal, the afternoon ushered the history of magic class with Professor Binns. For most students, this is a good bedtime class. Cuthbert Binns has always been consistent in his lessons, they are all full of boredom and tediousness with no exception. However, today is somewhat different. The little wizards of Slytherin and Ravenclaw looked at the little witch sitting in the front row with her right hand raised, all showing curious eyes. Professor Binns. Are you? Cuthbert Binns' eyes were full of doubts. In fact, the ghost professor often misremembers people's names. But he has never forgotten something related to history which is kind of amazing. Hermione said helplessly, I'm Hermione Granger, Professor, can you tell us about the Chamber of Secrets? This time, all eyes were on Cuthbert Binns with curiosity gleaming in each of their eyes. Unexpectedly, the Professor angrily rejected the request. Chapter 108, The Chamber of Secrets is opened again. This class is history of magic, and we study facts, not legends, Miss Hope. Hermione didn't mind that the Professor called her by the wrong name. But when he resumed his lecture, the stubborn Miss Know It All raised her right hand again. Oh, Miss Samantha, do you have any questions? It's Granger, Professor, and I think legends are based on a certain foundation, so please tell us about the legend of the Chamber of Secrets. Usually when facing her studies, Hermione will be very stubborn and even Lucas can't do anything about her when she gets like this. So Lucas looked at poor Professor Binns with pity. It will be up to him next. Each time Cuthbert Binns refused to answer the Chamber of Secrets questions, Hermione would always hold up her right hand when the other was giving a lecture. And Cuthbert Binns seems to be dead set. Every time he sees someone raise their hand, he will stop and ask. In the end there was really no other way. This old ghost who has been a professor of the history of magic since the founding of Hogwarts finally put down the notes in his hand. Okay, since you want to hear it, I'll talk about it. As soon as these words came out, the classroom immediately became lively. Cuthbert Binns looked up at the ceiling and muttered, the Chamber of Secrets, let me think. This matter started more than a thousand years ago. Everyone should know that Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry was jointly established by the Big Four. Seeing the little wizards nodded. He continued, a thousand years ago the Muggles were terrified of people with extraordinary powers, they called them wizards, and they persecuted them. In order to protect wizards from persecution, the Big Four decided to set up a magic school. The Hogsmeade village close by was also established at the same time, with the same purpose, to provide a place for adult wizards who fled everywhere to live. Waiting until the little wizards digest and absorb the knowledge he kept going. Then it's the Chamber of Secrets. After the establishment of the school, there was a period of peace and harmony, but the ideas of the four founders still clashed. Salazar Slytherin, the founder of Slytherin House, said that only young wizards of pure blood should be recruited because muggle-born wizards are not very reliable. Speaking of this, Lucas nodded involuntarily. In that feudal period, when wizards appeared in muggle families, it was easy to be exposed. If the location of Hogwarts was revealed, the hard work of the founders would have been ruined. Salazar Slytherin was not wrong in his thinking. To protect himself and his students wisely, he just chose the safest possible route. The presentation by Cuthbert Binns continues. Most people are familiar with what happened next, Salazar had a big fight with the other three and left the castle alone. But what most don't know is that before leaving, he built a secret room without telling the other three. It is said that he kept a monster in the chamber. 
when the air appears and the chamber of secrets is opened, the monster will come out to clean up the school. The story is over and the faces of the little wizards were filled with unsatisfactory expressions. Professor, what is that monster? Parvati Paddle suddenly raised her hand and asked. Oh I don't know, it may be an object or some kind of magical creature, okay Miss Smith, let's get back to business. The boring and tedious history of magic continues making everyone feel drowsy. The history of magic class ended, and on the way to the Great Hall, Hermione still couldn't stop thinking about the Chamber of Secrets. This is a very dangerous signal, so Lucas clasped the little witch's shoulders with both hands. Staring into her eyes, he said earnestly, Hermione, I have no objection if it's just to find information, but it's limited to information, understand. Hermione nodded and asked, I guess you must know what's in the Chamber of Secrets. Lucas didn't hide and seeing him nod, Hermione's eyes lit up. No. I can't say it now, if I tell you, won't you lose interest in the investigation? Thinking about it carefully, it seems to be the case. Hermione took a deep breath and said, in a month, I will definitely find the answer. Remember not to leave the dormitory at night, it is very dangerous and life-threatening. Okay. After enjoying a great dinner Lucas said goodbye to Hermione and Cho. When he returned to the dormitory, he was not idle. Looking at the diadem of Ravenclaw in his hand, Lucas wondered when he would go to Ravenclaw's common room. But to his consternation, many young eagles do not sleep at night and they love to read books under the star dome in their common room. If he opens the door of Ravenclaw rashly, he's afraid it will attract the attention of others. Just as he was racking his brains for a solution, a meow caught Lucas' attention. Watching Crookshanks coming in through the door immediately got Lucas interested. How did you come in? Picking up the big fat cat, Lucas noticed the uneasiness in the cat's eyes. Crookshanks is part nasal so he is sensitive to danger. It might have sensed something threatening to itself in the castle and that's why I came to find Lucas. What could that be? The answer should be obvious, the basilisk. That is to say, the basilisk woke up again and left the secret room along the pipe. Lucas stroked his chin. He put Crookshanks on the bed, tore open the space and left the dormitory. That being the case, let him help out and make things even more confusing. Hogwarts at night is full of mysteries, attracting countless curious students to explore, but that doesn't include the Hufflepuff badgers. At least in recent years no student from Hufflepuff House has ever been caught on a night out. However, not being caught doesn't mean they don't travel at night. In fact, the number of night tours of Hufflepuff students are far more than those of other houses. It's just that the location they chose for the night tour is very close, which is the Hogwarts kitchen next door. Susan Bones crawled out of the barrel rubbing her belly because she ate only a little for dinner. The reason is that she is promoting that she is losing weight recently. However, Every night she would go to the kitchen to steal food. So after two weeks passed, the young wizards at Hufflepuff House discovered that Susan Bones was not getting any thinner. Oh my god, I'm really starving to death. Susan. Susan, who was about to open the kitchen door, suddenly stopped. She looked into the dark corner and asked softly, who's there? Susan. The voice came from the corner again. The voice was hoarse, low, ethereal, and it sounded creepy as hell. Susan reached for her wand, but took it out too quickly and the wand accidentally fell to the floor. She knows that terrible things are happening at school recently, just didn't expect to be so unlucky. Susan, come here. You, who are you? Susan had tears in her eyes as she retreated step by step towards the dormitory. Just when she was passing a dark corner, suddenly, a black shadow rushed in front of her. Immediately afterwards, a pair of red vertical pupils appeared in Susan's line of sight. After that she doesn't know anything. Because Susan Bones has been petrified by the eye of Medusa. The hood of the black robe was taken off, and Lucas smiled at Susan who remained terrified and fell to the ground. It's okay for Muggleborns to be afraid, but to me it's better if pure bloods are also afraid. This girl's aunt is Director Amelia. As the director of the law enforcement department, she will not let her niece be attacked without doing anything in response. Lucas chuckled knowing no one could have seen him tore open the space and left again. In other words, there is not even a portrait between Hufflepuff and the kitchen. Did Dumbledore despise Hufflepuff that much? Not long after Lucas left, a young muggle-born wizard was petrified on the second floor of the castle. Soon, two petrified people were found. Dumbledore and the professors immediately rushed to the infirmary to check the situation. Forbidden Forest While Dumbledore was busy preparing for the troubles that lay ahead, 
Lucas, however, wandered around the Forbidden Forest. As long as he finds a magical creature, he will immediately leave a space imprint on the spot. After a while he had collected a lot of achievement points. Congratulations to the host for obtaining a new achievement, exploring the home of the Horned Snake, reward, 100 achievement points. Congratulations to the host for obtaining a new achievement, get to know the Demi guys, reward, 100 achievement points. An hour later, Lucas found that there seemed to be fewer and fewer magical creatures nearby. This is obviously not in line with common sense. Normally, the depths of the deep forest should be a paradise for animals, unless there is some powerful creature that drives away the nearby magical creatures. Walking a few hundred meters forward, Lucas reached out and tore off the white spider silk on the trunk of a tree. It turned out to be hiding here. The wand instantly appeared in the palm of his hand. Lucas stepped forward, following the direction of the spider silk. After a while, he saw a very large underground cave entrance. Walking into the cave and sure enough, he saw Aragog's figure. You, it's you again. Aragog's voice was full of panic. The fire from last time is still vivid in his memory. Not waiting for it to say anything else, a green light flew out from Lucas' wand. Chapter 109, Reappearance of Spider Killer and the Dueling Club Ding, congratulations for killing an Acromantula, the time-limited achievement is now open. It is detected that the host already has the title of Gold Spider Killer, before the number of previous kills is completed, the achievement point reward will be halved. Even having has 0.5 achievement points. Ants are also meat, the key is that the Acromantula can really give birth. Looking at the dense spiders around. It seems like less than a year has passed since Lucas last fired his blue flames. Aragog, who just watched his child die before his eyes, was very angry. He has already hid in the depths of the Forbidden Forest but this damned wizard still came after him specially. Wizard, don't bully people too much. People? Are you a human? When Lucas finished speaking, blue fire spewed from his wand. In order not to attract the attention of others, this time he completely contained the fire in the underground cavern. Big guy, did you prepare another escape hole this time? In an instant, the fire around Lucas turned into a hydra and rushed around. At the same time Aragog's voice echoed in the cave. Kill him, kill him no matter what. Countless spiders received the order, and rushed towards Lucas in the middle of the flames one after another. Ding, congratulations to the host for killing an Acromantula, reward, 0.5 achievement points. Ding, congratulations to the host for killing an Acromantula, reward, 0.5 achievement points. Outside the cave, the magical creatures of the Forbidden Forest soon discovered an anomaly. They first felt the abnormal temperature coming from the ground, it was as if someone had lit a fire under the Forbidden Forest. Immediately afterwards, the Acromantulas that had been hunting everywhere began to frantically rush towards the nest. Last year, because the Acromantulas entered the depths of the Forbidden Forest, the magical creatures that originally lived in the depths were miserable. If they only had to face Acromantulas alone, they would not be afraid. But the number of opponents was just too much, there were hundreds or thousands at every turn. Many magical creatures have been forced to migrate their homes from the depths to the outskirts. Now that they noticed someone looking for trouble with the Acromantulas, most magical creatures are certainly happy to see it happen. After running around and telling each other, most of the creatures in the Forbidden Forest began to slowly move towards the Acromantulas' lair. In the underground cave, Lucas purposely exposed a hole in the fire beside him. Watching the giant arachnids swarming in, his eyes immediately turned into blood-red snake pupils. Every time a spider breaks through the firewall, it will be petrified by the eyes of Medusa. Lucas pointed his wand at the petrified spider and said, Life steal. The ground beneath the spider was torn apart and a scream came from the tearing void. Immediately afterwards, more than a dozen purple-black shadows rushed out of the void and enveloped the spider and dragged it into the void. When the void closed again, Lucas clearly felt a stream of energy flow into his body. This is probably life force. Then Lucas kept repeating the same actions. Until there were very few spiders left in the cave, the raging fire was finally extinguished. Lucas let out a long breath and when he opened his eyes, an emerald green light flashed. The goblin sword appeared in Lucas' palm, then he lifted his robe and made a wound on his arm. Before the blood gushed out, green life force covered the wound. The bone-deep wound healed completely in seconds without even leaving a scar. This power of life is really outrageous but unfortunately it will take a long time to use it after this time. Lucas said to himself. 
The reason for saying this is because he discovered that everyone cannot absorb life force without limit. Instead, the upper limit of absorption is determined according to the strength of a person's physique and soul. When the upper limit is reached, the vitality needs to be used up before continuing. As for how to use it, it's up to you. It doesn't matter whether it's for healing or eternal youth. Putting away the goblin sword again, Lucas looked at the dying Aragog. It seems that you are not ready to retreat this time, so you are so sure that I will not find you. Aragog was completely speechless, its body was badly burned by the blue fire. If Lucas hadn't extinguished the fire just now, it might have died at this moment. No fun, you're not fun at all. Lucas looked at the big spider in front of him blankly and suddenly, he thought of something funny. Imperial. His black elder wood wand casts a powerful light. Taking full control of Aragog, Lucas healed it again with life force. Looking at the revived big spider, Lucas said with a smile, after a while, you will return to live outside the forbidden forest, and then wait for my news, understand? Aragog responded, turned around and walked deep into the cave. Ding, the time limit is up, congratulations to the host for killing 21,532 acromantulas asterisk, 13,682 of them got 0.5 achievement points, 7,850 got 1 achievement point, total, 14,691 achievement points. Ding, congratulations to the host for achieving a new achievement, Diamond Spider Killer, wearing this title, when facing all types of spiders, the damage increases by 50%, the defense power increases by 80%, and the poison resistance increases by 40%. Sure enough, it was a pleasure to kill spiders. The achievement points broke through the 20,000 mark in an instant. By Christmas, it might be possible to break through 30,000 achievement points. It's been a fruitful night and Lucas is in a very good mood. When he left the underground cave, he was stopped by a group of magical creatures before he had gone far. Although these magical creatures can't speak, they still thank Lucas in their own way. Detected that the host has completed a new achievement, thanks from the 100 beast clans, reward, 200 achievement points. I know that the acromantulas have caused a serious impact on everyone's life, please rest assured that such a situation will not happen again in the future. Ever since Aragog was brought under control, its life has entered a countdown and without Aragog, there will be no acromantulas in the Forbidden Forest. Hearing what Lucas said, the magical creatures howled to the sky one after another, expressing their joy. A unicorn even left the group and slowly came to Lucas emitting a white light. The light shone on Lucas, as if covering him with a gauze. Congratulations to the host for obtaining the blessing of the unicorn, increase the resistance to all poisons by 10%. Hearing the system beep, Lucas immediately thanked the unicorn, whose breath was much weaker. Saying farewell to the magical creatures Lucas continued to explore the Forbidden Forest. It's still early, but Wynne was about to open the map again. A wooden arrow flew from a distance, and it was precisely inserted into the soil in front of Lucas. The sound of hooves came and a strong horse came out of the dark. Bane the centaur. Lucas looked at the figure and said. I don't know why you came to see me. And isn't it rude to block the way like this? Elf, why are you doing this? Facing Bane's questioning Lucas frowned. What? Kill the Acromantula? Don't they deserve to die? They have their own mission, you shouldn't do that. Lucas suddenly realized that the centaur must have predicted the future. Among them was the participation of the Acromantulas. That's why he stopped himself. But, Lucas' expression gradually became cold. He looked at the tall Bane and said, Don't you centaurs always obey the arrangement of fate? Since fate arranged for me to destroy them, why do you come to question me? Ridiculous. The centaur Bane said angrily. You are not the fate, you heretic who can't see the fate, I hereby warn you, you are not allowed to enter the forbidden forest in the future, otherwise you will be an enemy of our centaur tribe. Oh, how ridiculous. Lucas looked up into the centaur's eyes. I've always been curious about one thing, what would happen if a centaur used divination to know his own fate? I got the answer today, you centaurs can't predict your own fate, otherwise you wouldn't come here to die. Hearing what Lucas said, Bane quickly drew his bow and arrow. It's a pity that the two blood-red snake pupils are the first to catch his eyes. Lucas watched as Bane, the petrified centaur, was dragged into the void with his eyes full of indifference. The night passed quickly. When the sun rose, an explosive news spread throughout Hogwarts. Two students were petrified last night, with one of them being Susan Bones. 
anyone who knows about the Chamber of Secrets knows it. The monster in the Chamber of Secrets only cleans up the school of wizards who aren't pure bloods. Although the Bones family is not one of the 28 sacred families, it is still a genuine pure blood family. Even the students of Slytherin were starting to feel insecure when things like this happened. For a while, the school became full of panicked children. And poor headmaster Dumbledore was currently considering how to explain her niece's problems to Amelia Bones, director of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement. Potions class this morning. Lucas is leading the little snakes to the classroom. Looking at his classmates' worried faces, Lucas sighed and said, What are you worried about? As long as you don't leave the dormitory at night, no matter how powerful the monster is, it won't be able to enter. Instead of worrying about this, it's better to worry about the patroness charm of everyone. I heard that most of you can't even release the white mist state. Seeing Lucas glance at them, most little snakes quickly lowered their heads. Only Draco and Pansy Parkinson raised their heads high. What are you too proud of? Are you proud of the white mist state? If the patroness can't form completely, what is there to be proud of? Lucas shook his head and turned around to continue walking forward. Just when they were about to arrive at the potions classroom Draco said suddenly, Lucas, have you heard? Gilderoy Lockhart is going to start a dueling club. The news just came out this morning. I heard that many people have signed up. Are you going? Lucas raised an eyebrow. Of course he was going, given Draco's current relationship with Harry. In a duel, the snake summoning spell will definitely not be used again, so Lucas has to get the plot back on track, otherwise how will Harry's parcel tongue be exposed? How could Dumbledore link him to a horcrux without exposing him? If he doesn't make the connection, how can Dumbledore get the Resurrection Stone Ring back for Lucas? Therefore, Harry had no choice but to have a friendly conversation with the snake in front of everyone. Of course, you guys help me sign up, but I'm more interested in the afternoon game now. Draco suddenly said, this afternoon is our match with Ravenclaw, are you really going to play? Of course, and with your broom. After all, Lucas strode into the potions classroom. Not long after, he heard Professor Snape's deep voice coming from the classroom. Very well, Mr. Grindelwald, I expect you to secure Slytherin's victory. Chapter 110, Cho Chong Scotland in November is really cold, the temperature is already close to zero degrees. But such cold weather can't stop wizards' love for Quidditch. Inside the player tunnel Lucas stands at the forefront while the rest of the team members follow behind him. Each of them holding a Nimbus 2001 in their hand. That's right, the rich and powerful Mr. Malfoy donated generously for his son. The equipment of the Slytherin team has been updated. Listen, old rules, give me a straight win over Ravenclaw, you just have to throw the quaffle into the opponent's goal. Everyone nodded and looked at Lucas with burning eyes. Lucas had a three-game winning streak last year. Bringing the Quidditch Champion Cup back to Slytherin is still vivid in their minds. They had thought there would be no chance of playing alongside him this year, but didn't expect that Lucas would decide to play against Ravenclaw a few days ago. This was a great boost for the players. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to everyone. The Quidditch match between Ravenclaw and Slytherin is about to begin. Let us applaud and welcome the players of the two houses. With a shout from Lee Jordan, Lucas led the team out of the tunnel and the two teams circled the field. Seeing Lucas Grindelwald again the cheers in the stands were more than twice as loud as before. Ginny Weasley stands in the side belonging to Greyfinder, seeing that blonde boy when she looks up at the sky. So he likes Quidditch too. Such thoughts appeared in Ginny's mind. Soon, she made up her mind, she would try to be part of the Greyfinder team next year. On the opposite side, the stands of Ravenclaw were full of voices shouting for their house team. Only Hermione kept her eyes on Lucas. Thinking that after the game is over, Cho might get ahead of herself, which made her feel a little lost in her heart. But if you ask Hermione if she regrets it, her answer is that she doesn't. Hermione, why don't you shout cheers, this banner is for you. Hermione took the banner from her classmate and raising it above her head she shouted loudly, Come on, you can win this. As for who she was cheering for, I'm afraid only the little witch knows. Over the pitch, members of the two teams formed a circle. Seeing Lucas riding the Nimbus 2001, Cho Chong showed a satisfied expression. Everyone get ready. Professor Hooch puts the whistle in her mouth. Still the same set of movements, kicking the wooden box and throwing the quaffle accompanied by the sound of the whistle. The game officially begins. Lucas steered the broom up into the air, 
giving up the low-level field to other players. Looking at Cho who stopped beside him, he asked curiously, I don't understand why you want to compete with me again. Want to know? Seeing Lucas nodding, she showed a beautiful smile. Then I'll talk if I win. Up. Lucas shrugged, but before he could say the rest, Cho beside him flew out on her broom. Watching the golden light flashing away in the distance, Lucas chuckled and chased after her. Cho Chong rides a common Nimbus 2000, in terms of limit speed, it is not as good as Lucas' current 2001. But it's on the pitch and the golden snitch doesn't fly in a straight line either so the seekers need to slow down when encountering obstacles. Which means that the two brooms are basically equal and the one who catches the snitch depends entirely on the seeker's ability. Soon, Lucas and Cho started to race side by side. Not far in front of them is the key to victory, the golden snitch. Oh look everyone, the two seekers are very close to the snitch at the moment, who will win in the end? First of all, let's introduce Ravenclaw seeker, Ms. Cho Chong. I believe everyone is familiar with her. She is a famous beauty of Ravenclaw, and she is also an excellent seeker. She is the pride of Ravenclaw house. Lee Jordan did justice to the game without Greyfinder. Next, let's look at the seeker of Slytherin. That's right, he is the key player who won the championship last year, Lucas Grindelwald. Well, Mr. Grindelwald didn't use his surprisingly fast broom this time, which is barely a bad thing. All right. It should be said that Lee Jordan's commentary was fair in the game without Greyfinder and Slytherin. The two seekers were getting closer and closer to the snitch when Cho suddenly said, Do you remember our agreement? Go all out for the game, so don't let me win. Lucas raised an eyebrow but looking at the serious expression of the girl he nodded, pushing his broom to the limit. Although ordinary people cannot avoid obstacles at the maximum speed when using the Nimbus 2001. But Lucas is no ordinary person and he can easily dodge obstacles even with his modified broom. The broom immediately reached the limit speed. Watching Lucas who is gradually surpassing herself, Cho sighed. She knew she had lost, in a place full of obstacles like the edge of the court, she can't fly to the limit. With Lucas soaring from the edge of the court, the golden snitch in his hand immediately attracted everyone's attention. Oh! Lucas Grindelwald has caught the golden snitch, and I declare the Slytherins victorious again. The audience burst into warm cheers, especially the Slytherin stands. Lucas won this time with dignity and in the future, others will no longer be able to say that he won just because of his extremely fast broom. Cho came to his side on her broom. Looking at Lucas who was gesturing around, she said, Aren't you curious, why do I want to compete with you? Lucas nodded, he was indeed curious. Hermione once asked me what kind of boy I like, and I answered her that a boy who can play Quidditch and beat me. Last year, you snatched the snitch in front of me, but left your shadow in my heart. This year, I want to compete with you again to determine my own mind. She paused, then he took a deep breath and said loudly, Lucas Grindelwald, can you be my boyfriend? The originally noisy stadium gradually became quieter. The members of the two teams seemed to come forward to congratulate, but they did not expect to hear such explosive news. The Slytherin team immediately flew towards the player tunnel. In the stands at the moment, Harry's eyes suddenly darkened. Not only him, but also Cedric Diggory of Hufflepuff. Unexpectedly, before he had time to get acquainted with Cho Chong, his secret love had already come to an end. And Ginny Weasley, in addition to the loss in her eyes, there was also a trace of envy. Midair, Cho looked at Lucas nervously. Lucas had already talked to Hermione about Cho Chong. Hermione ended up saying it's up to you. How about we leave it for the future? We're still too young, so let's wait for a year, how about it? Hearing Lucas reply. Cho was stunned for a few seconds, then tears appeared in her eyes. Before she could wipe them off, she suddenly found that everyone in the surrounding stands was staring at her. Thinking about what she just did, she let out an embarrassed eep and flew into the player tunnel on her broom. It's just that she seemed to fly in the wrong direction, entering the Slytherin passage. Lucas was stunned for a moment, he glanced at the stance of Ravenclaw, and then quickly chased after her. Cho, who was hiding in the staff passageway, no longer had the courage she had just now. Even she herself didn't know why she yelled so loudly. At this moment, she was hiding in the corner like a frightened rabbit afraid that others would find her. Cho, why are you hiding? Hearing Lucas' voice, she turned and gave him a blank stare. It's over, my life is over, I just embarrassed myself in front of the whole school. Looking at her frustrated look, 
Lucas held Cho's shoulders with both hands. Is it that embarrassing to declare your feelings for me? You know I don't mean that. She hurried to explain in a panic, but Lucas laughed out loud in return. While joking, Cho gradually calmed down, looked at the blonde boy in front of her and smiled slightly. Only a year. The reason Lucas said to wait a year, apart from them being too young, he also wanted to give her time to think if this is really what she wanted. It would also work as a test, if she could wait that long for him it might just be worth it to give her a place by his side. A lot of things can happen in a year and after all that time she might have changed her mind and become interested in someone else. But he underestimated just how strong a girl's first love can be. Ahem. Both of you, pay attention to the next occasion. Hermione's voice came from the side, she glared at Lucas first, then took Cho's hand and walked out. Lucas didn't follow this time. With him around, there are some difficult things to say between the two women. The Quidditch game is over though. But what happened in the game is interesting to talk about. During dinner, the students of the four tables always looked towards Lucas, Hermione, and Cho. This directly affected the two girls' meals. After barely eating something, the two left the Great Hall and returned to the Ravenclaw Tower. As for Lucas, he was used to the attention so he didn't leave until he was full. During the night the castle once again fell into a deathly silence. Lucas walked out of the dungeons and headed towards the Ravenclaw common room. Tonight he intends to verify his conjecture. If his predictions are correct, Ravenclaw's secret room will be revealed tonight. After more than ten minutes of walking, he finally arrived outside the door of Ravenclaw's common room. Chapter 111, Ravenclaw's Secret Room Has Been Found Greyfinder Tower, Boy's Dormitory Harry wiped the broom in his hand as he recalled the scene he saw on the court today in his mind. Harry, why are you still up? Can't sleep, our the next game will be our Quidditch match with Ravenclaw. Ron replied in a daze, he didn't know what's wrong with Harry, he still didn't sleep and was with the broom in his arms in the middle of the night. Harry, you have to believe in yourself, you are the best seeker you will definitely beat Ravenclaw. If that annoying Grindelwald can beat the Seeker of Ravenclaw you can also do it. Ron fell asleep while talking. He didn't notice that when Lucas was mentioned, Harry's expression looked really annoyed. Yes, my father was the best Seeker, and I will be the same in the future. I will definitely prove that I am no worse than Lucas Grindelwald against Ravenclaw. His gaze gradually became firm and when he looked back at Ron, he realized that his friend had fallen asleep again. Harry put the broom away and stored it safely before going to bed, I will prove it. The eagle knocker issue didn't pose a problem for Lucas and after answering a simple riddle he carefully looked inward along the open door, making sure no one was in there. He tiptoed into the Ravenclaw common room, which instead of a common room it is more like a library. The walls are surrounded by bookshelves. The roof is a vaulted transparent dome where at night, you can see the starry sky directly from there. The decorations are in the same color scheme as other houses, with their respective representative colors. But Ravenclaw's blue is matched with the starry sky of the dome, which adds some mystery to the whole room. Although Lucas is a student of Slytherin, he still found it more comfortable than the Slytherin common room. At least it's not so depressing. Taking out the diadem of Ravenclaw, he walks step by step towards the only sculpture in the room. According to Hermione, this statue of Rowena Ravenclaw was placed here right after the school was established. Almost as long as Hogwarts has existed. If Rowena really left her own chamber of secrets, it must be inseparable from this sculpture. Coming closer to the sculpture, Lucas placed the diadem on its head with both hands. Finding that the size of the crown and the sculpture is just right, Lucas is more sure of his idea. There was a slight noise and it seems that a secret door has been opened somewhere. Immediately afterwards, the bookshelf behind the sculpture began to change its position upside down. The entire wall of bricks began to overlap each other and it quickly became a downward passage. Taking a deep breath, he drew his wand and walked in. He didn't know how long he walked, but there was finally a light ahead. Lucas quickened his pace, but it still took him another three or four minutes to reach the exit. Facing the bright light suddenly, Lucas, who was used to the darkness, had to squint his eyes. He didn't open his eyes until he gradually got used to it. What appeared in front of him was a garden and the amazing thing is that it is daytime here. Lucas looked up, but didn't see the sun. He guessed that the light source should be caused by magic or magic items. Walking into the garden Lucas stepped on the soft grass, feeling that everything was a little unreal. He walked to the depths along the road full of flowers on both sides and it didn't take him long to see a circular building. The building has three floors, 
and its shape is very simple like a small tower. Squeak. Pushing open the dusty door, the candlesticks in the house were automatically lit. Ding, congratulations to the host for obtaining a new achievement, Exploration Rowena Ravenclaw's Library, Reward, 500 Achievement Points. Detected that the host has completed a new achievement, Explore Ravenclaw House, Get a Reward, 2000 Achievement Points. Sure enough, this is the secret room left by Rowena Ravenclaw. Lucas stepped into the house, and there was a single book on the separate bookshelf on the right side of the door. Since it can be placed here, there must be some ulterior motive. Lucas opened this not very thick book, the first thing that caught his eye was the delicate and graceful cursive characters. For those who are destined, hello, when you find this library, I have probably been dead for a long time, please allow me to introduce myself first, my name is Rowena Ravenclaw. Since you can come here, it means that you must be a thoughtful person, but please promise me that you will not use the knowledge inside to do evil. Well, that's just my personal wish, anyway, I'm dead, so I can't control you at all, I just give you a piece of advice. This is the library I built secretly, which collects most of the magic books from ancient times to the present. I believe you will like it. Finally, please tell my daughter Helena that I love her very much. The beginning of the book is like a letter of introduction. Lucas turned to the next page, which introduced the location of the library in detail. It's hard to imagine that this place is actually the deepest part of the Forbidden Forest, and neither human nor magical animals can detect it due to its magical protection. On the next page, there are major events in the early days of the school recorded by Rowena Ravenclaw. These include the quarrel between the founders and the specific reasons as to why Slytherin left. Closing this book written by Rowena Ravenclaw herself, Lucas turned and walked into the library. Three floors, a large library with 360 degrees. The collection of books inside is probably at least tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of books. It's just impossible for Lucas to read one by one. Fortunately, Ms. Rowena has thoughtfully marked the type on each bookshelf. Lucas made a beeline for the dark magic area and saw a very interesting piece of information in a book by the name Ancient Black Magic Records. Curse of Blood Sacrifice, the user must be full of strong love, and after chanting the spell has to use his own magic power and blood to protect the loved one. Note, since it is a curse, those who are guarded will also have to bear the price and will not live to be 50 years old. The rest of the content records how to continue the protective power of the curse. The method is similar to Harry's, requiring staying with the caster's blood relatives. Lucas closed the book and solemnly put the book away. Whether he can win Professor Snape's allegiance, this book and the secrets of the darkest arts will play a key role. However, Lucas has been searching for a long time in the dark magic area but didn't manage to find the book he needed. It's not too early to find out. Lucas had no choice but to hurriedly leave a space mark, turn around and walk out through the passage. When he finally retrieved the diadem from the sculpture's head, the hidden passage gradually disappeared and turned into a towering bookshelf again. Lucas. Lucas was taken aback by the sudden voice behind him. When he saw it was Cho, he was immediately relieved. Seeing the childish pajamas on the girl, Lucas chuckled, Your pajamas look great. Cho glanced at her current attire and her face immediately turned red. Just when she was about to escape, Lucas blocked her path with a lunge. Cho, why are you still up so late? It's not that it's your fault, but there were so many people watching at dinner, so how can I eat? Cho struggled a bit, trying to pull her hand out of Lucas' palm. Finding that she couldn't pull it out, she just let him lead her. The two came to the sofa in the lounge and sat down, Cho looked at the night sky and started talking. By the way, I signed up for the dueling club, intending to learn some useful spells to protect myself. Then you may be disappointed, Lockhart can't do anything. I know, but don't I still have you? She suddenly raised her head and looked at the boy in front of her seriously. I have discussed it with Hermione, and I will pester you until you teach us all the magic you know. Lucas turned his head and looked into her eyes, I know a lot. Maybe I can't finish teaching you for a lifetime. Then we will haunt you forever. After they finished speaking, the room became quiet again. The two listened to each other's breathing. Gradually, slowly approaching. We can't. Cho stood up suddenly from the sofa. With a flushed face, she exhaled and said, You made me wait for a year, so you also have to wait. Humph. Regardless of the boy who is still sitting on the sofa. In a panic. She ran to the dormitory and once she was back to bed a smile appeared on the corner of her mouth. Lucas saw the girl run away speechless. 
Seems like I shot my own foot. He just shook his head smiling and left the Ravenclaw common room. He had a great harvest tonight, and the biggest gain was not achievement points, but the room full of books, Rowena Ravenclaw's personal library. This is a huge fortune. Lucas, who was in a good mood, wandered all the way to the dungeons. Just when he was passing the bathroom on the second floor, he suddenly heard the voices of Peeves and Myrtle coming from inside. Haven't they always been at odds? Lucas didn't delve into it, let alone that he didn't have the habit of eavesdropping. Once he was gone, in the bathroom, Myrtle suddenly shouted angrily, Why don't you believe it? I saw Grindelwald here last year. At that time, he was making a hissing sound like a snake in front of these sinks, so I think he must be the heir. Chapter 112, Snape vs Lockhart Rowena Ravenclaw's library has a wide variety of books beyond Lucas' imagination. Among them are some books that Rowena personally annotated including the application experience of the killing curse. Lucas has benefited greatly from this. It is worth mentioning that during the era in which the founders lived, the killing curse, imperious curse and cruciatus curse were just powerful forms of black magic. Closing the book in his hand, Lucas rubbed the sore corners of his eyes. Although everything in this library is so perfect, there was only one thing that dissatisfied him. It's always sunny here so it's very easy to confuse time. He opened his pocket watch and glanced at it. It turned out that there were less than ten minutes left before the end of the lunch break. Putting the book back on the shelf, Lucas tore the void and returned to his dormitory. This afternoon was the first day the dueling club opened its doors. It is not known what tactics Lockhart used to get Dumbledore to let him open the dueling club in the Great Hall. When Lucas and others arrived, the place was already full of people. Of the four long tables originally placed in the middle of the auditorium, two were placed against the walls on both sides. The remaining two were arranged as a long dueling stage. Gilderoy Lockhart stood in the middle of the stage wearing a fancy cape. Everyone, please be quiet and come close to both sides. Lockhart still has some appeal. Everyone moved lightly and stood on both sides of the stage. Very well, I know that a lot of bad things have happened in school in recent weeks, so I applied to Principal Dumbledore for this chance especially for you. This dueling club was open to teach you how to protect yourself. I guarantee that in a short time, you will become like me, outstanding, and you will easily use various means to protect yourself, like I have done so many times before, for more information consult my books, dot. Lockhart finished and winked at the girls in the audience, some of the young witches who couldn't recognize reality were dazed. Oh Merlin, even after what happened in our first class there are still people who can't see Lockhart's true face. Hermione looked helplessly at the swooning witches, and Cho, who was arm in arm with her nodded along. She hadn't been interested in Lockhart from the start because at that time her heart was already set on the boy beside them. Perhaps you don't know yet, there are creatures in this world called brain-dead fang girls, they are crazy obsessed with their idols. Even if their idols do something wrong, they themselves will find all kinds of excuses for their idols to excuse them. Hermione, a little muggle-born witch, easily understood what a fang girl was. Yes, my mother is like that, she almost crazily worships the Beatles. The three chatted softly while also keeping an eye on Lockhart's performance on stage. At this moment, Lockhart had invited Professor Snape to the stage. Let us thank my assistant Professor Snape who graciously offered to help, he says he has a bit of experience with dueling as well. I will have a demonstration duel with Professor Snape later, little wizards. Please keep your eyes open and watch carefully, and don't worry, you will still have your potions teacher by the end of it. Lockhart winked again at the girls, then took off his cloak and threw it at his fans. With his proficient technique, it would be a shame not to be a singer or an idol. Professor Snape, are you sure you don't need to put on protective gear? I'm afraid my powerful spells might hurt you. Professor Snape's familiar sneer was all his response to Lockhart. The expressions of the Slytherins around were full of disdain. Just who is Snape? That is their head of house. Hermione and Cho looked at the sneering Lucas beside them and asked curiously. Why are you all sneering? Even if Lockhart's spells suck, at least he's an adult wizard. But his opponent is an out-and-out -out genius, someone who can create advanced dark magic while still in school. In Lucas' mind, Professor Snape is a well-deserved genius in both potions and dark arts. His own dark cutting curse Sectum Sempra, silent, lightless, and highly concealed dark magic, also impossible to heal without the corresponding counter-curse. If you want to judge the direction of this curse, 
you can only do it by watching the orientation of the caster's wand. But for people like Lucas and Dumbledore who can cast spells without a wand, Sectumsempra is definitely the best dark magic for sneak attacks. And such a dangerous spell was actually invented by Professor Snape in the sixth grade. On stage, Lockhart was still tirelessly talking about dueling etiquette. Snape's brow was twitching and filled with impatience. Okay, then I will demonstrate it with Professor Snape. Lockhart finally stopped his mouth. From Lucas' point of view, he could see Professor Snape tightening his wand. Waiting for the two to stand face to face according to dueling etiquette. Professor Snape couldn't wait to point out his wand, Expelliarmus. A dazzling light illuminated the dimly lit Great Hall and Lockhart was sent flying before he could even parry. For the first time Lucas knew, it turns out that the disarming charm can knock people so far away. Ahem. Lockhart stood up with his hands on the ground. It's okay, I was just giving a demonstration to everyone about what happens when you get disarmed, if it was me, Professor Snape might be injured more seriously. Professor Snape was disdainful of Lockhart's boastful behavior. However, he did not expose the foolish man since the spell just now had already given him enough satisfaction. Knowing that the next step is to practice in groups, Lucas led the two girls to the back of the crowd ahead of time. You all know the disarming charm, I will teach you the patroness charm later. The patroness charm. The two girls exclaimed. The patroness charm is known as one of the most profound defensive spells. It is said that it is difficult to learn and even most adult wizards cannot successfully perform it. With me here, it's easy. Soothing their nervousness Lucas was going to explain the detailed casting process of the patroness charm. Lucas Grindelwald. Suddenly Lockhart's voice came from the stage, interrupting him. The other students followed his gaze and looked behind them. Immediately afterwards, cheers sounded in the great hall. What's the matter, Professor? Lucas looked at the stage calmly and Lockhart pointed his finger off the stage, I discussed it with Professor Snape just now. We think that a young wizard should be invited to the stage to experience the fun of a duel for himself, Professor Snape recommended you to me. Lucas looked to Professor Snape, who was standing at the other end of the stage. Trying to see something in his empty eyes. A pity, Professor Snape, who had a full occlumency level, showed absolutely no emotion. Professor, do you really want me on stage? Of course, don't worry, I won't hit you hard, just like I did against Professor Snape just now. I can even let you take the first shot. Lucas smiled coldly in his heart as he stepped up to the stage. This arrogant flower peacock obviously thought he was no different from the little common wizard. Otherwise, he wouldn't have made such a silly request. Seeing Lucas walking on stage Professor Snape immediately came between the two to act as referee, but there was a little more pity in the way he looked at Lockhart. To this day, even Snape couldn't forget the blue fire that raged in the Forbidden Forest last year. He knew himself that he couldn't do it. So Lucas, who can control such a strong fire freely, is at least stronger than him in terms of magic power. Get ready to start. Lucas and Lockhart saluted with wands in hand, then turned around and walked to opposite sides of the platform. The moment the two turned around, Lucas' spell had already been cast. Expelliarmus. A brighter light than Professor Snape's illuminated the great hall like daylight while Lockhart was shot and flew straight towards the wall behind the teacher's table. Boom. Lockhart collided with the wall with a muffled thud and nearly cried out in sharp pain from behind. Waiting until the pain subsided a little, only then did he realize that he was glued to the wall. The permanent sticking spell can make one item permanently stick to another item. The spell was mixed in when Lucas cast the disarming charm. When he saw Lockhart struggling against the wall, Lucas thanked the incompetent professor gracefully. Thank you, professor, for allowing me to fully experience the fun of dueling. Watching Lucas turn and walk off the stage the eyes of the students around were shining. He can easily defeat the professor, and the flying distance exceeds that of the veteran Professor Snape. This made Lucas deservedly receive the worship from most students present. Merlin's beard, if only I were this strong. You say, I'm going to ask him for advice, will he teach me Dada? Of course he will, everyone knows that Lucas Grindelwald is a gentleman and very helpful. Harry and Ron listened to the discussions of the classmates beside them and their expressions were not very good. Ron was purely jealous, he has been like this since he entered school last year and he couldn't bear others saying that Lucas was good. As for Harry, the reason is clear at a glance. Watching the intimate movements between Cho Chong and Lucas, he unconsciously clenched his wand hand. With the help of Professor Snape, Lockhart was finally free from the restraints of the wall. 
the price was his wizard robes left on the wall. Okay, as you all see, Mr. Grindelwald has performed a wonderful spell for us. Then next, I need two young wizards to demonstrate on stage, and I will personally guide your movements. Hearing his words, the little wizards raised their hands very positively since they all wanted to duel and show off. Especially Ron, he wished he could jump right in front of Lockhart's eyes and draw his attention. But Lockhart already had a goal. Harry Potter. Wait. Professor Snape stopped, I don't think Mr. Potter is ready yet, I think someone else should come first. Oh since Professor Snape said so, I'll listen to you. Harry, who originally wanted to show off, looked at Snape with increasingly dissatisfied eyes. Mr. Ron Weasley. Lockhart's gaze turned to the students around Harry. Just when he was about to find his next target, Snape's voice sounded again, Lucas Grindelwald, come up. He still had to listen to the words of his head of house. So even though Lucas didn't want to, he stepped onto the stage again. He looked at Ron who was nervous and holding a broken wand. He is really not interested, isn't this just adults bullying children? Chapter 113, Childish Duel, Ginny's Jaw-Dropping Strength Just when the duel club was in full swing, Dumbledore received a letter from London. Not surprisingly, the content of the letter is to ask him to go to the Ministry of Magic for accountability. Along with the letter was a letter from the school board and the content was almost the same. Professor Dumbledore, what should we do next? Dumbledore looked over to Professor McGonagall beside him. It's okay, I'll be back soon, during this period. All students are strictly prohibited from going out at night. Also inform Professor Sprout that we need a lot of Mandrix. T slash N, this part said they needed a lot of weed XD. I think this incident is not over yet, and we must be more vigilant until the danger is removed. The two walked while talking and when they were passing by the Great Hall, they just happened to be seen by Lucas who was about to duel. It only took him a moment to figure out what Dumbledore was going to do. Lucas felt that he should also write a letter to Vinda when he went back. To arrange the next thing. If this event is used well, his voice in the Ministry of Magic will be greatly increased. And Rita Skeeter also needs to be rewarded, so that she will continue to work hard and continue to play to her strengths. Lucas Grindelwald, do you look down on me? Ron's exasperated voice interrupted the plans in Lucas' head. He didn't seem to notice that Lucas was distracted just now and kept complaining by himself. I know, you people in Slytherin look down on me, no you should look down on our Weasley family. So I'm going to prove to you and others today that our Weasley family is better than all of you. Ron's words made Lucas want to applaud him. Well done, a few words pointing the finger at their whole Slytherin, and still in this sensitive period. So did Ron come up with those words himself? Or was someone teaching him behind his back? For these questions, Lucas wasn't going to look into it. Pulling out his own wand, he faced Ron with standard etiquette. He just wanted to end this childish duel quickly. Densagio. Ron's spell was knocked aside with a flick of Lucas' wand. But he did not give up upon seeing this and kept casting several spells in succession. Tarant Legra. Eat slugs. Lang lock. Flipendo. Harry saw his friend cast several spells in succession and couldn't help clenching his fists and cheering for him. More importantly, Ron's wand was working fine this time and every spell was aimed at Lucas with precision. The little wizards around looked at Ron in surprise, probably because they didn't expect the dumb Weasley to use so many spells. But the students of Slytherin had mocking expressions on their faces. Compared to the chief challenge, the spells Ron cast could only be described as childish. Since the Slytherins think so, there's no need to mention Lucas' opinion. Facing the curses flying towards him he didn't even move a foot, just put a layer of protego on himself then pointed the wand at Ron, Aqua Eructo. The torrent of water propelled Ron up the wall like a water cannon. While the permanent sticking charm hidden in the spell successfully made Ron and Lockhart's wizard robes neighbors. Boring. Lucas gave Ron a deadpan look, gracefully stepped down the duel stage and walked towards Hermione and Cho not far away. It was a very exciting duel, let us thank the two gentlemen, and now, in groups of two, start dueling practice. But I want to declare that you can only use the disarming spell, and other spells are not allowed let alone spells that do too much damage. After Lockhart's announcement, he and Professor Snape went to help Ron. They couldn't just have Ron hanging on the wall, even though Snape would have loved to do just that. What was I talking about? Lucas looked at the two girls in front of him and asked. The conditions for casting the patroness charm. Oh yes. Hearing Hermione's reminder, 
Lucas continued. The patroness charm, this ancient defensive spell, is also the only way to deal with dementors and lethifolds. The incantation is expecto patronum. When casting the spell, you should think of the happiest thing in your life. The happier you feel, the more powerful the patroness will be. Lucas then described the two forms of the patroness charm. Both the white mist state and the full corporeal patroness, then introduced the two functions of the patroness charm. They are repelling dementors and lethifolds, and also sending messages. Yes, the patroness charm can be used as a messenger, and this method was invented by Dumbledore. It is very easy to use, and there is no need to worry about the patroness being destroyed by someone. It's just that the transmission distance is not too far. Expecto patronum. Expecto patronum. The two girls recited the spell according to Lucas' directions, but there was no response from their wands. Lucas' laughter immediately attracted their displeasure. He spread his hands and said, The patroness charm is a profound magic after all, if you can use it on the first try, wouldn't you be more powerful than Dumbledore? In fact, it took me a week to display a little bit of the white mist. If the system can speak at this moment it will definitely expose Lucas' lies without mercy, luckily it's not one of those annoying sentient systems. He had never practiced the patroness charm at all, it was all rewards from lottery draws. Hermione and Cho, who were comforted, practiced the patroness charm against the wall again. The three of them looked harmonious and a lot of people were envious, especially the boys. Blaze Zabani even declared Lucas as his only idol a few days ago, he just wanted to learn from him how to make the two women get along so peacefully. The three of them turned a blind eye to the gazes around them and kept practicing the spell on their own. At this time, a pleasant voice sounded behind the three of them. Hello, Mr. Grindelwald, can you show me the magic spell? The two women stopped at the same time, and seeing Ginny behind them, the two looked at Lucas again. Ginny Weasley. After a long time not seeing her, Ginny's skin was much paler than before. The long and smooth fiery red hair, the ends of the hair have also become a little dry at this moment. This is the result of having her life force drawn. Looking at the girl who stared at him eagerly, Lucas didn't know how to answer for a moment. Fortunately, Hermione said at this time, Cho, let's go to the side to practice. The empathetic Cho nodded, and the two walked to the side arm in arm. Now that Hermione has made a choice for himself, Lucas just played along. He drew out his wand and looked at the little witch in front of him. Afflicto. If Ginny didn't make a move, he wouldn't have known she was quite skilled in black magic and directly used a bone breaker. Even Lucas was surprised. The wizarding world counts all magic that's used to cause harm as dark arts, and they are divided into three types. Jinxes, such as the dangling jinx Levi corpus, tongue locking and mouth sealing, which do not harm the human body, but can cause trouble to people are jinxes. Hexes, such as the bat bogey hex, Ron's spell of spitting slugs, and the spell that makes the front teeth grow uncontrollably, all those spells that cause minor injuries and troubles to the human body, are considered hexes. And finally curses, the unforgivable curses, the shattering curse, and the magic that can bring great harm and kill people are collectively referred to as curses. So a first year like Ginny using the powerful bone breaker curse, it really surprised the people around. Oh Ginny, you are the pride of our family. That's right, come on. Smash that guy Lucas. The Weasley twins stood by to cheer on their sister. From time to time, some words that ridiculed Lucas came out of their mouths. Ginny looked serious and was not disturbed in the slightest. However, seeing Lucas' surprise for a moment just now, she was still a little proud. Riddle is right, as long as I show my strength, I will definitely be able to attract his attention. Ginny waved her wand again and a burst of red leaped from the tip, Bomarda. Lucas deflected the explosive spell with his wand and responded with a fast disarming spell. Ginny, who had no sense of defense, was immediately hit and her wand was easily taken by Lucas. It's great, but when using magic spells, you must take precautions and be wary of your opponent's attacks. Getting a compliment from Lucas, Ginny blushed red like her hair. Taking her wand back with a thank you, she happily ran to her housemates. It's amazing, and she's only in the first year. Is she like the Weasleys? Yes, it seems her name is Ginny Weasley. Speaking of which, the members of the Weasley family are not bad, Prefect Percy and the twins are geniuses, and now there is Ginny Weasley. No, don't forget, a Weasley was sent flying just now. After saying this, the little wizards around laughed. Unfortunately at this time Ron has been rescued by two professors and heard what everyone said. 
feeling humiliated he looked at Lucas with eyes full of anger and resentment. Damn Grindelwald, why don't you knock Ginny out too, Slimmy Slytherin? Ron thought as he walked. When he came to Harry's side he discovered that Harry was agreeing to a duel with a Slytherin student. Well, Selwyn, I agree to your request for a duel. Harry turned and walked towards the dueling arena, he didn't notice that Selwyn, who was following behind him, gave Lucas a look. That's right, Selwyn was following Lucas' orders to duel Harry. As for why he would listen to Lucas, it's a long story, but it's carrots and sticks. Definitely a painful memory for Angus Selwyn. Although Angus Selwyn's dueling level is not very good, fortunately for him, Harry Potter is not doing too well. The most important thing is that Angus will make himself come out of the hole. A new duel was starting in the duel arena, which immediately attracted everyone's attention. When everyone saw the boy who lived standing on the stage, their eyes immediately became hot. Everyone wanted to see what was unique about Harry Potter who beat the dark wizard Quirrell away. Chapter 114, Parseltongue the isolated Harry. Before the duel began, Harry deliberately glanced towards the corner of the Great Hall. That's where the girls and Lucas were practicing. He couldn't figure out why Lucas was so popular with his classmates. Even his only admirer, they all went to find Lucas for advice and practice. Harry knew very well how much Ginny adored him. After all, his good friend Ron mentioned it more than once to him. During the summer vacation, Harry enjoyed the girls' adoring eyes but now it seems that Ginny obviously admires Lucas more. It has to be said that Harry's character is developing in a different direction compared to the original. Without Hermione there to keep him and Ron in line, and with Draco who's even more arrogant than Ron taking her place. Harry stood on the stage and stared at Lucas' direction in a daze, he just didn't understand how he was inferior to the other boy. Yes, his grades may be much worse than Lucas. But their level of quidditch, the two should be almost the same. Lucas was able to win just because of his extremely fast broom. Then there is strength, maybe he has something lacking. But like Dumbledore said, he was the only one who could defeat Voldemort, and this is the key to Harry's self-confidence. He was the boy who lived, the one Voldemort would struggle with. Harry Potter, you have to be careful. Angus' voice came from ahead and when Harry came back to his senses, he only saw a ray of light flying towards him. Ivert Statham the sound of the spell hadn't reached Harry's ears until now, but he had already flown several meters backwards. He fell hard to the ground and heard the exclamations of those around him. He also saw the questioning eyes of everyone and stood up angrily. The wand pointed at Angus and he shouted, Flipendo. They are friends after all, both Harry and Ron use the same spell. The function of this spell is to make the opponent flip in midair as they are pushed away. As for other effects? Sorry there's nothing else. Selwyn, showing an annoyed expression when he landed, raised his wand and pointed to the stage, Serpent Sorsha. A black light flashed, and a three-meter-long cobra immediately appeared on the stage. Stand back, Potter. Professor Snape stepped forward, protecting Harry behind him, but just when he was about to use a spell to get rid of the vicious snake in front of him. The arrogant flower peacock came out to show off again. Don't do anything, leave it to me. Lockhart drew his wand glared at the viper, and cast the soaring charm. Alarda Sender. The function of the soaring charm is to throw objects far away into the sky. But Lockhart is a half-assed guy and didn't succeed in launching the poisonous snake very far. Instead, the snake landed after just a moment in the air. Moreover, this throw also enraged the poisonous snake. Seeing itself surrounded by humans, the cobra picked the nearest target and bared its fangs. Justin. Harry called out the boy's name out loud. Justin is his new friend from Hufflepuff. His friend was being targeted by a poisonous snake, so Harry couldn't ignore it. Suddenly, he felt his feet slipping towards the poisonous snake. Then he couldn't help but say to the snake, let him go. As soon as the words came out, the cobra immediately looked back at Harry. Immediately afterwards, the snake coiled into a lump under the eyes of everyone, and it no longer showed a desire to attack. Harry breathed a sigh of relief, smiling and looking at his new friend. Unexpectedly, the other boy looked at him in horror. What trick do you think you're up to? After roaring angrily, Justin turned and ran out of the great hall. The sudden change made Harry unable to react for a while. He saw people around staring at him and whispering to each other. Some people's eyes were full of fear, he also saw the odd look in Snape's eyes. Those eyes were full of disbelief and inquiry, and it was the first time Harry saw Snape with such a rich expression. 
Parseltung. Lucas' voice rang out in the silent room. Harry turned his head to look at the other person, not understanding what Parseltung was. Without waiting for him to ask, his wrist was held by Ron, and then he was led away from the Great Hall before he could ask anything. When the two reached the empty corridor, Ron explained to Harry what Parseltung is. After listening for a long time, Harry understood one thing. For thousands of years, the only people who could speak Parseltung were Salazar Slytherin and his descendants. At this moment, he felt really confused, but it also reminded him of what the Sorting Hat had said to him last year. The Sorting Hat had said back then that he could get everything he wanted in Slytherin. Could it be that he is really a descendant of Slytherin? The dueling club broke up in the end, since the students have no interest in continuing to play around. The heir of Slytherin appeared, and the boy who lived is a parcel tongue. The news quickly spread throughout Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. When Harry returned to Greyfinder Tower, he discovered that everyone was looking at him in a different light. Even Seamus Finnegan, who was in the same room as him. This incident made poor Harry very distressed. He had planned to speak to Dumbledore, but after asking around he learned that Dumbledore had been called to London. This continued for two more days where Harry silently endured everyone gossiping and pointing fingers at him. Until something happened that pushed Harry and Lucas into the focus of public opinion. Even the Lion Cubs of Gryffindor Academy started isolating him after this. Colin Creevy and Justin Finch Fletchley were attacked and both of them were petrified. Without Dumbledore in charge the little wizards felt like they were all in danger. Even during the day, the students no longer wandered around the castle except for their classes. Hogwarts was full of laughter and happiness in the past, but at this moment it seems to have lost all color. Since learning that Colin Creevy was attacked, Ginny looked very restless. She could be seen distracted all day, with her mind wandering somewhere else. This made her big brothers very worried and Ron told Harry about the situation, hoping he could comfort his sister. In Ron's mind, Ginny still adored his best friend, so he thought Harry's words might work. But Harry couldn't care less at the moment, because both Colin and Justin are people who have close contacts with him. Compared to another rumor, the students of the four houses are more convinced that Harry is the heir. As for the other rumor, it actually has something to do with Peeves. The chaotic poltergeist told everyone he met what he had heard from Myrtle. Successfully let the students know that towards the end of last school year Lucas Grindelwald was imitating snakes in the ladies' bathroom. Compared to Lucas possibly being the heir, everyone seemed more curious about what Lucas was doing in the ladies' bathroom. Outside the castle, the snowflakes falling from the sky covered the terrace with a layer of white. Harry and Ron stood on the edge of the terrace and looked at several students who were having a snowball fight in the courtyard. Harry, I'll go talk to Seamus and the others, they should be willing to play with you. No need, it's too late for that, they prefer to hide from me now. Harry said dejectedly. Just then, the Weasley twins and Lee Jordan walked by. Seeing Harry Potter, the twins said with a smile. Look, isn't this the heir of Slytherin? Oh evil wizard, Harry Potter. Get out. Ron angrily chased them away. Seeing the sad look in Harry's eyes, he quickly comforted, Don't mind them, you should know that the two of them just like to joke, but they didn't mean it. I know, thank you, Ron. This thank you is sincere, because by this point, the only one who hadn't abandoned him was Ron. Ron scratched his head sheepishly. Then, as if remembering something interesting, he hurriedly said to Harry. You don't know it, but now many people say that fellow Grindelwald is also the heir because Myrtle heard him talk like a snake last year. Harry, maybe with Grindelwald, everyone's eyes will be taken away from you, so you won't be under so much pressure. Harry let out a long breath after hearing this. If so, it would be great, and the thought that Lucas might also have to suffer what he has endured. Harry felt inexplicably much better. At the same time, Lucas put a book about the dark arts back on the shelf in Rowena's library and returned to the dormitory by using a void rift. He had just walked out the door when he saw all the year chiefs standing at the door. What are you doing here? Chief, come with us. Payne Traverse led Lucas down the path to the common room. He just followed curiously, only to find that all the students of Slytherin were there. Chapter 115, The Completely Opposite Treatment, The Warmth That Only Belongs to Slytherin Seeing the worried eyes of his housemates Lucas chuckled, What are you doing? Nothing happened to me. Chief. Have you heard all the rumors outside these days? Lucas nodded, after all he is not deaf so there's no way he didn't hear the rumors. He just didn't expect that Myrtle still remembered what he did last year in the entrance to the Chamber of Secrets. 
Everyone frowned when they saw Lucas' disinterested and careless expression. Payne Traverse comes up to Lucas. Chief, we discussed it just now, please stay with Draco Malfoy and others during this time. Our other grade chiefs will take turns following you to class every day to prevent you from being attacked by others. Ahem. Lucas coughed twice. The freshly brewed black tea in the cup spilled a lot. I say, aren't you guys going too far? Several year chiefs shook their heads and Marcy Flint, head of the fourth years, said, you don't know what happened to Harry Potter, do you? In the past two days, not only was he isolated by people from his own house, but he was also pranked by people from other houses during class. That's why we are so nervous, you are the head of our house, if you are successfully pranked by someone, it will be a humiliation for all of Slytherin. Lucas really didn't know that Harry had such a miserable two days. Stupid Gryffindors. That's right, stupid Gryffindors. Draco echoed. Lucas glanced at him, perhaps this time will be an opportunity for Draco to reconcile with Harry. However, he thinks that Harry has become more and more alienated from himself recently, but maybe he's worrying for nothing. Okay, I accept your wishes, but you don't need to escort me to class. To put it bluntly, you may not be able to beat me, so how can the other three houses? The truth hurts the most, especially when coupled with Lucas's clearly mocking expression. Several year chiefs suddenly felt angry. Lucas put away his mocking expression and looked at everyone with a gentle smile. Thank you for your concern, really. In recent years, Slytherin has been synonymous with cunning and treachery in the impression of outsiders. Almost everyone thinks subconsciously that Slytherins have a purpose in making friends with people. I'm afraid Dumbledore also contributed a lot to this. At the start of each year, not a single line of the Sorting Hats song praises the Slytherins. But, only the Slytherins themselves know just how strong is the Slytherin friendship. Under their mask of indifference is their concern for their friends, and this is the warmth that belongs only to Slytherins. The Slytherins saw the chief salute to themselves, so they stood up and raised their wands in return. After this incident, they found that the chief was standing in front of everyone before. But now they found that the chief actually needed their protection. Because of this little episode, the Slytherin house was more united than ever. Lucas looked around the crowd and said again, but what Payne said just now woke me up. During these dangerous times, it is best for us Slytherin students to commute to and from class as a group, also when going to the Great Hall for meals. Whoever this heir is, he can't have a good intention to open our Slytherin chamber. To prevent students from other houses from venting their anger on us, starting tomorrow, all years will act collectively. Yes, Chief. Everyone in the common room answered in unison. At this moment, the door of the common room was opened. Black wizard robes and greasy hair, Professor Snape stepped in through the door in one step. Professor. Everyone greeted him in unison. He just nodded lightly and his eyes turned to Lucas on the side. Mr. Grindelwald, from tomorrow, come to my office every afternoon and evening for detention. Professor Snape didn't wait for an answer, and walked out of the lounge after speaking. With fast footsteps, the old bat disappeared at the door in an instant. Lucas smiled softly, he's really a weird person. The purpose of the potions master is actually the same as that of the year chiefs. And there is nothing wrong with the head of house protecting the chief of his own house. Chief, are you really not the heir? A voice came from the crowd. Daphne Greengrass raised her right hand timidly. The Greengrass family, even though they stayed neutral during the war they were still supporters of pure blood ideologies. In fact, most of the sacred 28 families support the supremacy of blood. And those pure blood families who are pro muggles and half bloods are treated with disdain. After so many years, some of the sacred 28 began to move closer to the pro muggle side. For example, the Weasley family, and that's why their family was called blood traitors by Malfoy. The next day, Lucas walked in the castle as usual. Although the students from the other houses were staring at him and whispering, no one wants to step forward and make trouble. After all, Lucas' excellence grades and performance on the dueling club are enough to prove his strength. Really, why don't these people want to think for themselves? That's right, they are so hateful. Hermione and Cho looked angrily at the students walking by, then they looked at Lucas worriedly. Oh ladies, you really don't have to worry about me, I'm content with you and everyone in Slytherin supporting me. Oh, George, it's so sad that the little chief doesn't recognize his two handsome friends. Yes, yes, Fred. The little chief is drifting away from us, oh it makes me so sad. The exaggerated words of the twins came from behind. 
The two wiped away the tears that didn't exist with small handkerchiefs, their expressions exaggerated to the extreme. But the two soon noticed the teasing look in Lucas' eyes and put away their bombastic performances. Putting their arms around Lucas' shoulders. Beautiful ladies, we need to borrow your boyfriend, but don't worry, we will return him shortly. After the two finished speaking, they lifted Lucas by the armpits and walked out, once they were outside they started walking normally. The three of them didn't stop until they came to the edge of the black lake. What's the matter with you two? I have to go to class. The twins looked embarrassed, which was really uncommon for them. They picked up stones on the ground and threw them into the lake. They didn't stop until the mer people in the lake surfaced, annoyed by all the stone throwing. If you don't say anything else, I will leave. Lucas turned around to leave but the two hurriedly stopped him. Lucas, actually we want to ask you to borrow some money. What are you borrowing money for? The two said embarrassingly, we have some ideas recently, planning to make a batch of prank toys, but we don't have enough capital. How much do you need? Twenty galleons will suffice. As soon as George finished speaking, Fred went on to say, you also know the situation of our family, and we also do this to subsidize the family. Looking at the uneasy eyes of the two, Lucas nodded and said, no problem, I can lend you fifty galleons. Fifty. The two exclaimed. Yes, but I have a condition, the prank toys you make must be sold to my joke shop. No problem. The two agreed without hesitation. They were meant to be sold, so it doesn't matter if it's to Zunko's magic joke shop or Lucas shop. Seeing that the two agreed, Lucas went on to say, starting from this summer vacation, you are going to work in my joke shop. You can use any material in the store, but the finished product can only be sold in my store. The twins looked at each other and after a few seconds, the two nodded at the same time. No problem. The deal was concluded, and Lucas paid the two of them fifty galleons on the spot. The twins are geniuses at practical jokes, so it's good to lure the two into the store first. When Lucas finally reached the dungeons, Professor Snape had just walked to the door. Seeing that Lucas was late he shot him a hard look. Everyone, open your books on page 115 and tell me what it says. Swelling solution. The students of Slytherin and Greyfinder answered in unison. Lucas took the opportunity to take the empty seat next to Draco. What's going on with Harry? While preparing his cauldron, he looked towards the first row next to him. Poor Harry, there is no one sitting in the front, back, left, or right. He and Ron Weasley are like two plague gods and everyone is avoiding them. Humph, stupid lions. Well, Draco answered Lucas's question concisely. Lucas didn't expect it to be so serious, but it reached the point where the people of Gryffindor even isolated Harry in class. Lucas just glanced at it and didn't care anymore. In fact, Harry hasn't spoken to Lucas for a long time. It wasn't long after Lucas looked away that Harry turned to look at him too. At this moment, the look in his eyes is very complicated. He just couldn't figure it out, why is it that while also being suspected of being the heir of Slytherin Lucas seemed so unaffected. The Slytherins didn't isolate him either, they even reserved a seat for him. Could it be because he is the chief of their house? Harry thought it was very possible. And the students of Slytherin, maybe they want Lucas to be the heir. J.A. Harry recalled the scene he saw when he passed the corridor just now. The Weasley twins were happily talking with Lucas while people in other houses seem to only talk about him in private. But when it comes to himself it's another story altogether. The twins claim him to be an evil dark wizard, while people from other houses would talk bad about him to his face and play pranks on him. Harry frowned tightly, then he turned to look at his friend. Ron, how can we get honor for Gryffindor? Ron knew the pressure his friend was under these days. So he quickly gave an answer after hearing the question, the Quidditch Championship the house cup or something big enough to cause a sensation in the school. When Ron said this, he carefully looked around and saw Snape on the podium. If you can find out the true heir, everyone in the school except Slytherin will regard you as a hero. Ron's words were like a guiding light that dispelled the haze in Harry's heart. That's right, if I find the real heir, not only will I be respected by most of the school, but I might even help Gryffindor win the house cup. Harry Potter who was only 12 years old. At this moment, a raging fire called ambition bloomed in his eyes. Harry, focus and be careful. When he noticed his friend's mind wandering off, Ron hurriedly reminded him. But it was too late, Harry's wand exploded upon contact with the cauldron and swelling solutions splattered everywhere. Fortunately, there was no one around them, 
so only both of them suffered. Fool, idiot, stupid dunderhead dumber than a troll. Ten points from Greyfinder. Amidst Professor Snape's roar, the potions class was finally drawing to a close. Chapter 116, The Attacks Never Stop, The Public Opinion Offensive Begins The situation at the school did not improve for the next few days, on the contrary, fewer and fewer people dared to go out during the day. Until Dumbledore finally returned. At lunchtime, the teachers finally breathed a sigh of relief when they saw the respected old man sitting on his throne on the teacher's table. Hogwarts has been rejuvenated. The students no longer frowned and smiles appeared on their faces. Lucas sat aside and watched silently, feeling Dumbledore's influence. This is the greatest wizard of this century, just by him sitting there most people in the castle will feel very safe. Be quiet, children, this time I'm back from the ministry with good news. Hearing Dumbledore speak, the Great Hall immediately became silent as everyone wondered what the good news was. Dumbledore had a smile in his eyes, looking like a kind grandfather. Due to the attacks, the Ministry of Magic decided to send Aurus into the school to protect everyone. Don't worry, they will only be on the outskirts of the school and will not interfere with everyone's life. After a while, the Aurus will arrive under the leadership of Head Aura Rufus Scrimgeer. The students cheered when they heard the news. Aurus are a very powerful group of wizards in the hearts of these minor wizards. With Aurus protection, they finally don't have to worry about being attacked. The Slytherins and the rest of the purebloods who understood politics shook their heads. This was probably not what Dumbledore wanted. Hogwarts has been around for so many years and there has never been an aura presence in the school. It can be seen from this that the attack on the heir of a pure-blood family had a great impact, and even Dumbledore had to back down. He was left with no choice but to let the hand of the Ministry of Magic reach out into the school. Going back to his dorm, the first thing Lucas did was to write a letter to Vinda, which stated that she should prepare the content for subsequent newspaper publication and the manpower he arranged needs to be ready immediately. At this point Lucas was still holding a photo of Susan Bones after the attack. What if the students had an accident even after the arrival of the Aurors? What if the Aurors had an accident too? By then, the entire wizarding population in the British magic world will probably be in chaos. At that time, people's hatred will be directed at the Ministry of Magic. Why? Because the Ministry of Magic sent Aurors to the school and something still happened with them at the school, so of course, it is the responsibility of the Ministry of Magic. He handed the envelope to Hestia, and watched the owl spread its wings and fly out of the dungeons from the passage. Lucas just packed up and headed to Snape's office. These few days of detentions have benefited him a lot. Stepping through the door of the office, he saw that Professor Snape was looking down at the potion's homework of the students. The explosive liquid of the erumpent, be careful when handling it, and pack it in separate bottles. Hearing footsteps, Snape said without looking up. Lucas responded and then began to deal with the explosive fluid. This thing is very dangerous, a little carelessness can cause a powerful explosion. When Lucas was finally done it was already dinner time. Not bad, continue tomorrow. Snape placed five potions in front of Lucas, among them is the Wolf's Bane potion. In the past few months, the Dewar Professor has kept his promise very well and five bottles of advanced potions are delivered on time every month. Thank you. Professor Snape. After thanking him, he planned to leave. But before taking two steps, he was stopped by Snape's voice. You can take this too. Looking at the black book in Snape's hand. Lucas knew what it was right away, the potions book with notes of the half-blood prince. There are not only notes on black magic such as Sectum Sempra in it. There's also the experience of Snape, the youngest potions master. You have to understand that even Harry, who had a terrible potions grade could successfully brew high-level potions with this book. This is really a precious gift. Thank you professor. No, I just lent it to you. So do remember to return it after you read it. Lucas nodded, touched the title page with his fingers, and silently read what was written. This book is property of the half-blood prince. Saying the above words softly, he looked at Snape strangely. Before that Tsundera Bat got angry, he hurriedly left the office. At night, a rustling sound reached Harry's ears and he just couldn't keep sleeping because of the noise. Time to kill. Kill. So hungry. Harry snapped his eyes open. He could never forget this voice, it's the same voice he heard before after the death day party. The air. Harry hurriedly got up and changed into his school robes then turned to look at his friend who was sleeping soundly next to him. In the end, 
he didn't have the heart to wake him up so he just left Greyfinder Tower alone. Chasing all the way in the direction of the sound. Finally, a petrified Ravenclaw girl was found in the corridor on the second floor. Harry crouched beside her and found that the girl in front of him was actually someone he knew. Padma Paddle, second year Ravenclaw. Same year as him and her twin sister, Parvati, is in Greyfinder and is a classmate with Harry. Oh, I finally caught you right on the scene, Potter. Filch's cold voice came from behind, he had been patrolling every night during all this time, just wanting to catch the murderer who killed Mrs. Norris. And now he's finally caught him. I want to see how you are going to defend yourself this time, you murderer. Filch came to Harry with a fierce expression on his face, and just when he was about to drag Harry to the headmaster's office by grabbing his collar. Dumbledore and Professor McGonagall arrived just in time. Seeing the petrified girl on the ground, Professor McGonagall immediately called for help. When Padma was carried away, she looked at Harry in surprise. Harry, I think we need to talk, Dumbledore began. That's exactly what Harry meant to do as well. The two walked to Dumbledore's office on the seventh floor together. Not before Dumbledore threw the rest of the mess at Professor McGonagall. Filch saw Dumbledore taking the culprit away again and had to go back to his office angrily. It was dark, but while Dumbledore and Harry chatted, an urgent newspaper was already being printed. When the sun just came up, a piece of news detonated the entire British wizarding world. The front page of the Daily Prophet published a photo of Harry and Dumbledore face to face taken last night, and beside them was a petrified student. Dumbledore, you owe the wizarding world an explanation. What is he trying to cover? The boy who lived is the heir. The Ministry of Magic is mismanaged, the relevant personnel should be thoroughly investigated. There are already five students who have been attacked, is there any concealment, and will more students be petrified? Looking at all kinds of reports in the newspapers, the corners of Lucas' mouth never came down. The Daily Prophet summarized what happened at Hogwarts during this period in detail, it is even clearly mentioned in what posture Filch's cat died in. It even featured an interview with Filch. It was Harry Potter, I caught him last night, and there was only him and the petrified girl at the scene. Filch is a Hogwarts employee, so having him testify against Harry Potter in the newspapers made the famous boy who lived become the target of everyone's hate. Many parents are concerned about the safety of their children, asking Dumbledore to expel Harry. But Dumbledore rebuffed them all. Right now he was sitting in his office rubbing the space between his brows, he just didn't expect it to become like this overnight. It was as if an invisible hand was pushing everything behind the scenes. Dumbledore was suspicious of Lucas again, but there was also a report on Lucas in the Daily Prophet. Although not as large as Harry's, it did reveal the doubt that he might also be the heir. And he didn't think Lucas could reach out that far, influencing even the Daily Prophet. As the public opinion intensified, Minister of Magic Cornelius Fudge delivered a speech himself, saying that the auras at Hogwarts were going to be increased. On the same day, he arrived at Hogwarts under the leadership of Rufus. In addition, the staff of the Ministry of Magic related to education have also become the scapegoat this time. Wiltshire, Grindelwald Manor. It was late at night when the space in the living room was suddenly torn apart. Lucas took a step from the rift when he heard voices all around him. Master. The people in the living room immediately saluted him. Lucas nodded gracefully, took the black tea from Vinda and looked at the people in front of him. To the Ministry of Magic, do you know what to do? Side with pious thickness and head Aura Rufus and earn their trust. Very well, remember that you are responsible for education work, which can only be counted as idle work, so don't be too aggressive, we still have a lot of time. Lucas waved his hand after speaking and several people turned and left the manor. Tomorrow, these people will enter the Ministry of Magic to replace the expelled Ministry of Magic staff. From the time they stepped out of Grindelwald Manor until the final plan was completed these people have nothing to do with the Saints group. Aunt Vinda, are you having much trouble, and is there any news about the cave I asked you to check? It's almost there, there are already some leads. Okay, then I'll go back first. Lucas tore the void again and returned to his dormitory. And while he was gone, an aura on patrol on the outskirts of Hogwarts narrowly escaped death. Chapter 117, Panicked Ginny, The Show Begins The aurors are under attack. Hogwarts in the middle of the night suddenly became lively. Rufus, the head of the aura office, led people to the lawn outside the castle. Karen, what's going on? Sorry director, I didn't see clearly what the thing that attacked me was, but I know it was big, really big, and it came from the Forbidden Forest. 
or Karen tried describing the attack. Dumbledore also came with the professors. When he heard there was a monster coming out of the Forbidden Forest he felt it was impossible. Although Hogwarts has gradually lost its management of the Forbidden Forest over the years, the magical creatures inside will never come out. He can guarantee this. Professors McGonagall, Snape, Flitwick, and Sprout, go back to your respective houses and make sure all the students are there. The four nodded, turned, and walked towards their respective houses' common rooms. When Lucas returned to the dormitory he was just in time for Professor Snape to count the number of people. He heard the door being knocked and hurriedly changed into his pajamas. Coming. The door opened, Draco frowned, and said, Lucas, Professor Snape wants everyone in the common room, let's go. When they reached the common room Lucas could see the obvious impatience on Snape's face. Professor, the number of people has been counted, and there's no one missing. Hearing the report from Prefect Gemma, Professor Snape breathed a sigh of relief. He looked at the students who were already awake and stared at him curiously. His deep voice sounded in the basement. Just now, an aura was attacked and almost died. When everyone sleeps at night, make sure to properly close the doors of your rooms. Mr. Grindelwald, as the chief, you should arrange defensive measures, you know. I understand, Professor. Lucas replied with a nod. They waited for Professor Snape to leave and then started discussing immediately. An aura being attacked is no small matter. This proves that even the elite among adult wizards cannot resist the monster that was attacking the students. If this news is confirmed, Hogwarts may be forced to close down and the students don't want to be left without their school. Why don't we write a letter to our family and ask them to help us to suppress the matter first? The noisy room suddenly became quiet. As the person who made this suggestion, Blaze Zabanai became the center of attention. Did I say the wrong thing? Everyone shook their heads, then looked in Lucas' direction. I will see what I can do, I don't want the school closed either. After Lucas finished speaking, he walked towards his dormitory. He was telling the truth, if Hogwarts were shut down, all his plans would be disrupted. Therefore, the Ministry of Magic cannot be allowed to close the school, but the situation needs to gradually become serious. And this requires careful planning. Entering his room, Lucas fetched a parchment and wrote a letter to Vinda Rosier then went to sleep. When he woke up the next day Hestia was already waiting on the windowsill with the reply. Dear Lucas. Please don't worry about what's going to happen, I will handle it well, and we also have some clues about the things you asked me to inquire about. The first is the cave you mentioned. According to your description, our people have found similar places near Ireland. The second is Azkaban prison, where there is no abnormality, the cells are strong, and there is no sign of the Dementors being transferred. Vinda Rosier. Now that members of the Saints group have arrived in Ireland, it is only a matter of time before they find the cave. As for Azkaban, Lucas just wanted to make sure about Sirius. Because he suddenly remembered something, the Weasleys don't appear to have traveled to Egypt last year. So Sirius couldn't have seen Peter Pettigrew in the newspaper. Someone knocked on the door repeatedly, making Luca put the letter in the drawer. Then he stood up and went to open the door. Draco, what's wrong? Draco was taken aback by the clipped tone, looked down at the book in his hand and said, It's time for the Transfiguration class, I'm just here to ask you to go to class together, so I should ask you what's wrong. Lucas showed an annoyed and helpless expression. Sorry, something happened to the store business recently, I've been thinking of a solution. Thinking of that? Yes. Lucas closed the door of his room and went to the common room to join the crowd. Time flies. And since the last time an aura was attacked, Hogwarts never had a single attack incident. The students all said that the heir was afraid of being caught by the aurors, so he hid himself. Today is December 24th, Christmas Eve. The stable life for nearly a month has made the little wizards let go of their worries, they even had a snowball fight in the courtyard, chasing each other happily. This Christmas, Hogwarts is extraordinarily lively, because many students chose to stay for Christmas this year. Still a lot of people chose to leave, but those were less compared to the previous year. Lucas chose to spend Christmas at school this year and knowing his decision, Hermione and Cho also chose to stay. The two girls have been very busy recently. According to their own words, the two set up a secret room monster research group, even though there are only the two of them in the group. Except for class every day, the two girls searched for clues in the castle, hoping to find out the true face of the monster in the secret room with their own efforts. Also investigating are Harry and his friends. That's right, Draco made up with Harry Potter again. 
Draco will not be going home for Christmas this year either, he said that he wants to stay and investigate the truth about the Chamber of Secrets with Harry. Then there are Zabani and others who were forced to stay by Draco. They became the brains behind Draco, returning daily to discuss the leads they had collected. Everyone seems very busy. Only Lucas is at ease, he suddenly felt that sometimes he would lose a lot of fun if he knew all the answers in advance. Unaccompanied, Lucas had to turn on the system. Seeing the 27,700 achievement points, he was looking forward to tomorrow night's festival special lucky draw. But before that, he had to find a way to finish collecting 30,000 achievement points. Such a lottery is fun. Bang! A head of fiery red hair suddenly bumped into Lucas' arms. Looking at Ginny Weasley who fell to the ground. Lucas held out his hand to the youngest Weasley, Are you okay? You are in such a hurry, are you in trouble? Ginny shook her head in panic. She randomly picked up the books on the ground, and seeing Lucas going to pick up Tom's diary, she hurriedly stopped him and said, No, don't touch that diary. After that, she snatched the diary first, organized her books and said in panic, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Looking at the little redhead who ran away in a panic, Lucas' eyes became thoughtful. Has she already noticed it? It seems that the day she throws the diary away is not far away. Ginny realized that she was being bewitched, so it wouldn't be long before she was taken into the Chamber of Secrets. Lucas needs to get ready, there is not only the basilisk waiting for him in the secret room, but also 2500 achievement points. How can I get Ginny Weasley to open the Chamber of Secrets before 12 o'clock tomorrow night? Lucas walked towards the dormitory while thinking about the solution. Ever since they learned that the monster came from the Forbidden Forest, the Aurors set up several lines of defense around the forest. Since there have been no attacks on students at Hogwarts this month, it caused the Ministry of Magic to show off in the newspapers. And Minister Fudge even took all the credit for himself. At this moment, right under their feet, Aragog the Acromantula, was busy digging a tunnel to Hogwarts at the behest of Lucas. That's right, it was Aragog being controlled by the Imperious Curse who attacked the Auror not long ago. Soon the day was coming to its end, Lucas cast the disillusionment charm and went to the door of the Gryffindor common room to wait. It didn't take long before a smaller figure walked out from inside. Ginny Weasley was very conflicted at the moment, she knew she was being controlled. And she even remembered how she wrote the words in blood, how she unleashed that terrible monster. She remembered even more that the black diary in her hand was the one that tricked her into doing all of this. Since she realized it, Ginny never touched the black diary again. But every day when she saw the diary, she would think of those horrible memories. So she wanted to find a place to throw the diary away, but unexpectedly, she met Lucas which prevented her from throwing away the diary. Lucas followed Ginny Weasley all the way to the sink on the second floor bathroom. In the dead of night even the ghosts had entered a state of rest. Myrtle was hiding in her toilet, thinking wildly when she suddenly saw a dark object hitting her, passing right through her body. She furiously went out of the toilet but there was no one in the bathroom. At the thought that even after becoming a ghost she was still being bullied, Myrtle's tears immediately flowed down her face. Although she has no tears. Lucas, who witnessed the whole process, ignored Myrtle. He turned and walked out of the bathroom, and walked towards the place where Harry and others often meet. Everything is ready, and now Harry is the protagonist. Since he promised Dumbledore he would protect Harry, it's just a matter of course that Lucas had to give the Savior and himself a chance to enter the Chamber of Secrets openly. Only this time, if Harry wanted to gain fame like last year, it would not be so easy to obtain it. Chapter 118, Enter the Chamber of Secrets and Face the Basilisk Harry, is it useful for you to read the contents of this book? In an abandoned classroom in the dungeons, Harry, Ron, and Draco each had a book, looking for the contents about the Chamber of Secrets and the air. Beside them, there was a thick stack of books. These were all sent to Draco by his mother at home. Malfoy is a top pure-blood family so naturally, there are also many books in the family. During this time the three meet here at night. If they were to be caught by the heads of their respective houses, it would not be as simple as losing just a few points. Harry glanced at the books Ron handed over and shook his head. It's useless, this is also the reason why Slytherin built the Chamber of Secrets in the first place. But what's in the Chamber of Secrets, there's nothing mentioning where the Chamber of Secrets might be. Hearing this, Ron looked a little frustrated. After searching for so long, could it be that there is no relevant content about the secret room in the books at all? Harry also closed the book in his hand, frowning tightly and looked up towards the roof. 
Draco, do you really not know who the heir is? Could it be Lucas? Impossible, I can assure you that there is no so-called heir in Slytherin House. Seeing Draco's determined expression, Ron turned hostile in disdain. Even if there is an heir, you Slytherins will probably protect him. What do you mean by that Weasley? It was seen that the air between the two became tense again. Harry quickly separated them. When everyone calmed down, Draco frowned and suggested, Why don't we ask someone else? Ask who? Lucas might or might not know. No. Harry jumped to refuse. Draco opened his mouth, and the unspoken words eventually turned into a long sigh. He still can't figure out why Harry suddenly became estranged from Lucas. Of course Draco wouldn't understand. Because the education they received was different, Harry has lived a life of slavery since he was a child. When he first entered the magic world, he was ignorant and regarded everyone around him as his friends. But there was always someone by his side who was stronger than him in terms of grades, strength, or wealth. This made Harry unable to accept it. Especially when he saw the people who surrounded him originally, those who looked up to him because he was the savior and the boy who lived. Now they ignore him in favor of someone else. Such a psychological gap is not acceptable to a 12-year-old child. If he had someone who can enlighten him in time, perhaps he wouldn't have become like this. Unfortunately the friends he surrounded himself with aren't very good at such things. And his best friend is someone like Ron who is even more jealous, so the easily influenced Harry ended up like this. On the Quidditch pitch between Ravenclaw and the Slytherins. From when he heard the girl he had a crush on confessed to Lucas. Harry Potter and Lucas Grindelwald are no longer on the same path. Why don't we ask Hermione Granger? She has the best grades besides Lucas. Draco proposed something again. This, okay. Harry was reluctant at first, but finally nodded in agreement, they desperately needed a smart person to point them in the right direction. As everyone knows, their conversation was clearly heard by Lucas outside the door. Waiting until they finished talking, Lucas made noise on purpose. Who's outside? The three rushed outside the classroom to see who made the noise just now. Following the sound, the three of them came to the second floor. Looking at the empty hallway, Ron said with uncertainty, Could it be that we got it wrong? SHH, listen carefully. Listening attentively, faint cries came from the bathroom. Moaning Myrtle. The three of them immediately walked to the bathroom. Is this the thing? Harry looked at the diary which was covered with water stains and picked it up with disgust. Myrtle choked and said, That's right, that's it. I know everyone hates me. I'm not good looking, I'm fat, full of pimples and I don't speak well. But it's really abominable to smash me with a book. Harry looked at Myrtle who was crying again and didn't know how to comfort her. He asked awkwardly, Then did you see the person who threw the diary? Seeing Myrtle shake her head, Harry fell silent for a moment. He didn't notice that Draco behind him was frowning tightly. His eyes looked at the diary without blinking. It's this diary again, this is already the third time Draco has seen it. The first time was at home in the hands of his father. The second time was in Lucas' dormitory on top of his desk. And this is the third time. It looked exactly the same and he felt that there was something strange about this matter. Such an old diary, how could it be so coincidental? I should have a good talk with Lucas. Draco just had such an idea when he heard Harry calling his name. What's the matter, Harry? I asked, have you ever seen a diary like this? Harry looked at his friend strangely. No, I haven't seen such an old diary, and Slytherin students wouldn't have something like this. Getting such an answer, Harry frowned slightly and opened the diary. Looking at the blank inner pages, he suddenly lost interest in researching. Just at this time Percy Weasley came in through the door suddenly. Very well, you violated the night ban and also entered the women's bathroom, Ron Weasley, you are really embarrassing our family. Percy wore the prefect badge on his chest. Even in such a dim environment, the badge was still shining brightly. Percy, don't do this, we were doing something important. Ron begged helplessly. But Percy didn't buy it, and he wouldn't let them go just because Ron is his younger brother. Two points from Greyfinder for violating the ban. Percy finished speaking and glanced at Draco with eyes full of regret. He is only a prefect of Gryffindor, and has no right to deduct points from other houses. Now, please go back to the dormitory immediately, otherwise I will continue to deduct points. Percy finished straightening his wizard robes which made the prefect badge even more visible. Not long after they left, Ginny Weasley came to the bathroom again. 
she just couldn't rest assured, what if someone learns what she did from the diary? So she was about to retrieve the dreaded black diary, but the diary is already gone. Ginny panicked. She didn't expect that in such a short time the diary was already taken away. She returned to the dormitory with apprehension, tossing and turning all night, still unable to fall asleep. Early morning the next day, the Hogwarts students got up and went to the Great Hall for breakfast. Hermione took Cho's hand, and the two came to the long table in Slytherin excitedly. Handsome Mr. Lucas, we already have the answer. What? Lucas didn't understand what the two of them meant at first. But seeing the excited expressions and the pride in the eyes of the two girls, he immediately understood that their investigation had results. Tell me, what's in the Chamber of Secrets? The two looked at each other and replied in unison, A basilisk. Anyone who looks directly into the eyes of the basilisk will be killed, as it happened to Mrs. Norris. We also learn that Myrtle was once a student of Ravenclaw, but died inexplicably fifty years ago. According to what she said, she saw a pair of big yellow eyes. Lucas nodded appreciatively. Then how do you explain Colin Creevy and the others still being alive? That's easy. Hermione said confidently, Colin Creevy saw the basilisk through the camera lens. Justin saw the basilisk through the glass reflection. It's just that we can't figure out what happened to Susan Bones. There doesn't seem to be a place where she could have seen the basilisk's reflection. Looking at the frowns of the girls, Lucas comforted, it's already very good. You have investigated in detail and the answer is correct. The monster in the chamber is indeed a basilisk. Then let's go tell Dumbledore. Hermione was just about to act but was stopped by Lucas. It's useless. Dumbledore already knows it's a basilisk, but we don't know how to get into the Chamber of Secrets nor its location. With just words the parents will not believe it. Their expressions became depressed after hearing this. They thought they only needed to find out the identity of the monster and it would be enough to help the school survive this crisis. Pulling them to sit next to him, Lucas said to the two, Harry also seems to be investigating the secret room recently. If he asks you for help, you can give him a proper reminder, otherwise our savior will be running around like a headless chicken. However, it's not possible today. You have to wait at least two or three days before you can tell him the answer, understand? Cho sighed, he already doesn't recognize you as a friend, why do you still help him like this, Lucas, your heart is too kind. Hermione nodded, she also agreed with Cho's statement. Lucas just smiled when he heard that. Ginny Weasley walked out of the dormitory absent-mindedly. She followed the corridor and kept walking all the way to the Black Lake. Her mind is now full of the Black Diary. At this time the weather was really cold so there would be no one by the lake, and this was just the quiet environment Ginny needed. But she didn't expect that someone would come to the lake first. Looking at that black hair and familiar appearance, Ginny looked a little dazed. Harry Potter, what is he doing here? Before she stepped forward to ask, she saw the familiar diary in his hand. And at this time he was holding a quill, writing and drawing in the diary. Feeling someone coming close, Harry Potter turned his head to look in panic. And finding out it was Ginny Weasley his expression became even more flustered. Ginny, I still have something to do, so I'm leaving first. Looking at Harry who left in a hurry, her heart sank. He must have learned something from the diary and that's why he looked so panicked when he saw her. No, she needs to recover the diary no matter what. Ginny made up her mind, turned around and walked towards the dormitory. Some time after she left, Harry Potter returned to the lake. Accompanied by a burst of body changes, Harry Potter quickly disappeared, replaced by Lucas standing by the lake. And the black diary in his hand has become a common book. Body Transfiguration Lucas' father, Gellert Grindelwald's forte. It wasn't long before lunchtime. Harry, Draco and Ron went to Ravenclaw Tower. It wasn't long after they reached the door to Ravenclaw's common room that Neville came running from the other side. Harry, you need to go back and have a look, our dormitory has been robbed. And your things were thrown all over the place. As soon as the words came out Harry and Ron were taken aback. The two couldn't care less about continuing to wait for Hermione Granger. Leaving everything to Draco, Harry turned and ran to the Gryffindor common room on the other side of the castle. Watching the back of his friend leaving, Draco stood helplessly at the door of Ravenclaw's common room. Praying that someone comes out of it soon. Someone has sneaked into Gryffindor Tower to steal, such a big event quickly attracted the attention of the professors. But in the end it turned out that nothing was missing, so they just let it go. But Harry knew that the magical diary was missing. 
He just learned from it last night what happened 50 years ago and originally planned to ask Hagrid after finding Hermione Granger. Unexpectedly, someone stole it. It must have been done by the heir, he must have stolen it to prevent him from finding out the truth from the diary. Harry told Ron what he thought and immediately got the support of his friend, so the two left the dormitory and went to Hagrid's cabin on the edge of the Forbidden Forest. But they seem to have forgotten that Draco is waiting at the door of Ravenclaw. Time flies, and before you know it, it is night. Today is Christmas Eve. All the remaining students came to the Great Hall to celebrate together. They were all telling each other about the gifts they received. Lucas thought about it carefully, the gifts he received this year seem to be no different from last year. Dumbledore's is still a good book, while he gave Dumbledore woolen socks signed by Gellert Grindelwald. This was specially prepared when he returned to Nurmengard during the summer vacation. I believe Dumbledore will love his gift. What surprised Lucas the most was probably the gift from the Weasley family. Mrs. Weasley actually gave him a hand-knitted red sweater, along with a note thanking Lucas for taking care of their family. It appears the twins have already spoken to Mrs. Weasley about working in the summer. Ding, the Platinum Prize Pool for Holiday Specials has been opened, the time limit is until 12 midnight, please spend as much as you like. Hearing the system prompt Lucas took a deep breath. There is no rush yet, he still has some work to do. After a great Christmas dinner he returned to the dormitory and used a void rift to leave. He cast the disillusionment charm and hid at the corner of the third floor near the Gryffindor common room, waiting there until the dead of the night. Sure enough, the figure of Ginny Weasley appeared. Looking at her blank eyes, she should be controlled by the diary again. Following her all the way to the wash basin, Ginny suddenly spoke a few words in parcel tongue and the entrance to the Chamber of Secrets appeared in front of Lucas. Once Ginny jumped into the pipe leading to the Chamber of Secrets, Lucas jumped off to follow her without hesitation. It's finally time to come face to face with the Basilisk. Chapter 119, Subdue the Basilisk and Enter the Real Secret Room of Slytherin After sliding for a while through lengthy pipes Lucas finally reached a cave full of bones. Judging from the number of bones the basilisk must have been catching its food from the Forbidden Forest since the creation of the chamber. Lucas didn't immediately go looking for Ginny Weasley. Instead, he found a hidden corner and left a space mark. Then he closed his eyes and concentrated on sensing Aragog's position. Accompanied by the space being torn apart Lucas' figure disappeared. Not long after he went back to the chamber again. It's just that this time he was accompanied by Aragog, the Acromantula. Start digging here. Aragog and his own children have a special connection. As he dug from this side, his child dug from the other end. Soon an underground passage leading to the secret room outside the Forbidden Forest would be complete. After doing this Lucas just walked towards the secret room. When passing the giant snake slough. He had a picture of Professor Snape with a face full of longing. The skin shed by a thousand years old basilisk, this can no longer be described as rare, but absolutely unique. Moreover. The skin of the basilisk is just one of the ingredients for refining the water of life. As he continued walking along the road he soon came to the door of the secret room. Entering through the round door, the first thing that came into view was the huge statue of Slytherin. Sure enough, as the original book said, it looks like a monkey. There are many pipes on both sides of the chamber. Where exactly they lead Lucas doesn't know. These pipes should have been built by Slytherin specifically for the basilisk. There wasn't any sight of Ginny Weasley in the Chamber of Secrets, not to mention the soul of Tom Riddle. Lucas walked up to the Slytherin statue step by step. Just when he was wondering where Ginny was, a rustling sound came from behind. Not surprisingly, the huge body of the basilisk appeared in front of Lucas. Nice to meet you, Mr. or Ms. Basilisk. The basilisk probably didn't expect it either, the human in front of it actually dared to look directly at its eyes but sensing the superior aura from the opponent's pair of blood-red snake pupils. The basilisk opened its mouth wide and seemed to be saying something. Probably because it saw Lucas' snake eyes and thought that the other party could also speak parcel tongue. But Lucas took the actions of the basilisk as a sign it was going to attack. Being a person who seriously thinks you have to strike first, strike hard with no mercy. Because of this, the basilisk found that things in front of it began to distort. It was as if it had been thrown into a toilet. When it finally regained consciousness, it had already appeared in a dense forest. This will be your home from now on. Home. The basilisk looked at the man beside it in surprise. It remembers that someone said the same thing about a thousand years ago, but that person hadn't visited for a long time. 
Lucas looked at the behemoth in front of him in astonishment as well, a hoarse voice actually appeared in his mind just now. Can you understand me? Of course, although I don't understand why, I feel that you have become very nice since entering here. The basilisk lowered its huge head and a pair of yellow snake eyes looked at the human in front of it. You just said that this is my home. Exactly. Then will you disappear like Salazar? Lucas froze for a moment. It is said that snakes are cold-blooded animals. But the basilisk in front of him seems to have a deep relationship with Salazar. No, I will never disappear. That's great. I can finally have someone to play with me. Every time I wake up from a deep sleep, I want to find someone to play with. But everyone who meets me turns to stone, how bad it is. Hearing the words of the basilisk, Lucas was taken aback for a moment again, this seemed to be different from what was described in the original book. But every time you wake up, don't you cry for hunger and for killing? Oh no, that's only been the case in recent years, because I found that there are a lot of eight-legged little guys in the woods next door. They're so annoying that's why I hunt them, wait, how did you hear me? The basilisk's big eyes were full of curiosity. Lucas didn't know how to explain it, so he just made excuses and kept talking to make it forget what he just said. One person and one snake got familiar with each other after some time. Lucas looked at the huge basilisk and said, how about I give you a name? The big head of the basilisk nodded, and then quietly waited for its own name. Since you're a lady, I think Medusa would do well. Medusa. That's right, your eyes have a similar power as Medusa's so why not? Medusa. I like that name. Watching the basilisk rolling happily in the forest, Lucas felt it was like a child. When Lucas came out of Hufflepuff's secret garden, Medusa immediately slithered towards the Slytherin statue. Come on, I'll take you to Salazar's room. Lucas quickened his pace and crawled in along the statue's open mouth. He felt strange just now. He had obviously reached the Slytherin Chamber of Secrets, so why is it that the system prompt has not sounded yet? But found out why after asking Medusa, the outside here is just her playground and a place to rest, while Salazar Slytherin's Chamber of Secrets is even deeper. Led by the basilisk, a stone door soon appeared in front of Lucas. In the middle of the door is a piece of transparent crystal. Other than that, there is nothing else. Lucas looked at the basilisk in puzzlement, only to hear Medusa say, this is Salazar's room. As for how to get in, I remember he said. A thousand years is too long, she thought for a long time before she vaguely remembered something. Salazar said that the most evil magic in the world, but indispensable magic, is needed to open the door. Lucas stroked his chin, thinking about the answer. After a while, the basilisk Medusa said, Lucas, can I go out and play? I feel like those spiders have entered the castle again. Of course, but remember what I said before. Okay, try not to look directly at humans, I remember. After finishing speaking, she slithered out of the passage. In Lucas' view, the basilisk in front of him is like a little girl with a childlike innocence that seems to be curious about everything, and it loves to play with others. He looked back at the stone gate in front of him and thought, the most evil and indispensable magic. Touching his chin for a moment he suddenly drew out his wand and pointed it at the clear crystal. Avada Kedavra. The green light hit the crystal directly and there was a loud sound. It was as if the screams from hell echoed in this hollow subterranean world. The clear crystal was gradually filled with green energy and when it turned completely green, the stone door opened upward with a sound of rocks grinding. Ding, congratulations to the host for obtaining a new achievement, Salazar Slytherin's secret laboratory, reward, 500 achievement points. Detected that the host has completed a new achievement, explore Slytherin house, get a reward. 2,000 achievement points. With the discovery of the real secret room Lucas achievement points also successfully broke through the 30,000 mark. Once he goes back to his dorm he will open the system lottery. Taking a deep breath Lucas stepped into the laboratory in front of him. Dim, gloomy, and scary, this is his first impression of Salazar's laboratory. There are diagrams of human organs on the walls. It also marked different kinds of magic, and what kind of reaction the corresponding organs will have to each magic. No wonder the other three founders were at odds with Slytherin, this scene looks suspiciously like human experimentation. Nobody ever said that Salazar Slytherin is a good guy, but Lucas still gained a lot of useful knowledge. This laboratory is like a treasure trove of black magic. Among them are many Slytherin studies of the dark arts, such as the split killing curse. After reciting the spell once, the killing curse can be split into several attacks. 
Salazar also studied how to keep an opponent alive after smashing all of their bones to pieces. In short, good stuff. It is really worth studying carefully in the future. To say what was the most important gain, it should probably be the Horcrux creation method recorded by Slytherin. Salazar once also studied Horcruxes and the final conclusions are not optimistic. Splitting the soul many times can make the personality increasingly violent. And Horcruxes can only guarantee the immortality of the soul while the immortality of the flesh cannot be guaranteed. This is not the way of immortality that Salazar envisioned so he didn't use it, but threw it aside after commenting on it. But it's perfect for Lucas since he needed this Horcrux research to prove that Harry was a Horcrux. Salazar Slytherin was really helpful. Right at this time, Harry, who was still awake, heard the raspy, low voice again. Time to kill Hungry. He rolled out of bed, put on his robe and ran out. He doesn't seem to know when to stop even after being caught so many times in a bad situation. It was not easy for the students to stop rejecting him. If he's caught again tonight, he really wouldn't have any way to explain it. Soon, Hogwarts Castle was buzzing because after a month, a student was petrified again. And unfortunately, Harry Potter was found next to the Muggleborn victim right in the scene. Facing questions from professors, Harry was really helpless and didn't know how to justify himself. But at this time, Rufus, the head of the Aura office arrived and helped Harry get rid of the suspicion. The murderer has been found. All eyes were on the serious and stubborn head Aura in front of them. Two of my Auras are missing. Before they disappeared, someone saw a huge spider appearing outside the Forbidden Forest. Impossible. Hagrid exclaimed. Realizing his slip of the tongue, he hastily shut his mouth. Rufus looked at the half-giant beside him, I have already informed the Ministry of Magic about this, and I believe that support will arrive soon. Hagrid froze when he heard the news from the Ministry of Magic, and there was a trace of fear in his eyes. Ministry of Magic Minister Fudge came to his office in the middle of the night. Hearing the debriefing from Assistant Pine Carroll he slapped the table excitedly. Sure enough, it's Hagrid, that half-giant. It was him fifty years ago. This time, I must send him to Azkaban. Pine, immediately inform the Daily Prophet to let them print as soon as possible, and expose what happened just now without concealing it. However, don't reveal the murderer. Let's just say that we have set up a net to catch the murderer within a week. Yes, Minister. Pine Carrow made arrangements according to Fudge's instructions. At the same time, a small note was passed out by concealed means. Slytherin's Chamber of Secrets Medusa the Basilisk was acting like a child who had done something wrong, with her head bowed in front of Lucas. So you petrified another person. Blame those eight-legged guys, Medusa didn't mean it. It's okay, don't worry about it, you still need to stay here recently, but it won't be too long you can go home in a few days. It's good to help Lucas, I've been here for a long time anyway, it's okay. One person and one snake communicated while walking towards a hidden passage that was really difficult to find. Without the leadership of the basilisk, Lucas really couldn't find it. When he came out of the passage, he went straight back to the Slytherin common room. Really, the secret rooms of the founders definitely have a connection to their respective houses. Even Lucas thinks that this one in the common room is the real entrance, and the bathroom is just a place the basilisk uses to get around. Going back to his dormitory he looked at the time, it was only 11 p.m. at the moment. He still has a lot of time to spend in the lottery. Just when he turned on the system, there was a knock on the door suddenly. Looking at Draco standing outside the door frowning, Lucas asked curiously, what's wrong? Lucas, let me ask you, what happened to the diary? Chapter 120, The Petrified Draco Malfoy platinum draw on Christmas Eve. What diary? Seeing Lucas making a confused face, Draco pushed him aside and walked into the room. I'm talking about that black leather diary. Looking across the desk, when Draco did not see the diary on it he was even more suspicious. During the summer vacation, I once saw that diary at home. I was skeptical at the time, my father would never use such an old thing. I wanted to see what was so magical about that diary, but my father gave me a harsh reprimand. Draco sat on the soft bed with a frown on his face and looked at Lucas in scrutiny. Then school started, and I saw that you had the same diary. You said it was just a coincidence, that there is not only one black diary in this world. I thought it made sense, so I believe what you said. But just last night, I saw that diary again, and this time I looked at it carefully. 
that's when I realized that whether it's your diary, my father's, or the one Harry picked up yesterday, they were all exactly the same one. Seeing Lucas frown, Draco knew he had guessed right. He sighed, maybe there are many diaries with black covers in this world, but it is absolutely impossible for there to be two diaries with the same scratches and damaged positions. But I saw three such diaries, how could I not doubt it? So, what are you and my father planning? What is that diary, and why are you all throwing it away? Draco was filled with anger because he felt that Lucas and his father treated him like a child. Since I started to suspect, I have been investigating, and it happened that Harry was also investigating the truth of the Chamber of Secrets, so I went with him. What you and my father did should have something to do with the Chamber of Secrets, right? You guys opened the Chamber of Secrets. Lucas shook his head, you are wrong. After finishing speaking, he turned around and took out a diary from the drawer. Is this what you mean? This. Looking at the old black leather diary that appeared in front of him Draco quickly snatched it over. The same damage and old traces, and his careful inspection did not find any traces of transfiguration. Are there really two damaged diaries in this world? Seeing his confused eyes Lucas sighed, I admit, the one in your father's hand is the same one in my hand. But we have no conspiracy, and we wouldn't throw it away because this diary is very important to us. Lucas looked a little disappointed. He seemed to be sad because of the suspicion of a close friend. He walked over to Draco, pulled out his wand and put it on the diary, Revelio. The original blank diary gradually revealed densely packed cursive characters. It was filled with detailed records about the revenue and expenditure of the Nocturne Alley Casino, the underground trading market, and the underground auction. Draco looked dumbfounded at the content recorded in the book. Looking at his best friend who had a sad face he didn't know how to explain it. Now you understand why you use an old diary? Things that look too good can easily attract people's attention. If the contents of this book are spread, both your father and I will be sanctioned by the Ministry of Magic. I know, I know. Draco nodded and said. It's getting late, I'm going to sleep, you go back. Draco wanted to say something else, but seeing the expression on Luca's face, he just walked out of the room with his head down. The moment the door closed, Lucas let out a long breath. Fortunately, he was well prepared, otherwise he would be discovered by Draco today. It's not okay to go on like this. If I let Draco continue to follow Harry, maybe he will find out something. Lucas sat on the edge of the bed and thought about it. Then he picked up the cloak in the closet, tore apart the space and left the dormitory. Slytherin Common Room Draco sat on the sofa and looked at the black lake overhead. At this moment, his expression was full of annoyance, it looks like he regrets what he said just now. Ding 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 ding. A special sound came from the door. This sound was from the common room entrance and it rang four times at a specific frequency. This is the code he agreed with Harry. Draco sorted out his emotions and walked towards the door. The corridor in the dungeons was pitch black and there was no one outside the common room. He knew that Harry had an invisibility cloak, so he whispered, Harry, is that you? As soon as the voice fell, footsteps sounded. Draco didn't hesitate, and walked towards the direction of the sound. When he came around the corner and was about to greet Harry there was no one in front of him. Then footsteps sounded in front again. In this way, Draco followed the footsteps to the second floor. Harry, what's the matter with you? Draco stepped forward and spoke impatiently while reaching out with a hand and holding his wand tightly in his other hand. When he realized that the touch on his hand was not an invisibility cloak he immediately raised his wand. It's a pity that Draco did not manage to utter a single spell when a pair of blood-red snake eyes appeared in front of his eyes. Lucas helped Draco, making him lean against the wall when he was about to fall. If Lucius Malfoy knew that Draco was petrified, he might mobilize the school board to impeach Dumbledore. Apologizing to Draco in his mind, Lucas drew out his wand and cast a confusion charm on the portrait that had just woken up. Finishing with what he came to do, he tore through space and returned to his dormitory. Lucas did this out of several considerations. First of all, if he lets Draco continue to doubt and investigate so much, it is hard to say what he could discover. Don't look down on children raised by pure blood families. Secondly, he didn't want to end up with Draco also entering the Chamber of Secrets. He even thought that it would be best for Harry to enter the Chamber of Secrets alone. Now, Draco Malfoy, who was a good friend, was petrified, and Harry will definitely investigate more diligently. It would be even more perfect if Ron could also be petrified. In the end, 
the Malfoy child was attacked and Dumbledore and the Ministry of Magic were to be held accountable. Dumbledore's staying at school will make Lucas' future actions more difficult, so it is best if he leaves the school for now. All Lucas needs to do is get Mr. Malfoy to mobilize the school board and get Dumbledore expelled from the school. Draco Malfoy is petrified. It's a bombshell for everyone. Professor Snape showed a worried expression for the second time and took the lead rushing to the incident site first. Looking at Draco standing against the wall, Snape's hands trembled a little. Severus, it's better to send Mr. Malfoy to the infirmary as soon as possible. Dumbledore finished speaking and looked behind him. Several Aurors stepped forward and loaded Draco onto the stretcher. Professor Snape took a deep breath, and when he opened his eyes again, he had changed back to his previous appearance. Headmaster, what should we do next? And how should we explain it to Lucius Malfoy? Dumbledore didn't answer. He, too, had a terrible headache at the moment. At first he didn't think it would cause such serious consequences. But as time went by, that figure hiding in the dark seemed to be getting more and more unscrupulous. Even the Aurors are no deterrent now. I'll try to explain, Severus. Had. After the familiar sneer, Professor Snape turned and walked towards his own house. I'm going to see if there are any idiots who have left the dormitory at this time. Dumbledore turned his head and motioned for the others to get on with their work. He stood alone in the corridor on the second floor looking out at the night sky. Harry, why is everyone involved in the accident either related to you, or you were there, and your parcel tongue? Dumbledore frowned and let out a long sigh. System, use all my achievement points to draw the platinum prize pool. The host has a total of 30213 achievement points and can participate in Indiana the platinum prize pool draw for 151 times. Confirm the draw. Sure. 151 platinum draws. The rewards will pile up into a hill. Lucas immediately spotted several rewards glowing platinum. This lottery draw ends, a total of 68 bronze rewards, 53 silver rewards, 24 gold rewards, and 6 platinum rewards. The bronze rewards for this lottery are as follows, 24 pieces of gold galleon, total amount, 5,321, ice mice 8. Puddlemere United Uniform 3, Wizard Weekly 2. The silver rewards for this lottery are as follows, Fumos, Level 2, 4, Episki, Level 5, 3, Snow Making Spell, Level 1, 6, Flame Freezing Charm, Level 4, 3, Silencing Curse, Level 4, 2, Excavation Spell, Level 3, 5, Arresto Momentum, Level 4, 3, Duplication Curse, Level 6, 2, Duplication Curse, Level 2, 5, Daydream Curse, Level 9, 1, Nimbus 2001, Improved, Asterisk 1. Chapter 121, A Lot of Harvest, Azkaban at Night. The gold rewards for this lottery are as follows, Talent Points 1 4, Talent Points 2 1, Items Banshees Tears, Compound Potion 1, Blessing Potion 1, Protego Maxima, Level 2, 4, Firestorm, Level 3, 2, Apparition, Level 3, 2, Finite, Level 3, 4, Patroness Charm, Level 5, Asterisk 4. Platinum rewards for this lucky draw are as follows, Talent Breakthrough Card Asterisk 3, Eye of Foresight Upgrade, Ancient Elf Magic, Void Escape, Level 1, Ancient Elf Combat Skills, Full Set. With more and more lottery draws, Lucas learned more and more strange magic that is rarely used waiting for the system to integrate the spells and items. Lucas first looked at the two items in the gold reward. Banshee's Tears, this is similar to the Guardian Heart given to Hermione. He was worried that there was no gift for Cho and this thing came just in time. As for the spell Firestorm, it is actually the fire magic cast by the old bee in Voldemort's Horcrux cave that was full of inferies. If it is used together with Bombarda to clear the way, the effect will be very explosive. Lucas also found out that both Dumbledore and his father seem to have reached a superb level of fire magic. Sometimes it's easy to forget that at one point they were closer than family members. Then came the main event, the Platinum Reward. The first is the upgrade to the Eye of Foresight. In addition to retaining and strengthening the 10-second future prediction, the upgraded Eye of Foresight also has the ability to predict further into the future, similar to prophecies. It's just that the triggering conditions are harsh probably at the same level as Professor Sybil Trelawney's prediction. It cannot be triggered actively, and can only passively make predictions about the future. But this is already very powerful, after all, 
it is a matter of predicting the distant future. The second bonus, Elven Magic, Void Escape. Reading more about this magic, Lucas remembered an anime he had seen in his previous life. There's a guy with an orange mask that, using his pupil technique, hides himself in a different space to nullify the attacks of his opponents. The principle of Void Escape is similar to that of the Kamui Dimension. The user can instantly enter the void to avoid attacks that cannot be dodged. It's just that there is a time limit for escaping into the void, and it can only be used for up to 15 seconds. But that's enough. After all, both Void Fisher and Apparition have a forward motion, while Void Escape can be done instantly, and can be used to protect himself at critical moments. The last is the Ancient Elf Combat Skills, Full Set. According to the introduction of the system, the elves have always cultivated both magic and martial arts. Whether it's swordsmanship, archery, or magic, elves are stronger than other races, which also stems from their long life span. Lucas only practiced magic before, and never practiced martial arts so the reward this time has made up for this shortcoming. Accompanied by the mastery of elf combat skills, Lucas' physical fitness improved a lot, he even got the start of an 8-pack. Look at the remaining 6 talent points and 3 talent breakthrough cards. Lucas stroked his chin and thought for a long time before speaking. System add three points to divination, and divide the remaining three points to potions, ancient runes, and alchemy respectively. As soon as he finished speaking, the system finished upgrading his talents. Watching transfiguration, charms, and divination all reached the full level. Lucas said again, use the talent breakthrough card on all three talents. For a moment Lucas seemed to hear the sound of chains breaking. Countless knowledge about transfiguration, charms and divination poured into his brain automatically. After a few seconds, he opened his eyes. It feels so good to have the shackles broken, system show my attributes. Name, Lucas Grindelwald. Age, 12 years old. Identity, leader of Saints Investment Group, son of Gellert Grindelwald, second year student at Hogwarts. Bloodline, Void Elf, second awakening. Talents, Void Fisher, Void Aura, Eye of Foresight, LVL2, Eye of Medusa, Weakened Version. Combination Skill Magic Power, 45, Elite Aurer Charms, 10, Awakened Transfiguration, 10, Awakened Dark Arts, 11, Awakened Alchemy, 4 Ancient Runes, 3 Divination, 10, Awakened Potions, 6 Elven Magic, Soul Devouring, Level 1, Loot, Level 1, Life Steal, Level 1 Void Escape, Level 1. Elf Combat Skills, Ancient Elf Combat Skills, Full Set. Animagus, Black Panther. Different Space, Hufflepuff's Secret Garden, Recognized Owner. Skills, Ancient Alchemy, Beginner, Acclumency, Level 9, Fire Shield, Level 9, Imperious Curse, Level 9, Killing Curse, Level 9, Cruciatus Curse, Level 9, Sectum Sempra, Level 7, Legilimency. Level 7, Memory Charm, Level 6, Firestorm, Level 4, Patroness Charm, Level 7, Protego Maxima, Level 5. Magic Items, Felix Felicis 2, Verita Serum 2, Compound Potion, Banshee's Tears. Achievement Points, 13. Because the elf combat skills increase the strength of the physical body, his magic strength also increased to 45. With 15 strength points more. Lucas can enter the quasi-legendary level. With his current age and the bonus of elf blood, it is possible to increase his magic power by a little every month. That means that even if Lucas doesn't do anything to increase his power, by the end of his third year, he will definitely become a quasi-legendary powerhouse. When that happens he would have entered the top group of people in the magic world. Although it is only the bottom of that group of people, it's enough to surpass the vast majority of wizards. Besides, at that time he would only be 13 years old, a 13-year-old quasi-legendary wizard. It's scary to think about it. The three talents entering the awakening also benefited Lucas. Charm's talent awakening increases the power of all attribute spells by 10% and the mana consumption is reduced by 5%. The awakening of the transfiguration talent made his transfiguration spell stronger, but his transfiguration spell is only level 6, and it is not yet very obvious when used. The awakening of divination talent strengthens his prophecy ability, so that Lucas can clearly and accurately predict what he wants to predict. All in all, Lucas got a lot stronger again. Bang bang bang. Chief, 
something bad happened, Draco Malfoy was petrified, and Professor Snape asked everyone to go to the lounge. Lucas shut down the system in response. He put on a robe and went out. As soon as he arrived at the common room, he saw Snape walking towards him quickly. Why did Draco leave the dormitory, it seems that you are very incompetent as the chief, Mr. Grindelwald. Lucas saw a hint of panic and inquiry in the other's eyes. Draco? Petrified. Lucas looked even more surprised than the other students. How is that possible? He looked at Crab and Goyle, hoping they could explain him. I'm sorry chief, Draco has been with Potter recently, and it is said that he is investigating the Chamber of Secrets. The Chamber of Secrets. Lucas looked at Zabani and the others again. Pansy, Blaze. I remember you are also investigating the Chamber of Secrets, right? Why didn't you go with Draco? In fact, we were forced by Draco to stay for Christmas, just to help him investigate the Chamber of Secrets. Lucas frowned. So he's been with Potter lately. The second-year students nodded one after another. Lucas sighed and said, Professor, this is my responsibility, I failed to protect Draco, knowing that the Lions of Greyfinder are very impulsive, and let him come into contact with them. Forget it. Professor Snape sighed, fortunately, Draco was only petrified, so his life is not in danger. However, because of your dereliction of duty, I will deduct 100 points from Slytherin, and you will have to make up these points before the end of the semester. Professor. The other year chiefs wanted to step forward to intercede. But they received Snape's cold gaze in return. How about it? Don't worry, Professor, I will take my responsibility to the end. Professor Snape nodded, then looked at everyone. I'll stay in the lounge tonight, you all go back to sleep. The crowd slowly dispersed and Lucas also returned to his room. Another ten minutes passed and he came out with a blanket in his hand. Looking at Professor Snape who was in a daze on the sofa. Lucas passed the blanket in front of him. Professor, it's cold under the black lake, put on some covers to keep warm. Humph, don't forget that I was also a student of Slytherin. Professor Snape finally accepted the blanket. Lucas sat beside him and asked after a long silence, Professor, will there be any sequelae after the petrification of the Draco is lifted? Mr. Grindelwald, are you questioning my ability to make potions? Of course not. Then what are you worrying about? Once the Mandrakes mature, I will brew a restoration draft for Malfoy as soon as possible. After Professor Snape finished speaking, he turned his head to look at Lucas, now take your troll trodden, sentimental head and return to your room for me. Good night professor. Lucas got up quickly and walked to his room. As soon as he entered the door, he saw Hestia, who had flown away during the day, standing at the window. Don't get me wrong, the Slytherin dorms are underground but they still have windows. It's just that the scenery outside the window is made by magic. Removing the envelope from Hestia's beak. Lucas immediately opened it, and there was only one sentence on it. Everything is ready. Destroying the envelope, he got up and locked the door with an overpowered Colaporchus. This spell can normally be countered by the lock-picking charm Alohomora, but since Lucas overpowered it, only a wizard stronger than himself would be able to overpower his spell and open his door. Lucas changed his clothes, put on his black cloak, and stepped into the void along the position of the space mark. On the edge of a lonely cliff, Lucas' figure suddenly stepped out of the void. Master! One of his subordinates stands on the edge of the cliff holding his space marker. Good job, you can go back. Yes. The other party responded, and immediately used apparition to leave. Lucas stood on the edge of the cliff looking out to the sea in the distance. There is a lonely island there, and in the middle of the island is a tall building. Azkaban Castle, should now be called Azkaban Wizard Prison. Looking at the countless dementors around Azkaban, Lucas showed a disdainful smile and walked over. Chapter 122, The Dementors Who Fled in a Hurry, Fudge Issued a Military Order to Arrest the Murderer. A Dementor is like a skeleton with skin wrapped in a black cloak. This guy has no facial features with just a hole where the mouth should be, and it's said they can feel people's souls to judge their position. Every time a Dementor passes by, it will take away the happiness nearby and lower the temperature to freezing points. They are the Wardens of Azkaban that wander around the island in front of Lucas all year round. No wizard is willing to come close to such horrible, rotting creatures. If you are unfortunate enough to be imprisoned in Azkaban, you better hope you don't get kissed by a Dementor, because it will completely take away your soul leaving nothing more than an empty husk. 
The island and castle were created in the 15th century by a dark wizard named Ecrystes, who liked to lure Muggle sailors to torture them and also used the island as a breeding ground for Dementor. It wasn't until some time after Ecrystes' death that the Ministry of Magic discovered this hidden island and the large number of Dementors. It was the Minister of Magic from that time, Damocles' role, who decided to use this place as a prison. As Lucas recalled the introduction, the solace of his feet have already stepped into the island. In the next instant, the Dementors flying around turned their heads to his position. Feeling the abundance of happiness in Lucas, probably one of the few crazy motherfuckers who could feel happy coming to Escoban. The Dementors grew violent and flew to his location and Massey. Prisoners who have not yet fallen into despair in the prison became aware of the strange situation outside. Bellatrix came to the prison door and laughed wildly, this crazy beauty, not so beautiful at this time, probably thought it was her lord who came to rescue her. Expecto Patronum The white, ethereal light illuminated the small island in the sea. Lucas Patronus' charm continuously spread around like a shock wave, making the Dementors flee desperately after being hit. After a while, all the Dementors on the entire island disappeared. The cold feeling subsided, and the sea breeze mixed with the warm current entered Azkaban for the first time in centuries. The loud shouts in the cells stopped abruptly. These Death Eaters know it well. Those who can use the patroness charm must not be their own companions. Lucas, covering his whole body with the black robe, walked past each cell. The imprisoned Death Eaters banged on their cells, begging to be released, but Lucas turned a deaf ear to this. He just kept walking until he finally stopped in front of a prison cell. Looking inside, there was a skinny middle-aged man with unkempt long black hair. Lucas laughed and said, the heir of the famous black family has become like this. Sirius Black ignored what the man outside the door said. The reason why he stayed in Azkaban for more than ten years when he could have escaped at any time, was due to his overwhelming guilt. Because in his opinion, he killed his best friend along with his wife. Lucas seemed to have expected this to happen so he took a photo from his pocket and threw it into the cell. It's a pity. I planned to tell you about Peter Pettigrew, but now it seems that it's useless even if I tell you. Hearing Peter's name, Sirius finally reacted and turned to look at the photo that fell not far away. In the photograph he saw two children. A boy with black hair and glasses smiled happily, while another boy with red hair was holding a huge rat in his hand. Boom. Wait, tell me who's in this photo? Tell me. Hearing a growl behind him, Lucas smiled slightly, the one with black hair is called Harry Potter, and the one with red hair is called Ronald Weasley. After saying that, Lucas tore apart the space and disappeared from Azkaban. Harry. Sirius picked up the photo. Looking at the face that is so similar to that of his friend, tears suddenly overflowed his eyes. He is already this big. Sirius, who was originally sad, suddenly noticed the rat in the photo. Peter? He's with Harry? He's at Hogwarts? No, I can't let him there. Harry could be in danger, I'm going out. Sirius no longer looked so decadent at this moment. He looked at the metal bars of his cell and the Dementors flying back from the sky, his eyes thoughtful. Hogwarts. Lucas didn't fall asleep when he got back to the dormitory, instead he walked out of the room again. Seeing that Professor Snape was still sitting on the sofa, he made him a cup of black tea. Professor, have a drink. Mr. Grindelwald, if tomorrow at potions class you have problems due to lack of sleep, I will definitely deduct your marks severely. I'm sorry professor, but as the chief, I know that everyone is very scared, so I plan to go to each dormitory to check on them. Lucas puts down his teacup, turns around and walks towards the boys' dormitory. The reason why he did this was to be seen by Professor Snape. The ruckus he made at Azkaban cannot be hidden. Although there is no Ministry of Magic personnel on the island to take care of it. But on the shore not far from the island, there are people who monitor Azkaban's every move all the year round. The Ministry of Magic has an agreement with the Dementors though, but obviously they can't trust them. The facts are as Lucas expected. Minister Fudge hadn't finished dealing with the Hogwarts problem, and he already received another problem with the news that Azkaban was invaded. Fudge, who hadn't come home for a few days, beat the desk violently. Go and inform the Daily Prophet that this news must not be reported, if the news of Azkaban's invasion leaks out, my approval rating will be greatly reduced. Yes, Minister. Pine Caro turned to leave the Minister's office. As soon as he went out, he met Pius Thickness, the Deputy Director of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement who rushed over. Deputy Director Thickness, 
the minister doesn't want to see anyone at this moment. Get out of the way. Pius roughly pushed Pine away, completely ignoring his words, and after a while, there was a big quarrel in the office. As the deputy director in charge of Orlers. When he heard about the incident in Azkaban, he immediately planned to send Orlers to investigate and provide support. But most of the Orlers were sent to Hogwarts by Minister Fudge, so the two had a dispute over this matter. Fudge was already tormented by the endless howlers. Now Pius came to his door, so he became his punching bag. Naturally, the relationship between the two also deteriorated further. As the night passed, a new day started at Hogwarts. Unfortunately, the faces of the students were full of sorrow. The monster that was attacking the students reappeared, and this time even Draco Malfoy was petrified. This news was a disaster for all the students. When Ron heard the news, he wanted to laugh out loud in public. Harry, don't be so down, didn't you say that Malfoy was just petrified? He will be fine so you don't need to worry. When he said this, Ron's eyes were full of regret. He is probably the person in the school who most wants Draco to drop dead. Harry shook his head, Ron, maybe Draco found out something? Otherwise, why did he risk leaving the dormitory at night? Maybe, but now he is petrified, don't worry, I will help you find out everything, you have to trust me. Looking at the confident eyes of his friend, Harry nodded skeptically. Just when the two were talking in a low voice, a familiar scene reappeared. Facing the overwhelming number of owls, Dumbledore, who had experienced it once, immediately clapped his hands at the owls. The powerful magic forced the owls to let go of the howlers on their talons. Oh there are so many letters again, it seems that I can't eat breakfast, I need to go back to the office to deal with a little trouble. Dumbledore put the envelopes away calmly and left the Great Hall to return to his office. Such a small episode did not affect everyone's eating, they were already used to it. Lucas tasted today's freshly baked bread while reading the latest Daily Prophet. Minister Fudge spoke early this morning. They have found conclusive evidence of the perpetrator of the attacks at Hogwarts. He said that he would personally lead the team to Hogwarts to catch the murderer. He also promised that if he can't catch the culprit, he intends to resign. Fudge's military order seems to have played a certain role. At least those parents who cursed the Ministry of Magic for being incompetent were willing to give him some more time. This certainly does not include one Mr. Lucius Malfoy. After he learned that his son was petrified, Lucius was angry and terrified. Anger was directed at Dumbledore's incompetence. As the headmaster and the greatest wizard of this century, he couldn't even protect his students well. And he was terrified because he guessed that the whole thing might have something to do with the diary he discarded. Lucius was worried that the petrification of his son might be a warning from the Dark Lord to himself. But no matter what, he should seek justice for his son first. So Lucius Malfoy summoned the remaining eleven Hogwarts governors again. Hogwarts School Board This low-key but powerful organization has once again converged on the Malfoy Manor. The other eleven governors are also aware of recent events. Naturally, there was a lot of dissatisfaction with the way Dumbledore had handled things until now. Before you know it, it was already evening. The students who were having their dinner watched as a large number of Aurors entered the school from the outside. Minister Fudge did exactly as he said, and he really led a large number of people to arrest the culprit. On the perimeter of the Forbidden Forest, looking at the dozens of Aurors behind him, Fudge's face was full of confidence. From inside the castle, Lucas looked at Fudge with a successful smile. Finally, we can start the last step of the plan. Then, he entered the Forbidden Forest one step ahead of the Aurors. Getting ready to enjoy the next performance of the Ministry of Magic. Chapter 123 the Ministry of Magic fights against the Acromantulas. The gloomy Forbidden Forest is full of unknown dangers. The magical creatures that inhabit the forest could be hiding right beside you and attack at any moment if you are not careful. But at this time, the magical creatures on the outskirts of the Forbidden Forest were all migrating deeper. Lucas stood far away watching the human spider battle in the distance. The Auror group led by Fudge has been fighting the Acromantula Aragog for a long time. Although the Aurors are powerful and battle-hardened, their number is much lower than the spiders. During this time that Aragog was under the command of Lucas a lot of Acromantulas had been born. Now, the overwhelming number of Acromantulas are surrounding the Aurors of the Ministry of Magic. Master, why do I feel that the Ministry of Magic will lose? The speaker had strange curly hair, there was also a pair of very ugly glasses inlaid with gemstones on her face. It was Rita Skeeter, a reporter for the Daily Prophet, famous for sensationalizing all her stories 
and getting private news that no one should have any way of knowing. In the original book, she published a book after Dumbledore's death, titled The Life and Lies of Albus Dumbledore. And now she is a member of the Saints group, Lucas Personal Writer. Rita, you underestimate the Aurors, although there are a lot of spiders, they still have a way to deal with them. Could it be that they will use the Killing Curse? But the Killing Curse doesn't seem to be able to deal with so many spiders. Lucas smiled and shook his head, then told her to continue watching. The besieged Aurors were watching out for sneak attacking spiders. Seeing no more spiders coming to support. Rufus, the head of the Auror office, gave a look to the people around him. Several people raised their wands and a powerful fire magic was released. Lucas as a bystander had long discovered that these people have been protected among the crowd, it must have been to preserve their magic power just for this moment. The monstrous flames engulfed the surrounding Acromantulas. After a while, only Aragog, the gigantic Acromantula was left on the scene. At the same time the imperious curse on Aragog was also lifted. Aragog, regaining consciousness, huddled in fear, from an outsider's perspective it looked like the Aurors were the attackers and the spider was just protecting itself. Rita, did you get that? Don't worry, Master, all the details have been captured by the camera. That's good, don't be left behind when Minister Fudge goes to arrest Hagrid. Rita Skeeter nodded but her expression was full of doubts. Master, why do we bother? Lucas understood what she wanted to express, but he just smiled and didn't answer. In fact, from the beginning, they used public opinion to attack Dumbledore and the Ministry of Magic. Dumbledore was undoubtedly the most questioned and slandered. This is of course to arouse the attention of parents and people in the community. Accompanied by pure blood family heirs being attacked, it causes Dumbledore's right to speak at Hogwarts to start being suppressed. Then, when the Ministry of Magic successfully intervened in the matter, Draco Malfoy was petrified. This event became an important bargaining chip to suppress Dumbledore. If Lucas guessed correctly, Lucius Malfoy should have received the headmaster's suspension order by this time. At this moment, Minister Fudge successfully captured the so-called murderer with his men. Thinking that in doing so he will gain great fame. If only Dumbledore could be driven away again, he could make his influence reach into Hogwarts logically. So, Fudge will definitely help Mr. Malfoy drive Dumbledore out of the school. In this way, Lucas' purpose of wanting Dumbledore to leave was achieved. So what to do next? Whitewashing Dumbledore through public opinion, of course. Reveal the truth about the Ministry of Magic's arbitrary arrest of people as scapegoats and criticize the incompetence of the Ministry of Magic. That's what Lucas has always been about. How could he arrange for his own people to enter the Ministry of Magic if the Ministry of Magic was not deeply involved? From the moment Lucas got the diary, he already had the plan. Suppress the Ministry of Magic, and take the opportunity to arrange his own people to enter the Ministry in preparation for controlling the Ministry of Magic in the future. As for Dumbledore's or anyone else's suffering, it was just a means to an end. At this time, the battle between Aurors and Aragog had come to an end. Facing the siege of dozens of people. Aragog, the Acromantula that had lived for more than fifty years, finally fell in the Forbidden Forest. The Aurors cheered loudly and danced around the huge spider. Watching the crowd carry the spider to the outside of the Forbidden Forest, Lucas glanced back at Rita Skeeter. The reporter wisely turned into a beetle and quickly followed the Auror team. At the same time, Harry and Ron also got some hints from Hermione. According to Lucas' request, Hermione only told them some clues about the basilisk, such as the abnormal behavior of spiders. Hearing spiders, Harry immediately thought of Hagrid. So the two took advantage of the night and came to Hagrid's hut wearing the invisibility cloak. At this time, Dumbledore, Lucius Malfoy, and Cornelius Fudge with the spider's corpse also rushed to Hagrid's cabin. After watching a big play, Lucas wandered to the outskirts of the Forbidden Forest. He was waiting for Lucius Malfoy to arrive. One reason is to apologize for what happened to Draco, because as a partner, he failed to protect the other party's son. So an apology is just a matter of course. Secondly, well, he just wanted to find out what state Lucius was in at the moment and find out if he already got the paperwork to expel Dumbledore from the Board of Governors. This is very important for his plans. Whoosh! There were several cracking sounds in the distance. It can be heard that the opponent used a lot of force when shooting the arrow. Lucas did not dodge in panic, but used void escape for an instant as the arrows pierced his body and plunged into the ground. Immediately afterwards, a large number of hoofbeats came from behind. Isn't this Ronan? Forenza is also here 
I don't know what you centaurs mean by this. Dozens of centaurs appeared in all directions and completely blocked Lucas' retreat. Elf, where is Bane? Bane. Lucas looked at Ronan in surprise, how would I know, can't you centaurs just use divination to find him? Stop quibbling, Elf. Forenza stepped forward and snapped. The stars tell us that Bane's disappearance is related to you. Where did you take Bane? Hand him over quickly. Looking at the centaur tribe waiting ready for battle. Lucas said with a smile, it seems that your divination is not very good, otherwise you would not have come to ask me. Sorry, I don't have time, let alone the obligation to answer your questions, so I won't keep accompanying you. The platinum head of Lucius Malfoy had appeared in the distance so he didn't have time to talk nonsense with these centaurs. The space behind Lucas was torn apart again, and taking a step back he disappeared from the sight of the centaurs in an instant. Damn it! Ronan, why are you stopping me? Mars gave me enlightenment. If we become enemies with the elf, we will be destroyed. Watching where Lucas disappeared, Ronan frowned tightly. Feeling the anger of his clansmen, he said again, It's okay, I will tell Dumbledore about it, and I believe he will deal with it. What is evil must be punished by justice. It can be seen that Dumbledore has great prestige among the centaur tribe. After Ronan finished speaking, most of the clansmen returned to calm. Uncle Lucius. Lucius Malfoy stopped, turned, and looked back. Seeing Lucas running towards him in a hurry, his icy expression finally loosened a bit. Lucas, it's been a long time, please forgive me for not being able to catch up with you, I have very important things to deal with right now. Malfoy finished speaking and looked in the direction of Hagrid's hut, he had seen Dumbledore walking there just now. I know, in fact, I came here to apologize to you, I'm sorry, I didn't take good care of Draco. Looking at the guilt in the boy's eyes, Mr. Malfoy sighed. I have already understood the specific process from Severus' letter. As the chief of Slytherin House, you have done a lot of things very well. If you want to blame someone, you can only blame Draco himself. As a Slytherin, Draco did something like this. In such a dangerous environment, he actually left the dormitory alone. It seems that I need to have a good talk with him after his petrification is lifted. The two exchanged a few more words about Draco. When he brought up Dumbledore, Lucas felt strong anger from Lucius' tone. Dumbledore? This time he will not be as lucky as last time. Hogwarts doesn't need a headmaster who can't protect the students. Watching Lucius stride toward Hagrid's cabin, the corners of Lucas' lips rose slightly. Everything is according to plan. Judging by Mr. Malfoy's confident appearance, he must have got the trump card, the suspension order. He looked left and right, upon seeing no one, Lucas cast the disillusionment charm on himself and followed Malfoy to Hagrid's hut. At this time inside Hagrid's house, Harry and Ron were analyzing the most likely heirs. Lucas Grindelwald, it must be that guy, I can't be wrong. Facing Ron's determined eyes, both Hagrid and Harry were very curious. So Ron sat down in front of the two of them and expressed his thoughts. Chapter 124, Harry's dependence and hope are about to be shattered. Hagrid doesn't have much contact with Lucas, it can be said that he only had contact with him during the Dragon Egg incident last year. Hearing Ron insist that Lucas is the heir, it did arouse his interest. Speak carefully. Seeing Hagrid pull up a chair and sit in front of him, Ron was faintly pleased. Harry knows that Grindelwald and I have been at odds since we started school. It's not that I hate him, but because he always gives me a weird feeling. I don't think what you, I, or everyone sees is the real Grindelwald. Harry and Hagrid looked at each other while Ron looked at his friend with a slightly smug look. Harry asked cautiously, where's the evidence? Evidence. Ron's stunned expression had already told the two of them the answer. All of this is just his guess. Hagrid said earnestly, Ron, before you accuse someone of something, you need evidence first. Although my contact with Mr. Grindelwald was very short, I didn't feel that he was malicious. Maybe it's just that you think too much. After Hagrid finished speaking, he walked towards the fireplace, and Harry followed after seeing this. Hey! What I say is the truth, and I'll find proof. Seeing that the two of them no longer paid attention to him, Ron's expression slowly turned despondent. Hagrid, shouldn't you be telling us about what happened fifty years ago? What fifty years ago? Hagrid said with a flustered look and he didn't even dare to look Harry in the eyes. Picking up the teapot hanging from the fire, he turned and walked towards the table. I don't know what you're talking about Harry. It's late now, 
I think you should go back to bed. If you are discovered you might be punished. Hagrid kept his head down while making tea and talking. The more he was like this, the more Harry believed what he saw in the diary. Hagrid, I've seen it all. You kept a spider in a wooden box fifty years ago. I also saw that you were expelled from school for this incident. Boom. Hagrid placed the teapot firmly on the table. He lowered his head and said angrily, It's not me, I didn't do anything, and Aragog wouldn't kill anyone. Aragog. Harry asked softly. Hagrid sighed, sat down in a chair and recounted what happened fifty years ago. In fact, he himself was also very confused, he was just raising a spider, so why is it related to the air? I can guarantee that Aragog will not kill people, it was true fifty years ago, and it is the same now. Hagrid, we trust you, and Dumbledore must trust you too. Harry stepped forward and patted Hagrid's arm to reassure him. Hagrid's mood gradually calmed down, looked up at the two of them and said, Yes, I am very grateful to Dumbledore, it was because of his support fifty years ago that I was able to stay in Hogwarts to work even after being expelled. Harry never heard Hagrid talk about the past. If it wasn't for getting the magical diary this time, he didn't know that his big friend was still hiding such a sad past. Harry still had a different kind of trust in Hagrid in his heart. Because it was the other party who brought him to the magic world and taught Harry some basic knowledge of the wizarding world. Even Harry's first birthday present was given by Hagrid, so Hagrid is very special in Harry's heart, he is a friend but also like a relative. And Harry has another feeling for Dumbledore. He trusted Dumbledore, but this trust comes from the introduction of Dumbledore by others and in books. And first year, from his little time spent talking with Dumbledore, he felt like he was a trustworthy, omnipotent grandfather to Harry. In his mind, there was no problem that Dumbledore couldn't solve, so Harry regarded Dumbledore as his hope. Seeing Hagrid's eyes full of gratitude to Dumbledore, Harry immediately said, In this case, you should remember carefully who opened the secret room fifty years ago. If we can find the heir, it will not only clear your grievances, but also help Dumbledore, Hagrid, you must think about it. Oh yes, now that the school and Dumbledore are having trouble, of course I have to help. Hagrid lowered his head when he finished speaking. Judging from his frowning, it seems that he really has some memories. Harry stared hard at Hagrid, hoping he could recall something useful. If they really find the heir because of this, then he can dispel the misunderstanding of the whole school. Maybe, he can also get a lot of bonus points for this. If it helps Gryffindor win the House Cup because of the extra points, that would be perfect. Just when Harry fell into fantasy, Dumbledore met Minister Fudge outside the hut. Looking at the big spider carried by the Auror, there was a gleam in Dumbledore's eyes. He seemed to understand the plan of Fudge and others. Neither of them said anything after greeting each other. Led by Dumbledore, they knocked on the door of Hagrid's hut. Hearing a knock on the door, Harry and Ron were taken aback. The two quickly put on the invisibility cloak and hid in the corner of the room. The people who will come here at this time, there's no need to think much, they can only be the professors of Hogwarts. But Harry didn't expect that it was Dumbledore who came in. Not only Dumbledore, but three people followed behind him. One of them Harry knew, Rufus Scrimgeer, head Auror. Hello Rubius Hagrid, the reason we are here today should be very clear to you. Regarding the attack on Hogwarts students, as the culprit we will proceed to arrest you now. Minister Fudge straight to the point expressed his intention for coming. He looked at Rufus as soon as he finished speaking. It's not me, you should know I didn't do it. Hagrid defended himself loudly. In response, Fudge yelled loudly, So far, nearly ten people have been petrified or disappeared. I need to give everyone an explanation, and your record with the Ministry of Magic is quite bad, you should know it in your heart. Rufus, take him away. Harry under the cloak was anxious, he wanted to go out to help Hagrid, but was pulled tightly by his friend. Don't be impulsive, it's useless for you to go out. Hearing Ron say this, Harry slowly calmed down. He looked at Dumbledore, believing that with the help of the headmaster, Hagrid would be fine. Dumbledore did not disappoint Harry, just when Rufus was about to step forward for the second time. He raised his hand to stop him, Minister Fudge, I completely trust Hagrid, and I can vouch for him that this matter has nothing to do with him. You vouch for him? Dumbledore, it's clearly written in the Ministry of Magic Records that you were the one who vouched for him fifty years ago. But this happened again now. How do you ask me to trust your word? Dumbledore was silent for a few seconds and said, You should know that this is in the Chamber of Secrets. Dumbledore, 
I respect you, but please don't take me for a fool. We all read Hogwarts, a history when we were in school. It's written very clearly that Salazar Slytherin left a monster in the Chamber of Secrets before leaving. When the true heir returns, he will unleash the monster in the Chamber of Secrets and purge all of whom Salazar Slytherin deemed unfit to learn magic. But it's just a legend. Even if it's true, why would a Slytherin attack a pure-blooded heir? Facing Fudge's questioning, Dumbledore was speechless. This is where he finds it troublesome, it would be easier to explain if only Muggleborn students were attacked. But pure-blood students, especially family heirs like Malfoy, were also attacked. Apparently Chamber of Secrets legend is a little untenable. Seeing that Dumbledore stopped talking, the smugness in Fudge's eyes increased. He turned and looked outside the door, bring the evidence here. A gigantic acromantula that had been dead for a short time was placed outside the door. Seeing this, Hagrid hurried forward and shouted with a sad expression, Aragog. The two of Harry and Ron also moved carefully to the window. Looking at the spider, Harry immediately gestured to his friend. This is the spider I saw, only it was small fifty years ago. Ron looked terrified, this was definitely the most terrifying thing he had seen in his life, what with his fear of spiders. Hagrid is a half-giant. Not only is he tall, but even his crying is earth-shaking. Fudge didn't press. They waited until he had calmed down before the Auror stepped forward to take Hagrid away. Dumbledore still wanted to stop them, but at this moment Lucius Malfoy came to the door of the cabin with graceful steps. Headmaster Albus Dumbledore, I didn't expect you to hide in this kind of place. It really isn't easy for me to find you. Seeing Lucius Malfoy appear, Dumbledore's heart sank and a bad feeling came from the bottom of his heart. Lucas, who followed Mr. Malfoy, was standing far away, ready to watch the second half of the show. Chapter 125, Dumbledore was fired. Lucius? What do you want me to do? Mr. Malfoy was very calm. He first took a look at the house where Hagrid lived with strong disgust in his eyes, can people really live in such a place? It wasn't just Hagrid who was pissed off by this statement, it also made Harry feel a little uncomfortable under the invisibility cloak. See Harry, this is the real face of the Malfoy family, they all look down on non-pure blood wizards. Especially Muggleborns and people like Hagrid, they might even feel that seeing them is polluting their eyes. Hearing Ron's words in his ears, Harry frowned but didn't say anything. He was more curious about what Mr. Malfoy was doing here. After expressing his disdain for Hagrid's home, Lucius Malfoy turned to look at Dumbledore. Headmaster Dumbledore, you should know the purpose of my coming here, right? A lot of things have happened in the school recently. Our school board members also held a meeting to discuss it after learning about it, and believed that this was all caused by your improper management. Dumbledore seemed to have expected it, that's right, you also used the same reason last year. No. It's different this time, Dumbledore. A calm Malfoy was the scariest thing, this shows that he is absolutely prepared. Dumbledore understood this too. So he was thinking how he could disturb his emotions. Although this cannot solve the immediate crisis, it can prepare for the counterattack in the future. The Malfoy seemed to have been on the school board for far too long. Dumbledore's sharp eyes were concealed by the round glasses and the dim surroundings. Lucius, I'm sorry about what happened to your son but he's not without treatment. Headmaster Dumbledore, do you mean to say that I'm just taking revenge? No, no, that's not what I meant, I just thought that I didn't seem to have apologized to you for what happened to your son. Hearing Dumbledore mention his son again, Lucius' eyes were full of anger. But he still forcibly suppressed his anger, took out the suspension order and handed it to the scheming old man. Here is your suspension order, signed by twelve of our school governors, do you want to see it? Without waiting for Dumbledore to answer, Pius Thickness, who had followed Fudge, was the first to object. Impossible. At such a critical moment, if Headmaster Dumbledore is suspended, the students in the school will be in even more danger. Pius, the culprit has already been caught, and the monster who attacked the students has also been killed, please be more careful with your words. Hearing Minister Fudge's scolding Pius said indignantly, Minister, we all know whether the monster was the spider or not. Have you ever wondered, what if there is another attack? Our Ministry of Magic will be a joke. Get out of here right now, right now. Fudge pointed at the road in the distance and yelled at Pius angrily. Pius was silent for a few seconds, sighed and walked away. The place fell into silence for a while. After a moment, Dumbledore said softly to those present, The school is in danger now, and I will not leave, I cannot leave. 
Although his voice was not high, his tone was unusually firm and tough. The Aurors and Fudge present were breathless upon facing the tough Dumbledore, they really didn't know what to do. Fudge showed a smile and said, If you insist on this, we can actually discuss it again. He couldn't finish talking before he saw Malfoy walk up to Dumbledore angrily. Do you think I'll be as unprepared as last time? Sorry Lucius, I really can't leave, and I can better solve Draco's problem by staying. No, you don't have a choice, and don't mention Draco again. After Lucius Malfoy finished speaking, he leaned closer to Dumbledore's ear and said, You have no chance of returning to Hogwarts. It's all because you brought it on yourself, just take it as your apology to Draco. Lucas shook his head and sighed in the distance. Mr. Malfoy was overwhelmed with rage, and even though he looked calm, he acted without consideration. At this moment, Lucius Malfoy took out another piece of parchment from his wizard robe. He opened it and read, in view of Albus Dumbledore's failure to fulfill his responsibilities as headmaster, Albus Dumbledore is removed from the post of headmaster of Hogwarts from now on. Also, on behalf of the school board of governors, I hereby announce the expulsion of Albus Dumbledore from Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Lucius, don't you? Before Dumbledore could finish his sentence, Hogwarts wards forcibly teleported him outside the school grounds. The school management committee usually does not participate in any school management and education work. But they still have quite a bit of power, this is to prevent the headmaster's monopoly. So while the headmaster controls the school, the school board controls the headmaster. The reason why Umbridge couldn't enter the headmaster's office in the original book, is because she didn't get the approval of the school board. After doing all this, Lucius Malfoy let out a sigh of relief. He nodded at Minister Fudge gracefully, then turned and walked away. Okay, the show is over, we will soon send this man to Azkaban. On the way back Fudge kept thinking about what Pius had just said. He frowned and called his assistant, Pine Caro, to his side. Pine, do you think what Pius said can happen? Don't worry, the chance of this happening is very small, but I suggest the minister not to withdraw the orders from the school. If something really happens, we can deal with it, and I will notify the daily prophet that even if it does happen, no news will be spread. Fudge's brow was still furrowed, and seeing this, Pine continued, that monster has not moved for fifty years, I guess it will fall into a deep sleep after killing people this time. If nothing happens in the future, such a great contribution will definitely allow you to be re-elected as the next minister. After all, he turned around and glanced at the giant acromantula behind him. After hearing this, Fudge's expression hardened, okay, let's do it like this. Although he has only taken over as minister for three years, his approval rating is not satisfactory. If he can't make some achievements, the chances of him being elected next term are very slim. Pine, let the reporters take a good picture of that spider. Relax, Minister. Looking at Fudge's back in front of him, Pine Caro smiled silently. At the same time Harry and Ron also came out of Hagrid's hut. At this moment, there was no one around, and the two also put away the invisibility cloak. Harry, what shall we do now? Harry was also at a loss about what to do. His friend Hagrid was captured and Dumbledore was expelled in the blink of an eye. At this moment Harry didn't know what to do next. Harry, maybe we should leave this matter alone. No. Harry firmly rejected his friend's proposal. We must continue to investigate. Only when the investigation is clear can Professor Dumbledore and Hagrid come back. But how should we do it? Ron's question hit the nail on the head, and Harry didn't know how to investigate. Originally thought that Hagrid would give himself some hints. Unexpectedly, he was captured before they could hear anything important. After thinking for a moment, Harry made an important decision. If it doesn't work, let's go to Lucas, Draco and him are also good friends, so he will definitely not ignore it. And Professor Dumbledore once told me that if I encounter difficulties, I could ask Lucas, he also said that he is a trustworthy person. Are you sure that Dumbledore is not just getting too old? Harry didn't answer Ron's question because at first he didn't want to mention it. And it has been a year since Dumbledore said that to him. It's been so long, Harry doesn't know if he should still trust Dumbledore's words from a year ago or not. When Harry and Ron had walked away, Lucas' figure appeared next to Hagrid's hut. He heard the conversation between the two just now clearly, he didn't expect that Dumbledore would say that to Harry. Am I a trustworthy person? Repeating Dumbledore's words, Lucas laughed at himself first. Watching the beetle flying around, he waved his hand, signaling Rita to go back and get ready. 
he opened pocket watch to check the time. The exploration of the Forbidden Forest is almost done, and he was considering whether to complete the exploration of the Forbidden Forest tonight. Before he could make a decision he realized that the magic he left on the dormitory door was touched. Tearing the space back to the dormitory he changed his clothes and opened the door, just to see Professor Snape standing outside the door. Mr. Grindelwald, get dressed and follow me. Professor Snape walked towards the lounge after speaking. Lucas changed back to his wizard robe again and followed him out of the Slytherin common room. Professor, where are we going? Shut up, you'll know when we get there. The two hurried on their way quietly, and they reached the gate of the school in a short while. Lucas rarely comes here, the students generally enter the school from the direction of Hogsmeade Village. The gate like this one is more for visitors, outside the gate is a very long stone bridge. Lucas followed Professor Snape up the stone bridge. At a glance, he saw the white-haired old man standing in the middle of the bridge. Headmaster Albus Dumbledore. No, now he is no longer the headmaster. Vote with Power Stones for the weekly extra chapters, up to five chapters at 200 stones each. Thanks for listening.